So I'm going to stop sharing and I'll let you share, bro. All right. Can everybody see uh, Free Code Camp now? Yep. All right. So I guess we'll start on complementary colors. Uh, color theory and its impact on design is a deep topic and only the basics are covered in the following challenges. On a website, color can draw attention to content, evoke emotions, or create visual harmony. Using different combinations of colors can really change the look of a website, and a lot of thought can go into picking a color palette that works with your content. The color wheel is a useful tool to visualize how colors relate to each other. It's a circle where similar hues are neighbors and different hues are farther apart. When two colors are opposite on each other on the wheel, they're called complementary colors. Uh, they have the characteristic, if they are combined, they cancel each other out and create a gray color. However, when placed side by side, these colors appear more vibrant and produce a strong visual contrast. And here are some examples, red and cyan, green and magenta, blue and yellow. This is different than the outdated RYB model many of us were taught in school which has different primary complementary colors. Modern color theory uses the additive RGB model and the subtractive CMYK model like in printing. Read here for more information on the topic. There are many color picking tools available online that have an option to find complement of a color. For all color challenges, using a color could be a powerful way to add visual interest. However, color alone should not be used as the only way to convey important information because users with visual impairments may not be able to understand that content. This issue will be covered in more detail and applied accessibility challenges. Change the background color property of the blue and yellow classes to keep their classes to their respective colors. Notice how the colors look different next to each other than they do compared against the white background. So this is pretty easy. You gotta set the blue div to blue. And the yellow div to yellow. Simple challenge. And those are complementary colors. Run the test. Big old green checkbox. Yep. Uh, maybe later. All right, learning about tertiary colors. Computer monitors and device screens create different colors by combining amounts of red, green, and blue light. This is known as the RGB additive color model in modern color theory. Red, green, and blue are called primary colors. Mixing two primary colors creates the secondary colors, cyan, magenta, and yellow. You saw these colors in the complementary colors challenge. These secondary colors happen to be the complement to the primary color not used in the creation and are opposite to the primary color on the color wheel. For example, magenta is made with red and blue and it complements green. Tertiary colors are the result of combining a primary color with one of its secondary colors color neighbors. For example, red, primary, and yellow secondary make orange. This adds six more colors to a simple color wheel for a total of 12. There are various methods of selecting different colors that result in a harmonious combination and design. One example that can use tertiary colors is called the split commentary, complementary color scheme. This scheme starts with a base color and then pairs it with two colors that are adjacent to its complement. The three Colors provide a strong visual contrast in design, but are more subtle than using two complementary colors. Here are the three colors using the split complement scheme. Change the background property of the orange, cyan, and raspberry classes to their colors. Make sure to use the hex codes as orange and raspberry, not browser color names. So orange. We're going to copy the orange here, paste it over, and do the same with cyan, and raspberry. And there we go. Run the test. Done. Green checkbox. Adjust the color of various elements to complementary colors. Complementary colors challenge showed, in the, showed that the opposite colors on the color wheel can make each other appear more vibrant when placed side by side. However, the strong visual contrast can be jarring if overused and can sometimes make text harder to read if it's placed on a complementary colored background. In practice, one of the colors is usually dominant and the complement is used to bring visual attention to certain content on a page. 
This page will use the shade of teal as dominant color and its orange complement to visually highlight the sign up buttons. Change the background color of both the header and footer from black to the teal color. Then change the HP text to color to teal as well. Finally, change the background color of the button to orange. So the header and footer should have this hex code. So we'll put that in the header and the footer. And then the H2 element should have this color. Oh, it's also teal. And then the button should have this color which is orange. So we'll change the button to that color. And there you go. You now have a Miami Dolphins themed web page. All right on. Run the test. I don't know if that's going to help us win this year, but uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I feel you, bro. I've been a Dolphins fan my whole life and I'm older than you, so I feel I don't you. know. I don't know why you would ever be a Dolphins fan. I'm from, I'm not from, I'm from Massachusetts and I'm in Florida. I'm still not rooting for him. I got to stay with the Patriots, man. <laughs> hey, man. You're going to get a lot of hate living down there. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, man. You know what it is. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm from, I'm from down there, man. That's why I'm a Dolphins fan. <clears throat> oh, you're from the night. You're, yeah, it's beautiful down here, bro. Yeah, I, I was born in Miami and grew up in Fort Lauderdale, so. That's cool, dude. Um, all right. Adjust the hue of a color. Colors have several character character is characteristics, excuse me, including hue, saturation, and lightness. CS, CSS3 introduced the HSL property as an alternative way to pick a color by directly stating these characteristics. Hue is what people generally think of as color. If you picture a spectrum of colors starting with red on the left, moving through green in the middle and blue on the right, the hue is where a color fits along this line. In HSL, Hue uses a color wheel concept instead of the spectrum, where the angle of the color on the color circle is given as a value between 0 and 360. Saturation is the amount of gray in the color. Fully That's saturated cool. color has no gray in it, and a minimally saturated color is almost completely gray. This is given as a percentage, with 100% being fully saturated. Lightness is the amount of white or black in a color. A percentage is given ranging from 0, which is black, to 100%, which is white where 50% is a normal color. Here are a few examples of using HSL with fully saturated normal lightness colors. So red, yellow. So like this is like uh, using hex or RGB. It's just another way, I guess. <coughs> Change the background color of each div based on the class names um, using HSL. All three should have full saturation and normal lightness. So. We can just copy this over. So green's right here. We'll replace the hex code. And then cyan's here. Replace the hex code. And I encourage anybody that's watching this to try writing it out. Copy and pasting is cool, but we're doing that for you guys. But you know, your own, I, I recommend you always getting that muscle memory of just writing stuff out. Yeah, HSL. This isn't something I, like I use. I tend to just use the hex codes because it's easier. Mm -hmm. Um, but I guess if you're used to messing around with like saturation and stuff, um, it can help. So like you can actually make this gray by changing this to zero. Oh. It turns gray. <coughs> and you just you have a lot of control over colors in this, seems like. That's really neat. Hue saturation. All right. So I'm going to start using that. I guess the new, it's the modern version, uh, the most current way or something. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's something. It's probably in the newest version of CSS. Mm -hmm. uh, the HSL option in CSS also makes it easy to adjust the tone of a color. Mixing white with a pure hue creates a tint, and adding black will make a shade. Alternatively, a tone is produced by adding gray or by tinting and shading. Recall that the S and L of HSL stand for saturation and lightness, respectively. The saturation percent changes the amount of gray, and the lightness percent determines how much white or black is in the color. This is useful when you have a base hue, but you need different variations of it. Yeah, that's true. If you just want to make a color lighter or darker, like if you put in text on it. 
the navigation bar on the site currently inherits its background from the header element. Starting with that color as a base, add a background color to the nav element so it uses the same cyan hue but has 80% saturation and 25% lightness. So I'll type this one out. So we'll go to nav and change the background color to an HSL value 180, which is the same as the header, 80% saturation and 25% lightness. And there you go. So it's a similar color, but a different shade. And it looks pretty good. All right, who wants to teach next? Uh, Elliot, you ready? Are you with us? Yeah, I'm still in that last one, but I, I can do the next uh, few because I'll have to jump on another call at six. So. All right. Yeah, we're on the created gradual CSS. Let me get that last one there. Linear gradient. I have to step into another room. Hey, hold on, guys. I'm gonna have to take a break because I gotta, I gotta talk with somebody real quick. What do you think? Another line. Sorry, guys. No worries. Uh, Pat, you want to take this one up? I just did one. <laughs> I mean, no, not Pat. I'm sorry. Um, Manny. Yeah. All right. Which one were we on again? Uh, the create a gradual CSS linear gradient. I don't know what the fuck that is. All right. <laughs> <coughs> Can you see my screen? Yep. <clears throat> All right. Applying a color on HTML elements is not limited to one flat hue. CSS provides the ability to use color transitions, otherwise known as gradients on elements. This is accessed through the background properties linear gradient function. Here is the general syntax. So we put background, linear gradient, the direction of the gradient, color one, color two, and color three. The first argument specifies the direction from which color transition starts. It can be stated as a degree where 90 degree makes a vertical gradient and 45 degrees is angled like a backslash. The following arguments specify the order of colors used in the gradient. Example, this. So it's going to want us to use linear gradient for the divs element background and set it to, from a direction of 35 degrees to change the color from this to that. <laughs> All right, so we've had a copy of that. Almost 35 degrees. Wait, how do I change the color from this to that? Use a linear gradient for the div elements background and set it for uh, from a direction of uh, 35 degrees to change the color from CC. Uh, oh, that was it. Scroll down. You got to change the colors in it, Stoic. To those two colors. No, it wants to change it from this color to that color, right? Right. So 
You see how in in the in the example it goes from red to yellow to that RGB color? Yeah. Yeah, that's the gradient. So they want the gradient only two colors. Uh the CC first and then the FF second. I hate this color shit. What you need to do, Soak, is take out that last color. This one, yeah? Yeah, you don't need that color. There you go. Nice. Um, all right. <coughs> so use a CSS linear gradient to create a striped element. The repeating linear gradient function is very similar to linear gradient with the major difference that it repeats the specified gradient pattern. Repeating linear gradient accepts a variety of values, but for simplicity, you'll work with an angle value and a color stop values in this challenge. The angle value is the direction of the gradient. Color stops are like width values that mark where transition takes place and are given with a percentage or a number of pixels. In the example demonstrated in the code editor, the gradient starts with the color yellow at zero pixels, which blends into the second color blue at 40 pixels away from the start. Since the next color stops is also at 40 pixels, the gradient immediately changes to the third color green, which itself <laughs> blends into the fourth color value red, as that is 80 pixels away from the beginning of the gradient. For this example, it helps to think that the color stops are paired where every two colors blend together. If every two colors stop values are the same color, the blending isn't noticeable because it's between the same color followed by a hard transition to the next color, so you end up with stripes. So it wants us to change the gradient angle to 45 degrees. So it makes it look like a yeah, barbershop thing. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, man. Hey, change it to 90 degrees right quick. Let me see what happens. It's vertical. Change it to 120. All right, cool. <laughs> write a JavaScript, write some Java, write a script to make it, you can make it go, go around and around, <laughs> look like hypnotizing people. You can really do that? Yeah, that's what yeah. JavaScript's for, bro. Yeah, you can do it with CSS too. Yeah, um, hmm, that's cool. So that's what JavaScript is more, is just like animation? No, uh, JavaScript. Animation. Yeah, JavaScript's used to run like functions and stuff like that. So, so how would you do that with CSS? Uh, you would have to look up CSS animate. <laughs> right. That's that's super. <laughs> that's like in deep CSS stuff. Okay. All right, so we're on to the next one. Yep. So we're gonna with create texture by adding a subtle pattern as a background image. It says one way to add texture and interest to a background and have it stand out more is to add a subtle pattern. The key is balance as you don't want the background to stand out too much and take away from the foreground. The background property supports the URL function in order to link to an image 
of the chosen texture or pattern. The link address is wrapped in quotes inside the parentheses. <coughs> All right. So I guess it wants a URL wrapped in parentheses. Oops, I guess it was right. Did it show anything for anybody else? Yeah, it showed like a textured background. Yeah, you have probably have like ads blocking, your you blocking is probably blocking it, so I'm blocking it. So comment out that line and see if your screen changes. Yeah, see how it's, it's white now? Your, uh, it looks the same. But on our screen, it, it like looks white. No, you know what it is? It's your pop-up blocker. And then probably it's like darker it's now. Powerful. <laughs> yeah, it's um probably not accepting some certain kind of pop-ups. Third part. All right, on to the next one. Use the CSS transform skill property to change the size of an element. Oh, this will help out on a couple of projects. <laughs> to change the scale of an element, CSS has a transform property along with its scale function. The following code example doubles the size of all the paragraph elements on the page. So it wants to transform all the p-values from with the transform property with a scale of two. So I guess two is for double. Increase the size of the element with the ID of ball two to 1.5 times its original size. All right, so we got ball two. We're gonna go with transform scale and 1.5 times its original size. Can't see anything because my pop-up blocker. Hopefully you guys can. Yeah. The if you press you blocking, it's it's okay to do it. Press you blocking and uh, let me see what happens. Yeah, you can disable it on free code camp. Yeah, that's fine. Anyways, somebody else want to do it now? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so are you guys like doing it while I'm doing it? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I reset my progress and then my internet went down. So I got to catch up. Uh, make video. Put a link in the in the chat of somebody that did an animation with just a uh, CSS. Uh, where are we at? Uh, we're at uh, use the CSS transform scale to scale an element on hover. All right. Yeah, hey, that's pretty cool. I didn't know you could do this. Said, yeah, what? What was that? Oh, no, in chat, I put a, a link to somebody that did an animation in CSS, just CSS and uh, HTML. Oh, sweet, dude. Check that right quick. Code pen. Yeah, it's loading, but uh, anyways. So applied visual design, use the CSS transform scale property to scale an element on hover. The transform property has a variety of functions that lets you scale, move, rotate, skew, etc. your elements. When used with pseudo classes such as uh, hover, that specify a certain state of an element, the transform property can easily add interactivity to your elements. 
equal to scale the paragraph elements to 2.1 times their original size <clears throat> when a browser hovers over them. And so we have the text be hover transform scale 2.1. Add a CSS rule for the hover of the div and use the transform property to scale the div elements to 1.1 times its original size when a user hovers over it. All right, then it says down here, the size of the div element should scale 1.1 times when the user hovers over it. So Let's do this. So I gotta add a CSS rule for the hover state. Where is my hover state P? For the div? You gotta create a new one. Oh, I gotta create a new div? No, you got well, you gotta create a new CSS selector, not a new div. Now you don't want to put it in the same brackets as the old one. Okay. I think I do. I, I want to create it uh, in the for the div, right? So I want to make a. Is it like a property or? No, it's a selector for a new. So you oh, don't no. want to change the div as is. You want to change the div when somebody hovers over it. So you're going to use a pseudo class. There you go. So now when you hover over it, the box should get bigger. Sweet. Ah, and when I don't hover over it, or when I take that code over, take that code out. So what is that? That's uh, the size? Yeah, scale affects the size of it. Yeah, so when I take that out, there is no hover. Nice. I can use that. That's exactly what I need. That's what I need for uh, the project. So definitely use that. Anybody watching this, I recommend you uh, donate to Free Code Camp. Applied visual design. Use the CSS transform property to uh, skew X to skew an element along the X axis. The next function of, tra of the transform property is <clears throat> skew X, which skews the selected element along its X horizontal axis by a given degree. The following code skews the paragraph element by negative 32 degrees along the x-axis. And we have P transform uh, and then we have the skew function and then we have uh, 30, negative 32 degrees. So what we need to do is we need to skew the element of uh, with the ID of bottom by 32 by 24 degrees uh, along the X axis by using uh, the transform property. <clears throat> okay. 
tags and I will write out, so that's gonna be the bottom. So I'm gonna put in the bottom ID. You already have a bottom ID written in. Is there not? Okay. So we're gonna go type in transform, the transform property. Type in skew x function. semicolon and give it uh, 24 degrees, negative, or yeah, positive 24 degrees. Let me get, uh, notice how that changed. Let me get my big green checkbox. By visual design, use the CSS transform property, skew y, to skew an element along the y-axis. Then that, that skew x functions uh, function skews the selected element along the x-axis by a given degree, it is no surprise that the skew uh, y property skews an element along the y vertical axis. <clears throat> skew the element with the ID of top negative 10 degrees along the Y axis by using the transform property. And then down here it says the element with ID top should be skewed by negative 10 degrees along its Y axis. Okay. So which one of these has, I already have an ID top. Selected, so give it a transform property. And, uh, so is this skew X, is this a function or is it a property? The property of a, um, in CSS is like width, height, margin, padding. Those are called properties. That skew X and skew Y are functions. Okay. No, because right here it says skew X or skew Y property, and up here it says skew X function. Right. I think that's just that. That's like bad. Uh, yeah. And then on the other one, it said function. The one yeah. for skew X, it said function. And then right here, it says property. So, yeah. yeah. No, no. Yeah. It is a transform property. So, that would be correct. But yeah. it doesn't actually say if it's a function right here. So I yeah, might have to, or, you know, ask, I might have to make an issue on the free code camp um, guide for that one. Yeah. Cause I think the transform is a property. Like background color is a property. That's a property. Background yeah. color is a property. These are properties. And I'm assuming this is a function because it can't be a property. It can be a property value, I'm assuming, but it can't be a property. It'd be a function. Right. Okay. So, Besides that, so we gave it a negative 10. That's what we got to give. So skew, that's the bottom. So we're going to finish up this right here and give this skew y. Yep, skew y. Uh, let it be. Your mic got all quiet, John. Sorry about that. Applied visual design, create a graphic using CSS. 
By manipulating different selectors and properties, you can make interesting shapes. One of the easier ones to try is a crescent moon shape. For this challenge, you will need to work with the box shadow property that sets the shadow of an element along with the border radius property that controls the roundness of an element's corners. You will create a round transparent object with a crisp shadow that is slightly offset to the side. The shadow is actually going to be the moon shape you see. In order to create a round object, the border radius property should be set to a value of 50%. You may recall from an earlier challenge that the box shadow property takes values for offset X. Offset Y, uh, blur radius, spread radius, and a color value in that order. The blur radius and spread radius values are optional. So manipulate the square element in the editor to create the moon shape. First, change the background color to transform. Uh, push the GitHub. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Ch change the background color to, I'm gonna read that again. Manipulate the square element in the editor to create the moon shape. First change the background color to transparent, then set the border radius property to 50% to make the circular shape. Change the, back, uh, change the box shadow property to set the offset to 25 pixels, um, the offset Y to 10 pixels, blur radius to zero, and spread radius to zero, and color to blue. Okay. Down here it says the value of the background color property should be set to transparent. The value of the border radius property should be set to 50%. The value of the box shadow property should be set to 25 pixels for offset X, 10 pixels for offset Y, zero for blur radius, zero for spread radius, and finally blue for color. So first it goes offset, offset Y, blur radius, um, spread radius. Blur and spread are optional. So we have offset X and Y. Box shadow. All right, so it says 25 for offset. 
and for offset y, or for offset x is 25, for offset y is 10, 0 for blur, and blur is the third one. And for spread radius, Made a Pokemon ball. I got a Pokemon ball, dude. <laughs> Blue for the color. Break time after this one. All right. Hello. I'm here. Okay, Hey, John, you don't have to change. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Can you hear us? Fifty percent. There it goes. That's cool. Manny, were you trying to say something? I used to being around someone so long. I don't know what to do with the stage. Right, guys, we'll catch up at, uh, I guess, like 10 minutes from now? Yeah. Quarter oh, after. Cool. All right. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yeah, dude. We're going to uh, come back at a quarter after. All right. All right.
Oh snap, that's cool, dude. Man, that's really cool, man. I like that. Wow, that's neat. That shit says a pen by Jonathan Jackson. That shit would be cool as shit. I gotta make my own pen like that or something similar to different. I gotta change it up. I gotta make my own pen, dude. Get it right. Should be hard, bro. Yeah, dude, it's not even a lot of code. Is that 400 lines? Oh, then it's another one. The CSS over here. This 800, 1000, 2000. That's cool. <laughs> That's her ring armored transport. No, oh, yes, that's what was harmed.
Yeah, guys, but next week, I want to start JavaScript, bro. Yo, Pat, you there, bro? Yeah, man. Hey, have you gone through the Mozilla Docs? Nah. Nah? Like, I really want to. I feel like you do too, bro. Nah, I use it more for, like, reference if I need to, like, really look up something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I didn't like it. Like, um, oh. I saw before, like, you know, oh, that's a place where you can learn how stuff works, but. I didn't like it. No? Okay. Yeah, it's just, it seems too technical. Um, really? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, it's a great reference to, to look stuff up if you don't understand. Mm -hmm. But I, I didn't like going through it, trying to learn when I was yeah. learning. I hear that. I hear that, man. 
it's like I said, I don't learn too well just from reading. I have to actually watch somebody do it. I understand that. Yeah, when Tamari would go over whatever. And uh, that's when I would learn the most. So are you guys, do you guys want to get back into uh, the free code camp or do you guys want to, I don't know, do you guys have, you, do you guys have portfolio projects? Um, not yet, but once we get to the end of the front end, uh, well, not the front end, but the responsive web design mm -hmm. on free code camp, there are uh, one, two, three, hold on. One, two, three, four. There's five things you could build at the end of that that you can use in a portfolio. Mm -hmm. And one of them is at an actual portfolio. Right. Nice, nice. All right, so we're on to it. Moving on to it. We're just breezing through here. So we are in applied. Let's see what we have. We have grid. Which is about 20 projects. Challenges. Box box was about what, 15. Responsive web design, which is about, what's that, like four? Mm -hmm. So I'm counting, I'm counting 40. <laughs> Until we finish CSS and start making the rest of our projects for our portfolio. There we go. We're getting there. And then from applied, we're not in applied accessibility yet. We're in applied visual design. So accessibility has about another 20, so that's about 60. And then about 70 challenges so we get to those five projects so let's get to it. create a more complex shape using css and html yeah most of these last few challenges in um visual design are like stuff you probably won't use mm -hmm. unless you're really wanting to push like like super major nice front end stuff um it's good to have like a not like knowledge of it but yeah. I wouldn't like dig too deep unless you're really into doing, you know, front end animations and shit like that. Okay. Well, we could probably use this. We could probably just use it in our portfolio too. Like we can, I don't, like what I would like to do is for all my projects, I would like to find a way to put a little piece of all this in the, into there. You know what I'm saying? Have a wicked sick portfolio. That's just a really nice reference for myself. Mm -hmm. That'd be pretty cool. I think. I don't know. I'm gonna try it though. I'm, I'm talking about it. I might have to write that one down there. On each project. Okay. Code camp project rules. We are at Applied Visual Design. Um, create a more complex shape using CSS and HTML. One of the most popular shapes in the world 
is the heart shape. And in this challenge, you'll create one using pure CSS. First, you need to understand the before and after pseudo elements. The pseudo elements are used to add something before or after a selected element. In the following example, a before pseudo element is used to add a rectangle to a element with the class heart. Uh, for the before and after pseudo elements to function properly, properly, they must have a defined content property. The property is usually used to add things like a photo or text to the selected element when the before and after pseudo elements are used to make shapes. The content property is still required, but it's set to an empty string. In the above example, with the class of heart has, or excuse me, in the above example, the element with the class of heart has a before pseudo element that produces a yellow rectangle with height and width of 50 pixels and 70 pixels, respectively. This rectangle has round corners due to its 25% border radius uh, and is positioned absolutely at five pixels from the left and 50 pixels above the top of the element. Transform the element on the screen to a heart. In the heart uh, after selector, change, uh, excuse me, in the heart selector, change the background color to pink and the border radius to 50%. Next, target the element with the class heart, just heart, and fill in the transform property. Use the rotate function with 45 degrees rotate, or excuse me, use the ro rotate function with four, negative 45 degrees. Uh, rotate works the same way that the skew X and skew Y functions do. Okay. Finally, in the heart before selector, set its content property to an example string. An empty string. Or to an empty string. Yes. The background color property of the heart uh, selector should be pink. The border radius of the heart after selector should be 50%. The transform property for the heart class should use a rotate function set to 45 degrees, negative 45 degrees. The content of the heart before selector should be an empty string. All right. So let's change that background color first. Border radius should be The transform property for the heart class should use a rotate function set to negative 45 degrees.
I gotta figure out how to make stuff continually move. Uh, you'll learn that when you get to animate stuff. You gotta use like keyframes and stuff like that. Sweet. Uh, that's on Free Code Camp too, as well, right? It touches on it, but it doesn't really teach you enough to where it, it gives you like the basics of it. Okay. Content of uh, part before selector should be an empty string. Okay. So for an empty string, you got to put double quotes without anything in it. Add visual design, learn how the CSS at keyframes, is it at keyframes or just keyframes? Uh, I think it's at keyframes. At keyframes and animation properties work. To animate an element, you need to know animation properties and the at keyframes. Let's do one thing really quick. Learn how the CSS at keyframes and animation properties work. To animate an element, you need to know about the animation properties and the at keyframes. Animation properties control how the animation should behave with uh, uh, and the at keyframes rule controls what happens during the animation. There are eight animation properties in total. This challenge will keep it simple and cover the two most important ones first. Animation name sets the name of the animation, which is later used by at keyframes to tell CSS which rules go with animations. Animation duration sets the length of time for the animation. At keyframes is specify exactly what happens with the animation over the duration. This is done by giving CSS properties for specific frames during the animation with percentages ranging from 0% to 100%. If you compare this to a movie, the CSS properties for 0% is how the element displays in the opening scene. The CS property for 100 is how the element appears at the end, right before the credits roll. Then CSS applies the magic to transition the element over the given duration to act out the scene. Here's an example to illustrate the usage of at keyframes and the animation properties. Right, so we 
we're selecting the M ID. And we have keyframes, color, colorful. Um, we have a hundred percent. The element with the anim ID, the code snippet above sets the animation name to colorful and sets the animation duration to three seconds. Then the keyframes rule links to the animation properties with the name colorful. It sets the colorful, or excuse me, it sets the color to blue at the end of the animation, 0%, which will transition to yellow by the end of the animation, 100%. You are limited to only beginning and transitions. You can set properties for the element for any percentage between 0% and 100%. Create an animation for the element with the ID rect. by setting the animation name to rainbow. Animation duration to four seconds. Next, declare a keyframe rule and set the background color at the beginning of.
I should be using a collection of rainbow. Let's see. Ah. I haven't named my keyframe. And I also have not given it an animation duration. So I must name my animation. I must name my. Oh, no, I don't name my keyframe. Uh, let's see. Ah, there we go. I have to actually put the keyframe in front of the name. That I added the animation duration and animation name to. And that would be rainbow. Applied visual design, use CSS animation to change the hover state of a button. You can use CSS keyframes to change the color of a button in its hover state here's an example of changing the width of an image on hover one, one second all right uh, we have image hover Animation name width, animation duration is 500 milliseconds. Keyframes width, 100%, uh, 40 pixels. Note that MS stands for milliseconds, where a thousand milliseconds is equal to one second. Use CSS keyframes to change the background color of the button element so it becomes uh, 4791D0. When a user hovers over it, the keyframe roll should only have an entry for 100%. We should use the animation name background color. Uh,
You know it'll work when you hover over your button and the color animates. Applied visual design, modify fill mode of an animation. That's great, but it doesn't work right. Notice how the animation resets after 500 milliseconds has passed, causing the button to revert back to the original color. You want the button to stay highlighted. This can be done by setting the animation fill mode property to forwards. The animation fill mode specifies the style applied to an, an, uh, to an element when the animation is finished or has finished. You can set it like so. Animation fill mode forwards. Set the animation fill mode property of button hover to forwards. So the button will stay highlighted when a user hovers over it. Right. Create movement, uh, applied visual design, create movement using CSS animation. Elements have a specified position such as fixed or relative. CSS offset properties, right, left, top and bottom can be used in animation rules to create movement. As shown in the example below, you can push the item downwards and upwards by setting the top property of the 50% keyframe to 50 pixels but having it set to zero pixels for the first uh, and the last keyframe, uh, or excuse me, but having it set to zero pixels for the first 0% and the last 100% keyframe. Okay. So as you see right here for the top property of the 50% keyframe, it's set to 50% and that pushes it upwards. Uh, but having it zero pixels for the 0% and 100% keyframe, uh, 
that's what allows it to go up and down. So that's how you, that's how babies are made, guys, right there with keyframes. Add a horizontal motion to the div animation. Using the left offset property, add to the keyframes rule. So rainbow starts at zero pixels at 0%. Move 25 pixels, uh, moves to 25 pixels at 50% and ends up at negative 25 pixels at 100%. Don't replace the top property in the editor. The animation should have both vertical and horizontal motion. All right, so let's do this. And what's the name of our rainbow? I mean, of our keyframe. Oh, okay, so to the div, and so the ID for the div is rect. Keyframe for rect. You don't need to fill that out again. So, John, if you look up at what the keyframes already got typed in, mm -hmm. you see how it says keyframes rainbow? Yeah. What that does is it points to any selector that has the animation name rainbow in it okay so it points to the rect id so that so the rect id is what's going to be animated oh i see i see and that's the animation name sweet so we're mm -hmm. keyframes target the animation name not the id not the selector right okay okay um I guess since that's already made for us, I guess what we're going to do is we're just going to edit it, it looks like. So for, what is it asking us for here? Add a horizontal motion to the div animation using the left offset property. Add to uh, the keyframes rule. So rainbow starts at zero pixels at zero percent, moves to 25 pixels. No, you don't want to erase top. It says don't erase top. Ah, don't replace the top property in the editor. The animation should have both vertical and horizontal motion. Okay.
Uh, applied visual design. Create visual direction by fading an element from left to right. For this challenge, you'll change the opacity of an animated element so it gradually fades as it reaches the right side of the screen. In the displayed animation, the round element with the gradient background moves to the right by the 50% mark of the animation per the keyframes rule. Target the element with the ID of ball and add the opacity property set to uh, 0 0.1 at 50%. So the element fades as it moves to the right. So where is the ball ID? And that has the animation name of fade, which is targeted by the keyframes. Uh, right here. And we're going to change that's the so target the elements with the id of ball and add the opacity property set to 0.1 at 50 percent So, dude, we were just talking about how to get into it. I guess this is what, what we were just talking about, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's freaking, and that's like, what's that called? What, what's that called? Like, no, it's not foreshadowing. It's like a uh, freaking... Um, applied visual design, animate elements continually using an infinite, an infinite animation count. The previous challenges covered how to use some of the animation properties and keyframes rule. Another animation property is the animation iteration count, which allows you to control how many times you would like to loop through the animation. Here's an example. Animation iteration count three. In this case, the animation will stop after running three times, but it's possible to uh, make the animation run continuously by setting the value to infinite. To keep the ball bouncing on the right on a continuous loop, change the animation iteration count property to infinite. It go look at it go people let's see if i did it right let me get my green box this little one that's kind of cool dude. and it's like getting squished up and stuff that's neat you know i wonder how you know what it is it's doing that because it's it's got like different like with that certain times that's neat yeah yeah 50 percent. you see it changes the width and height of the ball yeah that's really cool <laughs> it's a laser I'm gonna put like a little bit of all this into my. Here's one more continuous animation example with the animation iteration count property that uses the heart you designed in a previous challenge. And I can put this.
this heart at the bottom of the W3 Develops website where it says made with love, I can like make it beating. Oh, that's going to be so cool. Anyways, so I'm going to read that again. Make a CSS heartbeat using an infinite animation count. Here's one more continuous animation example with the animation iteration count property that uses the heart you designed in a previous challenge. The one second long heartbeat animation consists of two animated pieces. Elements uh, includes the before and after uh, pieces are animated to change size using the transform property. And the background div is animated to change its color using the background property. Keep the heart beating by adding the animation iteration count property for both the back class and the heart class, setting the value to infinite. The heart before and heart after selectors do not need to do not need any animation properties. All right. This is really cool, bro. I like this. This is fun. Iteration, iteration count property to both class and the heart class and set the value to infinite. So animation, iteration count. Go.
Hey John, let's uh let's take another ten. Um because we've been going for an hour. Yeah, dude. Let's uh take time. What's up, what's up? You back? Yeah, I'm back. Man, are you back, bro? Stoke, you there? You still might be on break still. No. Yeah, I heard from him since the last time we took breaks. I don't know if he came back or not. How far, so how much JavaScript do you know, dude? I know a little bit. A little bit? What's a little bit? Like, how, how, uh, like what have you gone through? What do you, like, what, what, what do you know? Um, on free code camp, I did some of the algorithms. Um, like, I, I reset when I started this class, so nothing's showing okay. on my free code camp, but. Okay. Yeah, I did a lot of the algorithms. So I know quite a bit of JavaScript, but I haven't really touched it in a while. So okay. I may be a little rusty. I know like most of the basic stuff, but I need to refresh on it. Okay. Yeah, dude. Um, so I'm what I really want to do, I want to finish up with CSS. I was hoping to go through MDN and this at the same time because MDN has projects, but that'll probably be another one we'll do another time. But uh, so for now, what we'll do is we'll finish up. Right. And we take a dabble in javascript after that what do you say well i think you need to finish up css before you jump into javascript no like, no you can do uh you you can uh jump into javascript uh while you're doing css right but see once you finish out if you look on free code camp mm -hmm. once you finish out grid yeah and you see those responsive web design mm -hmm. projects you do those five projects they give you a certificate Certificate right. you can put on LinkedIn or whatever, right? To show that you finished. That. All right, cool, dude. Yeah, so we can get that. All right, freak yeah. Yeah, but you gotta you gotta finish like everything. You gotta have green check boxes and everything. No, 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 no. You can just finish out those projects. Like you can go and get the thing right now. All you have to do is get those projects, and finish them out. You didn't know that? Are you sure? Yeah, dude. You didn't know that? You don't have to well, go all this. You can well, just yeah, but. You but just, you should go through all that. No, no, we're going to go through all of it, definitely. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I'm, I was just saying, as like a side note, you don't have to, like, if you know all this and you mm -hmm. on the responsive web design projects, not along with any of the projects on any of the, like on JavaScript or anything, if you just do the projects, you'll get the certificate. Because that's what the certificate's for. Right, right. But yeah, dude. All right, so let's finish up uh, Applied. You know, there's a reason like most most programmers say when you're learning, learn HTML, learn CSS, and then learn JavaScript. Right. Like in that order. That's true. That is true. Yeah, so he's endorsing it LinkedIn. <laughs> oh, Manny's back. What was what was that, Manny? Elliot endorsing a bunch of stuff on LinkedIn. Oh. <laughs> Oh, you're 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 on LinkedIn. You have a Elliot as a connect. Yeah. So, uh, uh, did, when did you have you been had a LinkedIn? Yeah, I've been a member of W three. Right, nice, dude. Nice. What about you, Pat? Yeah, I'm the same. Oh, uh, you, you've been had one. Yeah. Nice, nice. That's what I like to hear. So you guys are you guys were already prepared, man. Like you guys want this, bro. You guys want to get a job. That's why you yeah, guys I want a job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can sell. Serious. And bro, like not even by the end of it, like right now, I, I know I told you this already, but it would serve you so well, bro. If like you literally, since you're in another country, if you literally just went out and like started like freelancing yourself, because I don't know the economy in Mexico, but I know in America, 
since you're so close. No, no, I live in San Diego right now. Really? My mom's going through some like uh, health stuff, so I came mm. to visit her for a week. But I'm, I've studied and uh, I graduated from San Diego State University. Are you a citizen? <laughs> yeah. So you can you can travel anywhere, and no problem. Get a job anywhere, no problem. Yeah, pretty much. All right, cool. So yeah, dude, you're set, dude. Oh man, and you have like since you're a citizen, you don't have any record. You have, you have a car more than like we were not. You have a license. Yeah, for sure. And what about you, Pat? The same thing? No record and a license? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm good. Oh, you guys are set, bro. Um, well, see, I can't really move too far since I'm the sole caretaker of an elderly parent, so I no. I can't like move her around. <laughs> That's understandable, and that's a good. That's that's the good thing about learning this is that you know, where do you live at? You said Minnesota. Uh, no, I'm in Georgia. Georgia. Mm -hmm. Oh, bro, that's where everything's moving. Everything's going to Georgia. I don't know why, but everything's moving to Georgia for some reason. It's really cool. So you're right underneath Florida. So, bro, with W3 develops, I'm about to put Florida on the map, bro. I'm about to connect all of Florida, and then after that, like, I want to connect like every other city in the United States. But first, I'm gonna connect every city in Florida, dude. Every city. Good luck with that. There's a lot of cities in Florida. <laughs> oh, bro, I already, I already, I already got the. I have the, like, I'm not worried about that. the The thing that I, I have to do first is I have to get so people can log into the website. But getting the people here isn't a problem. Because like all I'm gonna say is like, yo, we have meetups. Like set your own meetup up, and we'll keep track of all the other meetups going on around us. So that's the easy part. The the part that I'm learning is. In the, uh... Hey Manny, I sent you a connect on LinkedIn. Yeah, dude, and I, I recommend you guys like go and uh, like give each other the. Hey, I got a random question. Hmm. Um, I'm about to finish the JavaScript uh thing from Free Code Camp. Yeah. And I was thinking about uh doing some projects because you know free code camp has like a youtube channel mm -hmm. um, yeah once i finish those projects should could i would it be a good idea to like uh, put them on my linkedin or should i just push it to github uh you should oh. push it to github okay and and promote it on linkedin oh yeah, no. okay that's why you that's why you're gonna have a, a personal website you're gonna have like a manny.com you know a manny manny a manny web developer dot com or something, you know? Manny yeah, but I because I, I made the portfolio on like, <coughs> uh, with free code camp or whatever. Yeah. But I wasn't sure like if you should also like show people that you finished it on uh, LinkedIn. Yeah, dude. Since they're just I, personal I, projects. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you can actually post projects on there, so definitely make a post about it too. People can see your posts and stuff. LinkedIn is a different kind of platform. So here was the thing I was doing earlier. Um, I'm gonna link this site in chat. So here, there's like a bunch. When I say a bunch, there's a bunch here of JavaScript exercises. Um, and and they don't give you like much information. They just say, "A hey, build a JavaScript program that does this." That's cool. So what I started to do was. Now it doesn't look pretty, but um, actually started up a website thing where I was going through and doing that. Here, I'll put a link in the chat for that. Yeah, dude. So like, you know, I kind of just got my own little domain thing and made like a little learning thing. And then like each of those links are like JavaScript challenges I did. And all of those are on GitHub too. Yeah, so you're still gonna be able to uh, put your uh, certificate up there. Have like a separate section for certificates. Right. Yeah, man. Nice. Oh, these are actually JavaScript projects. Sweet. <coughs> yeah, I would. Uh, I would make this easy to read. Like maybe maybe make it a little bit bigger and make this a little bit shorter. Like I, yeah, I I didn't really style it much. I just kind of just started throwing stuff up there. 
Yeah, I'd just be like, I am a web developer. Here are my projects. Here, be like, here, my name is Patrick, and here are my web development projects. Here are mm -hmm. some of my projects. My, my develop, I don't know, something like that. Yeah, so, like, I started doing this as, like, 100 days of code, but then I would just, like. That's cool. Like, kind of just was, like, whatever, you know, when I kind of mm -hmm. lost interest in, in coding. Okay. And I, and I stopped, but um, this gives you something to push to GitHub, like, every day. That's true. Are the projects really hard? Uh, no, not really. I mean, if I was if, having trouble with like just the algorithm section on free code camp, the, the algorithms, the algorithms are a little harder than these, the, at least the beginning challenges on that website. I like, I, I didn't go like there's 130 beginner challenges. Nice. And you, as you can see, I only, I only did like what 10, 11 of them. There's another thing called, um, what is it, code fights or? Cold Wars. Yeah, dude, like you can't, you can't even start this. I don't know if you guys can see my screen. I thought my internet went out for a second. But yeah, dude, you can like literally start this, and you can't like. There's no HTML, CSS on here, but it's JavaScript. Other like actual languages, and you can't proceed until you finish this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. All right, so let's get back to. Yeah, let's finish up that uh, one section on free code camp. Yep. There's only, I think there's six more left in that section. What's up? All right. And it's starting to get nice. Hey, do you guys, uh, do you want to finish up? Do you want to screen share? Uh, yeah, sure. I guess I can. All right, um, I think we're on this one, yeah. Okay, animate elements at, a vari at variable rates. There are a variety of ways to alter the animation rates of similarly animated elements. So far, this has been achieved by applying an animated animation iteration count property and setting keyframes rules. To illustrate, the animation on the right consists of two stars, that each decrease in size and opacity at the 20% mark in the keyframes rule, which creates the twinkle animation. You can change the keyframes rule for one of the elements so the stars twinkle at different rates. Um, Alter the, alter the animation rate for the element with the class name star one by changing its keyframes rule to 50%. So star one animation name is twinkle one. Um, changing its keyframes rule to 50%. So we'll change this to 50. And yeah, you see one blinks faster than the other one. Should be done with that one. Um, in the
in the previous challenge, you changed the animation rates for two similarly animated elements by altering the keyframes rules. You can achieve the same goal by manipulating the animation duration of multiple elements. In the animation in the code editor, there are three stars in the sky that twinkle at the same rate at, on a continuous loop. To make them twinkle at different rates, you can set the animation duration property to different values. Set the animation duration of the elements with the classes star one, star two, star three to one second, 0.9 seconds, and 1.1 seconds, respectively. So star one is one second, star two is 0.9 seconds, and star three is 1.1 seconds. So they animate at different rates. Um, change animation timing with keywords. In CSS animations, the animation timing function property controls how quickly an animated element changes over the duration of the animation. If the animation is a car moving from point A to point B in a given time, your animation duration, the animation timing function says how the car acceler accelerates and decelerates over the course of the drive. There are a number of predefined keywords available for popular options. For example, the default value is ease, which starts slow, speeds up in the middle, and then slows down again in the end. Other options include ease out, which is quick in the beginning, then slows down. Ease in, which is slow in the beginning, then speeds up at the end. Or linear, which applies a constant animation speed throughout. For the elements with the idea of ball one and ball two, add an animation timing function property to each and set ball one to linear and ball two to ease out. Notice the difference between how the elements move during the animation but end together, since they share the same animation duration of two seconds. So ball one, animation timing function, set it to linear. So it moves at a constant speed all the way down. And ball two, ease out. So it starts off really fast and then slows down. All right, that should pass. And we are good. All right, learn how Bezier curves work. The last challenge introduced the animation timing function property and a few keywords that change the speed of an animation over its duration. CSS offers an option other than keywords that provides an even finer control over how the animation plays out through the use of Bezier curves. In CSS animation, Bezier curves are used with the cubic Bezier function the shape of a curve represents how the animation plays out. The curve lives on a one by one coordinate system. The X axis of this coordinate system is the duration of the animation. Think of it as a time scale. And the Y axis is the change in the animation. And the cubic Bezier function consists of four main plot point or four main points that sit on this one by one grid. P0, P1, P2, and P3. P0 and P3 are set for you. They are the beginning and end points, which are always located respectively at the origin 0, 0, and 1, 1. You set the X and Y values for the other two points, and where you place them in the grid dictates the shape of the curve for the animation to follow. This is done in CSS by declaring the X and Y values of P1 and P2 anchor points in the form X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Pulling that all together, here's an example of a Bezier curve in CSS code. Animation timing function, cubic Bezier, and then some numbers. In the example above, the X and Y values are equivalent for each point. X1 and Y1 equal the same number, and X2 and Y2 equal the same number, which if you remember from geometry class, results in a line that extends from the origin point 1 1. The animation is a linear change of an element during the length of an animation. 
and is the same as using the linear keyword. In other words, it changes to a constant speed. For the element with the ID of ball one, change the value of the animation timing function property from linear to its equivalent cubic Bezier function value. Use the point values given in the example above. Okay, so ball one, take this out. This is confusing as shit. I don't understand this one. Cubic Bezier. And for parentheses, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.75, 0 0.75. I guess that's it. Oh, I passed. I don't know how, but I passed. <laughs> Got that one was a little confusing. Half <laughs> a president. All right. Um, previous challenge discussed the ease out keyword. It describes an animation change that speeds up first and then slows down at the end. On the right, the difference between ease out keyword for the blue element and linear keyword for the red element is demonstrated. Similar animation progressions to the ease out keyword can be achieved using a custom cubic Bezier curve function. In general, changing the P1, P2 anchor points drives the creation of different Bezier curves, which controls how the anim animation progresses through time. Here's an example of a Bezier curve using values to mimic the ease out style. Remember that all cubic Bezier functions start with P0 at 00, 0 and end with P3 at 1,1. In this example, the curve moves faster through the y-axis, starts at zero, goes to the P1 y value of zero, then goes to the P2 y value of one. Then it moves through the x-axis, zero to start, then zero for P1, up to 0.58 P2. As a result, the change in the animated element progresses faster than the time of the animation for that segment. Towards the end of the curve, the relationship between the change of X and Y value reverses. The Y value moves from one to one, no change, and the X moves from 0.58 to one, making the animation changes progress slower compared to the animation duration. To, effect, to see the effect of this Bezier curve in action, change the animation timing function of the element with the ID of red, this one, to a cubic Bezier function Cubic Bezier with x1, y1, x2, y2 values set respectively to 0, 0, 0.58, and 1. This will make both elements progress through the animation similarly. 0, 0, 0 0.58, 1. Okay, they're moving the same. So that should finish that. Done. Uh, make more make motion more natural using a Bezier curve. This challenge animates an element to replicate the movement of a ball being juggled. Prior challenges covered the linear and ease out cubic Bezier curves. However, there neither depicts the juggling movement accurately. You need to customize a Bezier curve for this. The animation timing function automatically loops at every keyframe when the animation iteration count is set to infinite. Since there is a keyframe rule set in the middle of the animation duration at 50%, it results in two identical animation progressions at the upward and downward movement of the ball. The following cubic Bezier curve simulates a juggling movement. Notice that the value of Y2 is larger than 1. Although the cubic Bezier curve is mapped on a 1 by the one coordinate system can only accept x values from zero to one. The y value can be set to larger numbers than one. This results in a bouncing movement that is ideal for simulating a juggling ball. Change the value of the animation timing function of the element green to this one to these values right here. So zero. Oops, 0 0.311, 0 0.441, 0 0.444, and 1.649. 
Okay. So the green one's like more naturally moving. All right, we are done with that section. Hey, John, you there? Oh, there we go. I have my, my mic muted. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, was, I was like, yo, Manny, are you there? <laughs> I, like, I guess Manny's not there. <laughs> he's, at, he's away from the, computer, from the keyboard at the moment. <laughs> uh, my, my mic was muted. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Manny, um, you talking about that internship. I saw you link it. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to apply if you would like. Yeah, man. But uh, I don't like going to places. Like, I would apply. I would apply, but I would also apply for paid jobs. Uh, yeah, but sometimes it just helps to get your foot in the door. No, 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 no. Don't get me wrong. If you get mm -hmm. your foot in the door that way, that's perfect. But if there's somebody that says, hey, I'm going to give you a job before you get the internship, take the job first. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, and don't just apply for for jobs but apply for internships too if that's what you feel comfortable with you know but definitely don't shy away from a job i say like for as many internships as i apply for i'd apply for even more jobs like a three to one ratio three jobs to one internship Okay. So I got a, so we could do like a, like a little project to just kind of cement what we learned today. Um, to with some animation? Well, not really like super animation, but just something simple, like uh, create a web page with like a gradient background, number one. Um, and then on it, have a button or a box, whatever you want to do, that when you hover over it, um, slowly changes color. Slowly changes color? Okay. Mm -hmm. Or change, yeah, animates color instead of just like a fast switch. You know what I'm going to do? I don't want to have a button. I want to have like a background image that I do that on. So I feel like I would get like a better appreciation of it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like have it transition slowly like to like a grayish black or, you know what I'm saying? Like from black to white kind of like when you click on it like i don't know something yeah you could do that but i mean just for like learning i would say yeah. just do like a box just do a box that okay. changes okay. Color instead of a button so yeah. have have a a gradient background and a box that changes colors slowly when you hover do you want to live code that yeah we can all right sweet dude let me uh turn the or turn your screen share on bro that'd be awesome all right let me get Adam. Maybe if we like incorporated a little bit of everything that we learned today. Um, I don't know about incorporating everything because that that those last few Bezier curves are kind of shitty. <laughs> Let me close all this out. Let me move that. So what made you get into web development, yo? Huh? Uh, I don't know. I was just, I was, I was getting tired of my job. Um, I was just like looking to start something different. And uh, yeah, what made you choose this though? Like out of, you could have, you, you could have went and worked at a zoo. Yeah, true. And I wouldn't mind working at a zoo. I love animals. Um, <laughs> I hear you. Uh, I don't know. It was just like. It was it was always something I was kind of interested in, you know, um, but I, like I never like when I was a kid, I was always like, oh, you know, computer programming and like making games and stuff would be awesome. Right. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. And then the, the, then it's like when I got older, I realized, you know, that's like two separate things. You got 
Um, you know, it's not like one person sitting there making a video game, although yeah. some people have done that. Um, like Minecraft, I guess you could say. I think one person did Minecraft. Um, <laughs> what was that? Was it Pong? Um, I don't know, but like, <laughs> yeah, like early Atari games were usually one person, but you know, game development is more like team stuff. You're talking about like World of Warcraft. Or yeah, Skate. yeah, all that stuff's like you know that's huge. You got a lot of people working on that stuff, so massive. Like, yeah, so like, and then like. It was like, eh, you know, and then I started doing, like, you know, websites on my own and stuff. And it was like, oh, well, that that's pretty easy is making websites. But then I learned about, you know, HTML a little bit and CSS. So it, was, it was always something that I had a passing interest in, but mm -hmm. never really, like, jumped into it. So Game I started. Is, you know, like around 2001-ish to 2008-ish, if you would have learned, like, Java, just messed around with that like you could have probably made a lot of money dude oh yeah oh yeah in fact if i had learned it back in the 90s yeah. um i would yeah i would have even been better off but I, I i just you know you know life didn't go that way and uh you know i kind of found this and then i lost my job not too long ago and now it's like well this is something yeah dude you know this is some money right here man this and then once you do this I, i'll send you guys like literally like a seven to a 12 minute video to learn WordPress in 12 minutes and go on WordPress. Like you can just knock out clients with that. And you can also like do like custom stuff with uh, like HTML and CSS and JavaScript, um, like for more higher paying clients that want more customized pages. Okay. Um, oh, new file. HTML emails. And then eventually, you know, full stack. To, you know, but it's all about like what people like want. Like, do you want to specialize? Do you want to, you know, be a generalist? What do you want to be a generalist in? What do you want to specialize in? And those kind of questions. Right. That's my thing. I wouldn't make a good specialist. I'm not the type of person that's a specialist. I hate learning just one thing. See, I, I feel like like the back end would be more like, <coughs> well, no, that like the like front end would probably be more. Like, I don't really know, dude. <laughs> you just gotta look into it and see what you like first. That's really what I'm doing. New folder, animation, test. Sorry, I'm just making a some files here so we can work. It's cool, man. Can you guys see my screen? Can you guys see me? No, I can't see you at all. Here, let me share my screen. Hey, guys, this is Elliot. I'm back. Sorry that hey, took so long. What's up, Elliot? No worries. That's Don't all worry. good. We're about to do some live coding here. Okay. Um, I was getting bored in that meeting, so I, I flipped back over to Free Code Camp. And I did some of it, but I'm sure you guys got a lot further. Uh, we finished. Yeah, we finished that section. Yo, Elliot, me and you might have to go over some uh, free code camp together because I'm kind of like I I know the HTML part already and I know pretty much like the basic CSS. But have you done the whole basic CSS? Yeah, I I'm I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Like are you like halfway done? I got fourteen lessons and then I'm caught up with you guys. Oh, sweet! All right, cool, nice. Um, Nice. For applied visual design. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I'm right there. So, and I've already done this once. This first cert, I've done it before. Oh, you have? Sweet. Yeah, this is this is a second uh, practice for me. <coughs> yeah. Refresher. Yeah. And have you have you started with the JavaScript at all? I started with basic JavaScript. 
but I didn't it? get terribly far in it before no. I joined. Did you get like halfway or yeah. a quarter of the way? Maybe like a fifth of the way? No, I I just did the basic JavaScript and I think I got like halfway through that maybe. Okay. Yeah, so you got a little bit further than me. Sweet, dude. Yeah, and then I I cleared everything off and restarted with this go round. Yeah, man, definitely. All right, so y'all seeing my code editor here? Oh, uh, yes, sir. All right, so all I did was create one div. I called it box, um, and I linked a style sheet to it. So, so the first thing I said we were gonna do was uh do a a gradient background. So I'll do I'll use body for that because I want the whole background to be that, and uh, we'll do background linear gradient and that takes oops no space um the first one is is like what angle you want it at so we'll just say 60 degrees and then you put your colors in so we'll say uh we'll say light gray and white and as you can see, it's like very, it's kind of hard to see. Let me change this to black. Can y'all see the gradient now? Change this to 45. Yeah, I can see it. Cool. So there's a gradient and then we'll mess with our box here. Give it a height of um <laughs> 200 pixels with oh, 200 pixels give it a background color oh green there we go so i see that this is repeating like over and over again the body see how you got these lines in here um I think you can choose background repeats. Is that it? Or do you do background? <coughs> there it is. Background repeat. No repeat. And I think that, yeah, so the body is changing compared to the size of its content. And since all we got in there's this box, uh, the body is stopping just below the box. So I wonder where you oh, you're still bottom? Nice. Yeah, I like I, I love I love that feature about it, man. That's the reason I got it. So I've been using VS Code like super happy to do I have to look this up, but there's a way to make the body a certain size no matter how much content you got in it. Um but right now, I'll just leave it at that. So then we need to have the hover effect. So box, we're going to use a pseudo class of hover. Um, and we'll do <coughs> oh. So on hover, do I have to put my keyframes in here? Maybe I'll just do the animation name. We'll, we'll call it color change and then animation duration will make one second. We'll do keyframes, color change, and then at 100%, let's do 50%. We'll make the background color red. And then at 100%, we'll make the background color yellow. We'll see if this works. It doesn't look like it's working. So I need to go back to Free Code Camp and look up the hover.
Where was it at? It was under the button one, right? <coughs> Skew. There we go. Oh, you have to put the animation name and width under hover. Oh, I did do that. Box hover. I have double at here. Maybe that has something to do with it. Still doesn't seem like it's working. Animation duration. At Cree frames, 50% width. Let's try adding a width in here. Four hundred pixels. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be working. So I got something wrong here on my hover. The class is box. I got the box class right. So let's try background color red just to see if the hover is working in this. Yeah, so the hover is working in this. So that part is right. <coughs> but I'm missing something in this. Let's open this in the browser. Did it open? Don't look like it. Oh, because I'm in the CSS file. Open in browser. Let's inspect it. So nothing happens when I hover over it for some reason. It's not even showing a hover element in here. That's weird because it works in um, pre code camp and uses exact code. Try just changing this to color. Set a color change. No, that don't seem to be working either. But the width at a hundred. You have the you have the width stand. It, it doesn't. You're not defining anything for the width at a hundred. There we go. I got it to work now. Oh, you got it to work. Cool. Yeah. Can y'all see that? I can see it. It's looking good, dude. Nice. It's really neat. So, um. Now it should just change colors. There we go. And there's a way to keep it at a state. Um, you'd actually have a change back to its original color. Yeah, see it goes red and then goes green. Um, what was it? Type Animation in, fill. Type in, type in infinite for the duration. Animation. You want you? <laughs> You want infinite? <laughs> All right. So if you do infinite, it should like flash on and off, right? I think so. No, I don't think it's working for this. Nope. Yeah, so I'm guessing on a hover effect, infinite doesn't work. Ah, uh, I see. Animation, fill mode, forwards. And if I change this back to yellow, it should stay yellow when I hover over it. Nope, went back to green. That didn't work. Oh, I didn't put forwards here. There we go. Now it should stay yellow. There we go. And then when I move it off, it'll go back to green. Yep, 
So that's what we were learning today, Elliot. Sweet. A box that just doesn't infinitely. <laughs> you could do that if you take off the, the hover. Yeah. Um, like if I moved all this into here. There, it just, it'll start acting on its own. And then you, then you could probably change it to infinite and it might go on forever. Maybe not. Reason infinite don't work here. If we figure this out, we'll figure out how to make that game. <laughs> Serious, that, that, that thing you showed us, bro. I think we can do it in less lines of code too. Yeah, it ain't working on this one. Oh, maybe I need to take the forwards off. That makes sense. I need to take this line out. <coughs> I'll turn back to green. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand why it's not working on infinite. Put a put a duration for those two, for the uh, for the keyframes. Um. Oh, never mind. Is it going? Well, when I put in one second, so it's not the animation that's not working. It's the whenever I put inf infinite in there. Hmm. So you could change this to like eight seconds, and it'd take forever, but it'll slowly uh, fade. That's cool. I've actually seen websites that do this on like the background and they'll fade like a bunch of colors um, while you're in the background, but it's like a super long time, like 30 seconds between changing colors. That's so neat. yeah, like you don't even like notice it or it might even be even longer than that. So like while you're reading the web page, like you're not even paying attention to the background. On. So yeah, John, you can play with stuff like this on anything. You can do it with, with like images too. If you have like a color image and a black and white image, mm -hmm. you can have it slowly fade from your uh, color image to black and white or vice versa. Give it a little transparency. If I okay. Put it over actual image. Or opacity, I should say. Yeah, I mean, you could have it where when you hover over an image, like the image disappears. Like an animation where the image disappears and then like text like fades in. <clears throat> So what's after this today? What are we working with after this? Um, so on free code camp, it's applied accessibility, which is pretty easy stuff. Is it not? Yeah, this is for like people with disabilities that are serving net. So it talks about stuff you should do on your web pages. Uh, I see, I see, yeah, and good SEO as well. Yeah, so you know, that way, like when if somebody's blind and is surfing the net. And they're using a screen reader. They know how to navigate your page. Yeah, I wonder if there's like a like a GUI to add to like find every. Well, I don't know. Never mind. I mean, like a it's a whole different project. I was thinking about a, gu a GUI for what? I was thinking about building like a GUI where like you could plug in your code mm -hmm. and it would just automatically look through all the stuff where like you screen read it for. But then I was like, yo, that can get like really complicated. Really yeah, I bet you somebody did that shit with like Python or something. That'd be cool. See, that's why I want to le learn for like my, my own personal projects like that, you know? Figure out how to do something like that right quick, type it up, get it, mm -hmm. ship it up. For myself, you know? And then that, those, those kind of things would help other people too. Yeah, one of, my, uh, one of my buddies that lives out in the Philippines, he's a, he's a coder and he knows stuff like, uh, C++ and Python and like he wrote a Python program that 
will go through like all the like trending videos in YouTube and yeah. it'll count like the, 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 the words and all the, like the descriptions. Yeah. So it'll give you like words that are trending on YouTube. It's pretty wild. That is, it's cool. And for those videos to be, uh, like that. They have, yo, why don't you go ahead and, uh, see where it says the change animation timing with keywords. Why don't, why don't we uh, work out, do like a little personal project with that. What are you talking about? Um, applied visual design change animation timing with keywords. Here, I'll do it. I'll share my screen. All right. Oh, that one. Okay. Put this in code pen. What was that video you're talking about, John? The 12 minutes WordPress thing? I mean, I pretty much know um, WordPress, but. Go on the W3 Develops YouTube channel and go to the playlist where it says Learn Web Development and Press Control F and and so and, and type in WordPress. Or maybe like if, if all the video there's only like a hundred there's almost there's like 175 videos in there. So page down all the way to the bottom and then once you get there, control F and hit WordPress and look for the shortest video. So playlist, the one that says get a dev job? Yeah, get a dev job. Yep. Uh, because I guarantee you if you go through everything in there, you'll have a dev job, bro. Good guy, this shitload of videos. Yeah, I'm gonna go watch that, but I've been using WordPress to create this this guy's business site and it really is not that hard. No, yeah. I, I didn't realize it was so simple until I saw this video. It was a advertisement actually. And I clicked was on it? It with a completely free video. I was like, sweet, bro. He's not advertising anything. I subscribed to him and all. I was like, cool, bro. Oh wait, how to create a website in ten minutes, that one? Um, yeah, it's like a 10, 12 minute video. Yeah, it's it's like twelve minutes long. Yep, that's it. It's like a white dude. Yeah. 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 A lot of WordPress is the themes are already set up, and then mm -hmm. you just fill in your content. Yeah, it's so easy. That's yeah. that's not hard at all. Yeah, you can do custom CSS and stuff in it, but why? <laughs> when somebody's well, already gone through and done all the CSS for you. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like I messed around. Somebody told me edit their WordPress site. I messed around. And I started messing with the CSS and HTML. I didn't even know how to use the drag and drop until I saw this video. Yeah, it's drag and drop and there is added functionality with plugins. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, and if you're building one, especially for somebody that is commercial, I would always advise them to get the business plan because that way they can add SEO into their site. Otherwise you can't get any benefit of SEO or any plugins or um, anything. What do you mean by that, dude? Yeah, what do you mean by business plan, Elliot? What do you mean the SEO part? Like, how do you not get benefit from the SEO? What SEO do they offer beneficial that you can't? Well, it's just a basic page. Um, like, I'll keep this between us, but I'll share my screen and I'll show you. Yeah, dude, let me see. The guy's side I'm making. Do you want us to stop recording? Yeah, no, I would I appreciate that. Okay, yeah, I'll stop recording. Just, just, just for it. a moment. Um, yeah. At least just pause it for me. I'll let you know when I stop. Hold on. Um, and stop. Uh, mm -hmm. Recording. No. You know, it, it's not that hard. But my whole deal, like, I didn't even, that wasn't my goal. I was just talking to him about his business, like, how it was going and you know what what would help him and then eventually i just ended up sorry my daughter's here with me but i just ended up offering my my services for free and mm. he was like i mean he's a high character high quality guy so he was just like no nah, you're my friend I, I would want you to get paid for this Ellie, can you think more 
Sweet, dude. But I'm going to go put my daughter to sleep, but I'll, I'll try to listen and ke- catch up with you guys there. All right. If I'm in CSS, if I'm in the CSS file, do I have to make a style tag? I don't think so, right? No, I don't. Cause I, I don't really know code code like that, but I'm guessing since I'm, it's like this, uh, it's its own CSS folder in a way. Yeah, you don't have to like link it and stuff, so. Okay. That's just two devs. I'm making it to a triangle. I'm making it into a yeah. I'm making it into a triangle. I want them to go from up from down to up. I want them to be going up. Anti gravity. All right.
I don't understand how this is a triangle, dude. Let's see. Ah, I see. Hmm. How'd you make that triangle? I copied this triangle. You copied the triangle? I, off of Cora. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how it works. I'm trying to figure out how it works, too. So change the one of the transparents to red. Sweet! Look at that. What is that? Look at that, man. That's interesting. Oh, it's a square. Yeah, it's a square, but like somehow the border. I don't. I don't understand how the border is. I guess because the. Oh, it's weird. I guess because the border's so thick. I don't know. Like, change your uh, border pixels to like 30. See if that does anything. I'm just trying to figure out how this works. No, no, keep it solid. But change the, the width to like 30. Uh, it changes the whole thing. Oh, okay. I get it. I get it. So there's no background color on this box. It's all border. Hmm. That's interesting. Hey, so I change the width or the height, or just the width, it kind of breaks it. Yeah, because that I think the triangle border only works if you have no box. It's just border. So in order to make it bigger, you're going to have to change the border uh, width. So like if you change it to transparent, transparent back, and then just change that width or that, bo that border, it might make it bigger. If I change this, uh, the border, the, the, the 100 pixel, if I change that, Pixel, mm. it'll change the width. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out why it's a triangle, though. Why are these each divvied up into a triangle? Because there's nothing in the box. There is no content in that in that box. Like if you went over to your div right there on your HTML and like type something in, it would probably break the triangle as well. You like put like a paragraph or something in there. No, it's just over. It's just overflowing. Mm -hmm. Try putting like a paragraph in there, like a p tag, and then typing. Oh. 
still didn't break it. Yeah, it's weird. I kind of want to figure out how to make them all shoot away from each other. But you know what? I guess this is just my one, this is my one triangle. Yeah. Do is I can put a bunch of other ones around it. Since those are all going to be transparent, I can make a bunch of solid ones around it. And then I can make them all shoot away from each other. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do.
What? <laughs> yeah, do you see my screen? Uh, something crazy is going on. Yeah, I don't know what you did there. I no, no, I deleted like one thing. I deleted that, and that happened. So I forgot that I didn't add the rest of it in there, and then so I was like, all right, let me delete that and add this in there, and then boom. I have no idea what that is, dude. It looks really cool, though. Your div is a circle because it's a border radius of 50%. <laughs> this is wild.
<laughs> I gotta figure out how to change that circle color on the inside. Probably have to make your border wider.
<laughs> it just started moving. I even wanted to move yet. It just started moving. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> Get this guy moved. I'm gonna separate him. Why are you moving already? You just got to going. Oh, because the bounce frame doesn't rely on the IDs of the ball.
You having fun with this animation, John? I really am, though. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to get it so that the ones that are going to the right from the left, I want to, I want one to be going. Like, I want them to meet up in the middle, and I want them to, like, hit each other and then go back to the edge. Uh, that'd be interesting. But at the same time, I want these ones to still be going up and down, though. Those are just, you know, that's, like, my first sign of success right there is that they're going up and down. So I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving like this. All right. Well, I got uh, to take off for the night. Um, Tomorrow, are we going to – do the next part on free code camp? Yeah. All right. Yeah, we are. Yeah. I think we could blast through that part and probably the responsive web design. Yeah, I think so. That'll be fun. Yeah, and that'll put us on 
uh, grid and flex box starting next week. Um, hmm. all right. So yeah, and those are those are really short too. Those, that, you know. Right, and I, I think like like there's a lot of resources out there for learning grid and flexbox. So, um, like yeah, I wouldn't rely on free code camp just to learn grid and flexbox. No, but the best way to do it, as always, is just to build through it. You know, to work. Yeah. Yeah, you like there's. Oh, what were you saying, John? You were cutting out. I'm sorry. The more you work with it, the better you get at it. But what were you saying? Yeah. You said there's something. Yeah, I was saying, I was saying those all those like layouts we were doing earlier with Tamari, mm -hmm. where we were doing like the header and footer and all that, and the like just the plain boxes. Yeah. Um, like to do those with grid, it also. Because the the CSS is different in grid, but yeah, totally like it's easier. It's easier to arrange stuff. Yeah, I think so. I think that's the proper way to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I would love to uh, do something with that. So probably for the rest of the night, I'm just going to do what I should do. I'm probably just going to start free code camp over. I'm like an HTML, CSS, and I'm going to get all that recorded. Oh, snap. Did I even start recording again? Yeah, it says recording. All right, cool. So I'm probably just going to get those and then go over the previous projects from what we have from now uh, mm -hmm. up until now, I mean. And uh, okay. this will probably be like the first video that I, gets posted. So awesome. You know? <laughs> Sweet. Yep. Cool. Well, I'll catch y'all tomorrow then. See you tomorrow, man. Have a good night. Later. Oh, snap. Uh, Elliot, you're still there, man? <laughs> Always put babies to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> Do you think you don't mind me? I'm probably about to just start reading, and uh, I'm about to start reading the uh, Mozilla Developer Network uh, curriculum a little bit, and then I'll be going over the Free Code Camp challenges again, and then I'll be I'm basically gonna do like a like a like not an evaluation, but like a overview of what what's been going on the last ten days. And so, if anybody wants to catch up, they can probably just, you know, catch up. I'll go through the challenges. I'll go through the documentation, documentation projects, our own personal projects, and so and so. I'll probably have to do a different Git video tutorial series. I'm not going to go over Git today. But covered basics. Little review preview preview for the people. That sounds good, John. Yeah, man. I'm about to just restart my port my portfolio. Restart the. I'm gonna restart this here. Uh, what text editor do you use? I use Adam. Use Adam, sweet bro. Nice. I like Adam. I'm probably gonna use Adam for the uh, while I'm doing the course too. Then. Do you use that extension? That live preview extension? Which extension? Um, the live preview extension. Like if, yeah, I I think I have that installed. If I don't, I've I've seen it before. Yes, yeah, it definitely comes in handy. Like I think, like I I I usually use Atom, but I've been using VS Code. But Adam, I've been using for like the last, like since I started. I just recently switched over. When uh yeah, I had um my friend who's into Python. He showed me a lot of the cool things that you can do 
uh, with your GitHub and get connected to Adam. Oh yeah. That's GitHub yeah. created Adam, so that's why it's it's greatest asset is that it's it can connect to your GitHub and, you and that's why I love using it because I love that community support. Adam. Ever since um since GitHub was acquired by Microsoft and since Microsoft they use VS Code, that's really the reason I switched to VS Code. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. But I still like Adam. <laughs> But I'm starting to really like VS Code too. The only thing I have to find now is like a live server or something. So I don't have to keep refreshing and it'll be perfect for me. Yeah, man. Video first, bro. I can't stress to people how important video is nowadays. Video is the number one form of, like, it's going to be the number one form of, like, communication. The only thing is there's so many camera shy people out there. But, like, it's cool with yeah, it. You, you got to be willing to show your face and share your name. Yeah, get out from behind. People would do it in this kind of setting, but on their own, they wouldn't do it, which is understandable. Because it's like in a setting like this, yeah. forced, but you're kind of like, you know, like everybody else is doing it. It's kind of like. I mean, not everybody is extroverted. So it's understandable for even even the most extroverted people. It, it can be it can be uh, challenging, but I think it's it's beneficial for for people who are wanting to learn anything to to be in some kind of situation where they're kind of pushed to do that. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's true. That extra push is always beneficial as long as it's positive. So I'm going to start going over the Mozilla Developer Network series. Just kind of for myself and kind of I want to get it on video too. I've been wanting to do it on video for a while. So if you want to stay, you can stay. I think it would benefit you too. It'd be, kind of be like an audio book. <laughs> uh, so let me close this and open up my Adam. Yeah, that'll be fine. I'm, I'm just not in my computer. So I'm just here trying to put my two-year-old to sleep. Perfect, dude. Kind of like an audio book. If she can hear what I'm saying, freaking... uh. Should get that code knowledge. <laughs> code, the code audio books. Watch I put her to sleep. <laughs> nah, I just get my headphones in. Okay. Hopefully I don't put you to sleep. <laughs> No, you're good. <laughs> it's hard to fall asleep with a, uh, a two-year-old that won't fall asleep. Just yeah, staying dude. Staying up all night. I can, I, I, like, for some reason, I, I'm, like, imagining, like, if she, her mom was holding, she'd, like, be pulling her mom's hair and goo goo ga ga <laughs> Trying to get the earrings or whatever. I don't know.
So what am I doing? Um, oh, I, I uninstalled Adam. Wow. Yes, code it is. All right, so I'm going to start off like any old series like I would. Um, so today we are going to learn the learn web development uh, guide at Mozilla Developer Network. That's developer.mozilla.org. And if we go up here and down to learn web development, we will see the first article it says welcome to the mdn learning area this set of articles aims to provide complete beginners to web development with all that they need to start coding simple websites the aim of this or excuse me the yeah the aim of this area of mdn not to take you from beginner to expert, but to take you from beginner to comfortable. From there, you should be able to start making your own way, learning from the rest of Mozilla Developer Network and other in, uh, immediate or intermediate to <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> advanced resources that assume uh, a lot of previous knowledge. If you are a complete beginner, web development can be challenging. We will hold your hand and provide enough detail for you to feel comfortable and learn the topics properly. You should feel at home, whether you are a student learning web development on your own or as part of a class, a teacher looking for class materials, a hobbyist, or someone who wants to understand more about how web technologies work. Disclaimer, the content in the learning area is, added, is being added to regularly. If you have questions regarding topics you'd like to see covered or feel are missing, <coughs> see the contact us section for information on how to get in touch. Beginner uh, to web development, we'd recommend that you start working through our getting started with the web module, which provides a practical introduction to web development. Questions about web development, our common question section may have something to help you. Beyond the basics, if you have a bit of knowledge already, the next step is to learn HTML and CSS in detail. Start with our introduction to HTML module and move on to our introduction to CSS module. Moving on to scripting. <coughs> If you are comfortable with HTML and CSR, CSS already, or you are mainly interested in coding, you'll want to move on to JavaScript or server-side development. Begin with our JavaScript uh, first steps and server-side first steps modules. Uh, note, our glossary provides terminology definitions. Um, it also has random glossary entries. Here's one of them. It says HTTPS, and it's a little example. It says HTTPS, uh, HTTP secure, is an encrypted version of the HTTP protocol. And uh, you can 
hover over that and it gives you information as to what the HTTP protocol is. HTTP, HTTP the hypertext transfer protocol uh, or HTTP is the underlying network protocol that enables transfer of hypermedia documents on the web. We typically, uh, typically between a web browser and a server so that humans can read them and the current version of HTTP specifications is called HTTP forward uh, slash two. <clears throat> so HTTP protocol usually uses SSO or TLS to uh, encrypt all communication between the client and the server. The secure connection allows clients to safely exchange sensitive data with a server, for example, for banking activities or online topics. And then down here, I mean, or online line shopping. And it says topics cover <clears throat> modules are the following is a list of all the topics we cover in the MDM learning area. And it says getting started with the web. And that provides, that module provide, <coughs> <coughs> provides a practical introduction to web development for complete beginners. <coughs> And then we have the HTML module, uh, structuring the web module. And uh, it says HTML is the language that we use to structure the different parts of our content and define what their meaning or purpose is. This topic teaches HTML in detail. CSS, styling the web. CSS is the language that we can use to style and lay out our web content, as well as adding behavior like animation. This topic provides comprehensive coverage of CSS. Uh, JavaScript, dynamic client-side scripting. In this module, it says JavaScript is the scripting language used uh, to add dynamic <coughs> functionality to web apps. This topic teaches all the essentials needed to become comfortable with writing and understanding JavaScript. Accessibility, making the web usable by everyone. Uh, in this module, it says accessibility is the practice of making web content available to as many people as possible, regardless of disability device, locale, or other differentiating factors. This topic gives you all you need to know. Uh, web performance, making websites fast and responsive. In this module, it says web performance is the arts of making sure web applications download fast and are responsive to user interaction, regardless of a user's bandwidth, screen size, network, or device capabilities. Um, tools and testing, in this module, it says this topic Tools developers use to <clears throat> facilitate their work, such as cross-browser testing tools, um, server-side website programming. Uh, and for this topic, it says, even if you are concentrating on client-side web development, it is still useful to know how servers and server-side code <clears throat> features work. The, this topic provides a general introduction to how the server side work how the server side works and detailed tutorials showing how to build up a server side app using a popular uh two popular frameworks uh django uh, which is python and express which is node.js um getting our code examples the code examples you'll encounter in the learning area are all available on if you want to copy them all on your computer the easiest way is to Install Git, uh, number one, install Git on your machine. This is the underlying version control sy uh, system software that GitHub works on top of. <clears throat> number two, sign up for a GitHub account. Uh, number three, once you've signed in, log into GitHub with your username and password. Uh, number four, open your computer's command prompt, Windows or terminal, Linux and Mac OS. Um, and number five, to copy the learning area repo to a folder called learning area in the current location your command prompt terminal uh, command prompt or terminal is pointing to 
uh, use the following command. <clears throat> git clone HTTPS uh, colon Okay, yeah, <laughs> so, excuse me, so colon uh, forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash mdn forward slash learning dash area. Number six, you can now enter the directory and find the files you are after either using your uh, binder file explorer or the cd command. <laughs> You can update the learning area repository with any changes made to the master version on GitHub with the following commands, uh, following steps. <laughs> and it says number one in your command prompt terminal, go inside the learning area directory using CD, for example. If you were in the parent directory, you do uh, number one CD learning. Or, CD dash learning area, and on the second line, or as soon as that uh, finishes, you would. Um, number two is update the repository using the following command uh, get pull. And again, if you want to contact us, uh, want to get in touch with us about anything, the best way is to drop us a message on your learning area Discord thread discourse thread or IRC channels. We'd like to hear from you about anything you think is wrong or missing on the site, requests for new learning topics, requests for help uh, with teams you don't understand, uh, with, or excuse me, requests for help with items you don't understand or any other questions or concerns. If you're interested in helping develop, improve the content, take a look at how you can help and get in touch. We are more than happy to talk to you, whether you are a learner, uh, a a teacher, experienced web developer, or someone else interested in helping to improve the learning experience. All right, so then it also has a bunch of places you can learn besides here. All right, so, <clears throat> so we're gonna click on complete beginner, getting started with the web. And that should have taken us right about here. Yep, so it, that would have taken us right here. So if you click right here on learn development and click on start here, <laughs> this is where we're at now. Getting started with the web. Uh, getting started with the web is a concise series introducing you to practicalities of web development. You'll set up the tools you need to construct a simple web page and publish your own simple story of your first website. It's a lot of work to create a professional website. <clears throat> so if you're new to web development, we encourage you to start small. You won't build another Facebook right away, but it's not hard to get your own simple website online. So we'll start there. By working through the articles listed below, in order, you will go from nothing to getting your first web page online. Let's go. Um, and so we have installing basic software. <coughs> uh, when it comes to tools for building a website, there's a lot to pick from. If you're just starting out, you might be confused by the array of code editors, frameworks, and testing tools out there. In installing basic software, we show you step-by-step -step how to install just the software you need to begin some basic web development. <clears throat> um, what will your website look like before you start right and then the next article um, says 
what we website look like. So the title is what will your website look like? And it says, before you start writing the code for your website, you should plan it first. What information are you showcasing? What fonts and colors are you using? What will your website look like? <clears throat> we outline a simple method you can follow to plan out your site's content and design. Dealing with files. A website consists of many files, text content, code, style sheets, media content, and so on. When you're building a website, you need to assemble these files into a sensible structure and make sure they can talk to one another. <clears throat> Dealing with files explains how to set up a sensible file structure for your website and what issues you should be aware of. Uh, and then we have the HTML basics article. It says hypertext markup language, HTML, is the code that you use to structure your web content and give it meaning and purpose. For example, is my content a set of paragraphs or a list of bullet points? Do I have images inserted on my page? Do I have a data table? Without overwhelming you, HTML basics provides enough information to make you familiar with HTML. CSS basics. This article talks about, uh, for this article it says, cascading style sheets or CSS is the code you use to style your website. For example, do you want the text to be black or red? Where should content be drawn on the screen? What background images and colors should be used to decorate your website? CSS Basics takes you through what you need to get started. JavaScript basics. This article says, JavaScript is the programming language that you use to add interactive features to your website. Some examples could be games, things that when buttons are pressed or that is entered in the forms, dynamic styling effects, uh, animation, and much more. JavaScript basics gives you an idea of what is possible with this exciting language and how to get started. And uh, the next article is publishing your website. <clears throat> it says, once you have finished with finished writing the code and organizing the files that make up your website, you need to put it all online so people can find it. Publishing your sample code describes how to get your simple sample code online with minimum effort. How the web works. Uh, the next article is how the web works. When you access your favorite websites, a lot of complicated things happen in the background that you may not know about. How the web works outlines what happens when you view a web page on your computer. We will get started on the first article, installing basic software, and we'll go up here and click it. Uh, uh, click on installing basic software. And so in this basics, in installing basic software, we show you what tools you need to do simple web development.
and how to install them properly. What tools do the professionals use? Uh, well, a computer. Maybe that sounds obvious to some people, but some of you are reading this article on your phone or a library computer. For serious web development, it's better to invest in a desktop or laptop computer running Windows, Mac, OS, or Linux. Um, side note, uh, it's preferable that you have a uh, eight gigabyte to 16 gigabytes of RAM, you know, eight gigabytes minimum to like run comfortably with this, but you can manage on four. <clears throat> so let's proceed. <laughs> uh, uh, next thing you need is a text editor um, to write code in. This could be a text editor, um, for example, GNU Max, Sublime, Brackets, Notepad, Atom. Uh, I suggest using uh, Visual Code Studio, Visual Code, Visual Studio Code, I mean, or even Atom, uh, because Atom has a nice uh, live preview and Visual Code Studio, uh, Visual Studio Code um, has, uh, uh, it allows you to have your, bat, your Git bash terminal open in there. Um, uh, for um, all right, so or a hybrid editor like Dreamweaver or WebStorm, and then it says Office document editors are not suitable for this use, um, as they rely on hidden elements that interfere with the rendering engines used by web browsers. <clears throat> you need a web browser to test code in. Currently, the most used. Browsers are Firefox and Chrome. Those are the two I recommend. And the rest are Opera, Safari, Internet Explorer, and Microsoft Edge. I also recommend that you have Microsoft Edge installed if you use Windows, you know, just you check it out in Firefox, Chrome, and Edge, basically. Um, you should also test your site or test how your site performs on mobile devices. Uh and on any old browsers your target audience may still be using. Again, uh, so, so that's uh, like Internet Explorer uh, 8 through 10. Um, at, at the time of filming, uh, recording this, the most current one is Internet Explorer 11. And uh, they just integrated support for Flexbox and Grid, I believe, in IE 11. So that's why I say Firefox and Chrome, download those for sure, and all the rest if you want. But Firefox and Chrome. And if you're doing this developer stuff, I re definitely recommend, uh, you know, Firefox uh, Developer Edition. Check it out on Google <laughs> or DuckDuckGo. All right, so next, a graphics editor like GIMP, Paint.net, or Photoshop to make your images, uh, your web pages. Also, it's not listed on here, but I recommend you check out uh, photo P, like P-H-O-T-O-P-E-A.com. I'll go and I'll show you up here. Um, the website, photo, I'm not affiliated with it or anything, but honestly, it's like Photoshop and it's free and it's in the browser, so, I would check it out if I were you. Here, let me let me go ahead and load it for you guys right quick. Photop.com. Like, check this out. If you don't use Photoshop and you don't know how to use GIMP or Microsoft Paint, or you know, you don't want to download it for Photoshop, look at this. This text editor or this, what do they call it? A photo editor? Graphics editor? Tell me this isn't Photoshop. Please tell me this is Photoshop. It's not Photoshop, but all right. Anyways, um, so that's a graphics editor. A version control system. A version control system to manage files on servers. Uh, collaborate on a project with a team, share coding assets, and avoid editing conflicts.
Right now, Git is the most popular version control system and GitHub uh, code hosting service and the GitHub co co code hosting service based on Git is also very popular. So yeah, go make a GitHub account and go download Git. And the links are right here on the page. Uh, an FTP program. Yeah, and if you guys don't know how to use Git, uh, I have a Git bootcamp, GitHub. I got like a command line uh, bootcamp. We're, we're gonna go through the basics of Git and GitHub. All right, so next thing is a FTP program used on a older web hosting accounts to manage files on servers. Uh, Git is increasing, increasingly replacing FTP for this purpose. There are loads of SFTP programs available, including Cyberduck, Fetch, and FileZilla. I personally use FileZilla. Uh, and the next tool is an automation system like grunts or gulp to automatically perform repetitive tasks such as minifying code and running tests and uh yeah i'm gonna go back to ftp program right quick an ftp program is uh Basically, so that the code that's on your an FTP program is basically so that the code that's on your um, what is it the, your desktop or you know that you have stored locally, you can host it. It helps it it hosts it to your to everywhere the internet. <laughs> so all right, um, the next tool is an automation system or gulp to automatically perform repetitive tasks such as minifying code or and running tests. So when you see people in files or in other people's files, you'll see in their code that they'll have like minified CSS and minified JavaScript and such. You can do that with and gulp and it makes it so that's easier for, um, it makes it easier, uh, it makes your load quicker. Um, so the next thing is templates, libraries, frameworks, et cetera, to speed up uh, writing common functionality um, um, and more tools besides that. So what tools do I actually need right now? Uh, <laughs> that looks like a list, but uh, fortunately, you can get started in web development without knowing anything about most of these. And this article will just set you up with a bare minimum a uh, text editor. So go ahead and download Atom or VS Code. And let's get started. So installing a text editor. You probably already have a basic text editor on your computer. By default, Windows comes with Notepad. And Mac OS comes with text edit. Um, Linux distros vary. It comes with Git edit by default. For web development, you can probably do better than Notepad uh, or text edit. And we recommend starting with brackets, which is a free text editor that offers live previews and uh, code snippets. Live previews, I recommend it as well. Um, installing modern web browsers. We'll install a couple of desktop web browsers to test our coding. Choose your operating system below um, and click relevant links to download installers for your favorite browsers. Um, it's, uh, Firefox, Chrome, Opera, or Opera uh, Windows, Firefox, Chrome, Opera, Internet Explorer, Edge. Um, Windows 10 comes with Edge by default. If you have Windows 7 or above, you can install Internet Explorer 11. Otherwise, you should install an alternative browser. Uh, Firefox, Chrome, Opera, Safari, or going on you should install at least two of these browsers and have them ready for testing um, installing a local web browser, web server some examples will need to be run on a web server to work successfully um, you can find out how to do this and how do you set up a local web server 
but I've never actually clicked on this. So why don't I go ahead and click on that? Hey, John, I invited my friend Marco. He's joining hey, us what's on up, the Marco? call. Good to see you, man. Marco is really cool. He, uh, he and I, we're uh, connected with the Career Karma guys. Oh, sweet, bro. Hi. Hi, everyone. And I don't know if my audio is coming through. I've, I've uh, never used Zoom on my phone, so. Yeah, you're in, Marco. We can Thank see you, for, bro. Thank you for inviting me, Elliot. Appreciate it. Yeah, Marco has been grinding, man. So uh, we started losing some numbers of people that uh, they're just, for whatever reason, just falling off. So I wanted to invite Marco because he's been hustling out there and he's trying to get into a boot camp and just yeah. doing all the prep work for all that. So exactly. um, you're definitely welcome here, bro. Thank you very much. It's good to feel welcome and uh, great to learn. I'm happy to be here. It's good to see you, dude. Thanks for coming out, bro. It's nice yeah, to see you. another dev, bro. You know, someone getting there. Yeah. So you guys, you're uh, covering CSS right now, right? Uh, at the moment, yeah, we're covering CSS. But at the moment, I'm just going through some documentation. We're just hanging out. Cool. Going through some docs. Awesome. I actually just got VS Code uh, this week. I was watching a JavaScript tutorial on YouTube. So I just heard you mention it. So I just figured that I would let you, you know, that's one of the uh, text editors that I'm using besides um, Sublime. Yeah, go ahead, open up your VS Code and press Control Shift and then uh, the tilde. And you'll what see. What was the last thing that you said after Control Shift? You had just. Uh, um, the remember. tilde. Oh. Uh, it's the key right underneath uh, Escape. If you have a. Uh, okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you said press terminal pop up. Yeah. Well, actually, I have a Mac, so it's a command. Or is it still Control Shift? Uh, CTRO. Yeah. Control. Um, mm -hmm. uh, shift tilde. Do you know? Oh, how to, okay, got it. Do you know how to use Git? Yeah. Um, no, <laughs> sorry. Here, I'll send you a link right quick. Or actually, go to um, go to my. Do you have GitHub? Uh, yeah. All right, dude. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna send you this thing where you can practice right quick. But do me a solid. Give me a give me a heart. Give me a heart on my on my repo, please. So go to yeah. Go to w3develops.org. Okay, I am um, open. Yeah. Dot or hold on. That's weird. You s oh wait, hold on. W three develops. Or. Okay, so I'm on the main page for w three develops. Dot org. You see where it says community. Yeah. All right, click on GitHub. Got it. All right, and first, give me a star. Hold on. Uh, uh, Before you okay. give me a star, let me show you where it's at. Before, in case you log off or something, go to the wiki. I want you. To, I think it's in the wiki. Yeah, go to the wiki. I. Yeah, on the repository, you should see like uh, here. I'll show you on my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah. 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 So we go here. I'm still updating this, but it's like uh, that. You know, it's just a little thing that helped me learn, and I feel like if that helped me learn, like, and it's just a little, little tool that you can maybe have in your toolbox too. You know, any that, tool helps because I I feel like I'm not moving fast enough. You see where I'm at? I'm okay. on the wiki right here. Oh, I'm I'm blind. Okay, yeah. Okay, now. And then now like, I'm clicking right here on Git commands, and it's not just okay. Git commands; it's command lines and Git commands. But uh, read through this and uh, see where it says number one and two. You can read that right quick. And but what I would do is I would just start at number one, and I would mm -hmm. download Git, and I would start at number one, and I would just uh, I would just go all the way down. And it, you know you can literally do it in like, like five minutes, you know, five to ten okay. minutes, you know. So and you'll get the yeah. hang of like what you're doing. 
And if you read number one two up here, it'll kind of give you an even better explanation. But I would start at number one, and, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way down to, and I'm still updating it. But uh, yeah, man. Okay, and you said give you a give you a star, right? I want to make sure that I do that. Oh yeah, if you would please, bro. I need yeah, yeah, I, I'm it happy really to sign in. I'm not. Yeah, man. Of course. I, could do that. I don't ask for money. I just need a star. <laughs> oh, dude. Believe me, you're, you're, man, if I could give you money, I uh, would. You know, no, no, no. I don't want money. I want a star. <laughs> no, it no. helps me remain open source. Everything's free. Everything yeah. I've received is free. So I try to give back, bro. That's my goal yeah. right there. You know, I feel like I'm the more a- I can help people, the more that, like, it'll come back to me and I'll help grow myself. I'll help learn more, you know. Yeah, of course. The people, the more I'll learn it myself. You know, a person, I don't know why. That's just how I feel. No, I, I can't wait to be in the position that I can help others like uh, you are, man. But until then, I just oh, got to bro, you're already there. Head. You could show them this right here, bro, and be like, yo, you can learn your command line. Like, dude, do you have Git open yet? Yeah. Are you going through these numbers yet? Are you reading? Have you read number one? I, I just had to sign in to give you a star, but now I'm reading it. Yeah, I you can close out of GitHub now. You can close out of my website. You can close out of, you know, whatever else I just showed you. Just do the no, no, no. But keep keep the yeah, keep the GitHub open and read that. I mean, read that. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. Steps. Yeah. Uh, type in the commands. You said type in the commands into where? Into, into my VM. terminal. Okay. Okay. Into, I'm I mean, into your terminal. Little... Excuse me. Your your bash terminal. I'm uh, I have, I have to open the what? Sorry. I'm assuming you have Bash install installed. Get Bash. No, no, I have a I have a Mac, but okay. Yeah, yeah. I I've I've never used. I've I would still Twitter. download. I would I would go to Git SEM. Like you can see my. Can you see my uh, screen? Screen. I yeah. I can see your screen. Yeah. Is, is my camera even on, by the way? I don't even know. Yeah, I can see you, dude. Yeah. Is is my front camera on or is my back camera on? I don't know. I see I see your face. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, dude. So right, get SEM. Get SEM.com. Get okay, dash. Got is there a dash? There's a, there's a dash between get and SEM. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, and I'm I just want to tell you, like, I have download. I just want to tell you, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm just listening to you. No, it's cool, bro. No, it's cool, dude. Hey, hey, honestly, this is probably the perfect place for you to get started at, my dude. To yeah. Be with you. Like, you caught me at the right time. I don't know how you caught me at this time, but you caught me at the it's, right time because we're because so far of, ahead. But this is like the perfect, like the perfect this is getting started. Elliot. Beginners that we're at. Elliot. Right. Thanks, Elliot. So, yeah. And thank you, uh, and dude. Yeah. So, I'm... Um, I'm on the main, yeah, I'm on the same page you are right now. Go down. Do you see where it says latest source? Does it say download for Windows or download? It should say download for Mac for you. Uh, hold on a second. Sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got it. Download for Mac, right? Yeah. All right. So what you're going to do is click that, install that, and let me know when you get it open. And once you get it open, go back to the git, uh, to the git commands. Um, and it's not just git commands, it's git and bash. It's like command line commands and git commands and there's a difference. And in the description, it, I, I should I should change the name of it. I just don't know what to change the name of it. So. I have to download it manually because uh, the pop-up window didn't open. Hold on. Uh, oh, here we go. Okay. Name it command line bootcamp. Are, are command line and terminal the same thing? All right, so the command line is what they call it for Windows, and the terminal is what they call it for Linux and Mac. Got it. Okay. Try that today. I'm installing it right now, just just to let you know where I'm at. Um, okay. Okay. Especially for the – and, you, like, you know where, where it says, like, uh, on the – Line, it'll say, I'll show you so where it says on mine. It says office desktop at desktop. Um, you're in VS Code right now. That's what that's what you're talking about. Um, I'm in I'm in my VS Code uh, yeah. editor, but my text editor 
Uh, remember I was showing you, if you press control shift tilde, it opens yeah. terminal right here. Yeah, that was the last thing that I did before I went back to my browser and I actually had that open. I have it open now. Oh, so yeah, you probably already, I think you might already have Git installed then. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I, I don't even know. I've, I've just been a little bit overwhelmed with all the information coming at me this, this week. But. That's cool, dude. Check out, go to your VS Code, uh, VS okay. Studio. Yeah. yeah go I here. think Macs come with Git already installed. Wow. Didn't I know think that. so. I don't know. Like, I think a whole bunch of stuff is already, is already on a Mac. Like, Python 2 is on a Mac. You don't have to install that. Hmm. There's a few other things that are just... Out of the box, it's already in your bag. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that. So I have um, terminal open on my VS. All right, uh, so what does it say game. right there? Does it say like bash for number one? Um, no, it, all it says is my Mac, MacBook Pro, and then JS Basics. No, uh, no. See, do you see? Um, look at my uh, screen. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. It says bash? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. All right, sweet. So you already have bash installed. Nice. So now I know we're at the same level. Yeah. What we're going to do is you're going to go and type in the commands right here. And uh, basically, this would be the same thing as if you opened it up with, uh, if you can see my screen, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. You had, would have, would have went, around, went ahead and downloaded Git Bash and uh, used this. It's basically the same thing. Huh. I don't. Um, I want to make right sure that. Called, and this is called. No, no, sorry. What were you saying? See this? See, you see this Git Bash that I have opened right uh, right here this time? Yeah. All right. So this and this right here in VS Code are the same thing. Okay. Huh. So what I'm just trying to see the big picture here. What can we do with um, command or what can I do with terminal? Well, oh, what you can do is there's a loaded question right there, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. You can, what you can do is you can basically make files and like move files on, on your computer and stuff. Like, basically, this is how people controlled their computer before there was a GUI interface. Yeah, and it's super simple, bro. It's, su it's not complicated, it's so super simple. Any, anything that you do with your mouse and your window, your window desktop, any of that, you can yeah. do that from the command line. <coughs> so it's like the back end of the computer? It's basically sense? what computers were before we had um, a fancy display Got it. Uh, graph, graphical unif, un, uh, user interface. Like before we had the interface that we have now, this is how people control their computers. Wow. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. I was born more, more recently. Yeah, I'm going to close out of this, yeah. uh, the, the Git uh, bash okay. terminal. And for now on, I'm just going to use the terminal in the VS Code. So you can do the same. Yeah, I just want to make it uh, clear. When I click bash, I mean, nothing really happened. Like, yeah, I, nothing um, should happen. Press PWD okay. and see what happens. You said press P what? PWD. Okay. Pre yeah, go to, that, go to that list and look at the first command on that list. Okay, so I got a little bit distracted uh, installing the Git OS X. Yeah, it's, um, leave that alone for now. Okay. So yeah, I now have the GitHub commands open on your on your page, right? Yep. So, um, and um, uh, what's up, guys? Hi. Uh, what's up, dude? How are you? Good evening. Oh, this is Adam. What's up, yeah. dude? Hey, what's Hi, up, Adam. Marco? Hey, what's up, Elliot? How's it going, man? This is another career karma guy. He's also hey. been killing it out there. And nice to see you. Uh, yeah, nice to see you too, man. I'm just trying to see what you guys are up to. Um, I was just hanging out. I'm going like uh, Marco came kind of right at the right moment, man. You know, it was like uh, we started at uh, the basics, man. Like I'm on, uh, I'm reading some documentation, but I kind of got sidetracked a sec because I'm showing him how to use the command line, and he's uh, he's yeah, catching yeah. up pretty quick, man. 
you know, you know, all he has to do is get through this list right here and it'll be done. And you can do it in 10 minutes. If you just start typing out those commands, just read it line by line, right? Quick what to do. And Got it. I'm telling you. So, yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. How are you able to do the screen sharing thing? Um, I'm using zoom. Actually, I bought zoom two days ago and what we're able to do, you can do it for free for 40 minutes, but it allows us to, um, stay on uh, live without it cutting out which is pretty nice how much is it uh because i know uh, it's, it's only 40 it's minutes only like 15 bucks bro no it's like for this you get it like as long as you want oh if you pay 15 bucks is that like 15 bucks a year or like no, 15 no, no, it's bucks like 15 bucks a month but that's oh okay so all right i'm just gonna see i'm gonna watch what you guys are doing for now you know I, yeah. do, you, do you know command line Nah, does that have anything to do with the um? Cause I'm on uh, let me pull it up because I'm on, I'm on lesson three, exercise one. That's the uh for the JavaScript. And, for Linda, right? Yeah, and I just wanted to like kind of go back and forth with somebody to see me. just to make sure that I'm on the right track. You know, totally work, I think you me. and him should do that. Like that would be pretty nice. So yeah, actually what we were working on, we were working on installing basic software on you guys. Do you guys know what Mozilla Developer Network is? Yeah. Yeah, I was using that earlier to refer to stuff. Yeah. Um, so I was just about to go ahead and start reading off all this stuff on here. But I guess since we're basically on the first page of it, you like I said, bro, you walked in at the perfect time, Marco. And I guess you too, um, Adam. So all I, right. Uh, I just want to say well just one wanna, thing. Sorry. Uh, we we can all on. get on the command line right now and um, start typing yeah. stuff out. So, yeah, dude. What, uh, I just printed out. I just printed out the uh, things into my VS Code, like you asked. Yeah, dude. So, Marco, Adam, uh, if you have, do you have Git installed? Uh, on, the, on my computer? Yes. No, I just have, um, so I just use the and, web. Yeah, go, go ahead and go to uh, git-sem.com. Git uh, all right, git dash sem. Yeah, and uh, Sharm, you can do the same. You can go to uh, git dash sem if you don't. I don't know if you know git or not, but git dash sem dot com. Um, and this is basically like the very first class of like getting started with the web. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, dude. So this is like this is like day zero. I thought you were talking about GitHub. They're, those are two different things, right? They are two different things. Git is uh -huh. what you use on your computer to, um, and it's the software that, uh, you, like the, that you know, you use the commands and stuff to, uh, like say you have a .index.html file that has a pair of it that's like a three sentence paragraph that's a poem and you save it and what you would do is you would um well first of all you would initialize it and you would do git init and i'll show you the alt version confluence um yeah, i'm gonna put this in there so so when you um, Marco, I would do this yeah. now as well. Uh, I would, I'm gonna send you guys a link in the chat. Actually, I'm gonna just put it on the above homework on here. Awesome. And it's gonna be like, check this out first. Like these are the git these are the git command lines is this what you're showing us yeah okay yeah you you would use these in your command line and these are not git the commands that are right here these aren't git this is like setting up your bash. Uh, this is this is just bash right here there's no git from 1 to 20 but once you get to everything below that um that's all git and then everything in the first link like if you refresh this like this is all my personal kind of reference right here that i'm just throwing at you 
you check out that link, like refresh the page and go to check uh, this out first, it says Confluence Altasian, that these are the basics of Git. What I'm showing you in this, in the other activity, in the other activity is command line, your computer. But Git is the software that allows you to save your changes and you use commands to do that. But what I'm showing you in that tutorial right there, one through 20, that's me showing you how to navigate through your computer and make a folder or make a index.html file or move it to a different place, like move it to a different directory. Files are directories. Use those words interchangeably because uh, they're anonymous. They mean the same thing. So for now on, I'm going to refer to a file as a directory. So, um, yeah, dude. So, but can I chime in, John? Uh, yeah. Like big picture, Git, it really allows you to tap into your GitHub in a way that is really awesome. And uh, from our understanding, this is what software development teams do uh, to build out what's called branches. And then somebody can work on a piece of the project, but then they commit it to GitHub and then all the changes get merged. And as long as there's no conflict in what the people are writing, then the project comes together into one project. Uh, so this is like, it's really, really cool when you start to see it happening on like from from your machine, a folder on your machine can connect to GitHub and everything that you're pushing from that folder on your desktop to GitHub is being saved and those changes are, they end up being seamless. So yeah, I was just gonna, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I was just wondering like, what's the, and you knew we just explained it, but what's the yeah. difference between Git and GitHub even though they're two different things, like you were saying. So Ellie, GitHub, right? is like, GitHub is where is like the code hosting platform and it's based on, yeah. so you like, it's basically like Git is, this is right, this is Git right here. You see these commands? These are Git commands. All, yeah. All the commands yeah, yeah. one through 20, those are not, these are not Git commands. All these right here, I wanna put a big sign. I need to edit this and put a sign that says these are not Git commands. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Like these are command line commands, not Git commands. Mm. Yeah, yeah I was it. just installing it now, uh, Git. So I was uh, listening earlier. But what, once I discovered this, um, it was really helpful for me because I could connect to my, to my GitHub repo using the command line. And it's almost like it becomes a video game of like, okay, I'm going to commit every day so that I can make my heat map, uh, you know, all green. And um, I don't know, it's just addicting in that sense. Like I want to be able to work on something on my, on my desktop and then I can just quickly uh, add, commit, and push that. Those are the commands. You'll you'll learn those. Those are those are good those, commands. Git add. Yeah. That's a git command. And git mm -hmm. a command is different than a regular Unix command. You have to understand mm -hmm. that the Unix commands for your <clears throat> the Unix commands for your terminal. For example, if you're using git bash. Uh, it, it's basically like Unix based. That means that just like Linux and Mac, they're Unix based, but Windows isn't. So that's why we have to use Git Bash, but still there's similar commands that controls your computer and it's based on Unix. Wait, one. And like, for example, like C, for example, PWD. And what it does is it prints my working directory. Okay. And what's the next, uh, 
Let's go through that right quick. I'll go through. LS, you can say LS and then it'll tell you all your, um, it'll list out all your files. Yeah, and, and, the, and the command LS and DIR are synonymous. They're the same command. So you can type in LS or DIR and what it'll do is it'll list all your directories, all your files that are on a file on your computer. So your desktop is a directory on your, your uh, computer. Um, on your computer. So like I said, these are command line commands, not git commands. So number one, print your current working directory it tells you what directory i folder you are on and it says pwd so um right here click on and as you see you click on pwd uh i, I accidentally did it in capital letters but you have to be very careful with how you type in your commands and how you for example it says c users office like i you don't have to capitalize the u but i always i usually do like just to be extra careful like you should be um so yeah so i'll do it again pwd i don't know why i can't click on it So yeah, um, also, I don't know what text editor you guys have downloaded. I'm using um, ES code and you can as well. You can press control shift in the tilde um, or you can use the git bash terminal, um, but I'm gonna be using this. Oh, uh, I'm going to press PWD, and as you see, it lists my current working directory, or it prints my working directory, and it shows me that, for example, I'm, my, I'm on my C drive, and I'm in the user's directory, and I'm in the office directory. So what I can do is, now I can press DIR, or you can press less, and what that does, what both of those commands do, is it lists all of the directories that is in your current working directory, which is C user's office. Um, and so what I want to do is uh, now, number three, change your, change, director. change your home directory, CD, and then the tilde. And we do this because sometimes people may be a different they'll be in like the forward slash directory instead of the tilde directory. And for some reason, when, you, when you're in that directory, for some reason, it'll just be out of whack. So sometimes, like, you ever notice that after your prompt, which it, my prompt is office, desktop, blah, 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 Ming 64, tilde, sometimes it might have a forward slash. So if it has the forward slash, do the CD, and then the, uh, the tilde and, and change, change into the tilde directory just in case ever you uh, just saying and then it says then print your working directory so we're going to press pwd the same nothing changed but so and after that it says do a dir again which is uh list all the directories so now what I want to do is I want to CD into my desktop. So CD space <laughs> CD desktop. capital D. Yep, capital D. And even you can do capital D E tab and it'll complete the name for you. So next you can LS and then you can see what's in your desktop. Oh, so you know a perfect way to uh, test that out. So the next command anyway is change your current work, uh, working directory to its parent directory. So that would take this one directory from where we were just at. So press C. And that's CD dot dot? Space dot dot. Yeah. And, and that uh, takes you back to the 
the previous. Yeah. So basically like you're doing, um, like you would drill down into folders in windows Explorer through the GUI interface. You're basically doing that through the command line right now. Adam, did you say something? Oh no, my, I was saying good night to my aunt. Oh, okay. I got you, man. Um, so where were we? So we just did uh, show them like a git clone. A git clone? Like a git clone onto your desktop. I think somewhere. we should keep going through these. I think we should just go through the twenty. You see we're knocking them out right but it's super you know, it's super sweet. You know? I think yeah. you're somewhere. Are you, okay. are you guys uh walking through these with us? Because this kind of stuff's like really, really like it's really powerful once you go through all this. Uh, yeah, I had one I had one question actually. What's up, dude? Uh, yeah, while you guys were speaking, I accidentally unprinted to the terminal the list of commands. I don't know if that matters or not. I'm not sure. That's not bad at all. No, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, I think you can, like, say help or Good. get help, I think, and, it, and it'll, it'll tell you all. Yeah, help gives you your command line command. commands and get yeah, gives you your commands. Uh, if you get uh, lost, you can always you can always, or, you can always it doesn't use that. To help get found if you're now it's a little, back now it's back. a little fuzzy i thought i messed up okay no nah, dude that's like it's internal help system like if you're lost and you can't remember how to do something you can always use that i'm gonna write this thank you yeah that's why if you look above you'll see number one and number two that's actually like all the way like on the list like number one that's actually what number one and number two say <laughs> I, didn't even, I I had scrolled down too far. Sorry. I know. No. 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 I told you to. I told you to. But like, I just did that because I didn't like, want people to get mistaken or anything. But yo, I should have started there. Actually, I don't know why I skipped past that. I'm I'm thinking people are like too blah, but I'm like, uh. No. Oh, dude. Like, I, all right, down. cool. That's why I put it, I put it there for me. So I guess I put it there for you too. I I didn't think people were like me. <laughs> I was like, it's I'm good. like. Good this. Thank no, you. no, it's like, yo, other people need the help too, bro. So cool. That's why it's there, dude. <laughs> and it's for me to remind, like, this was my personal thing. I wrote this out for me. Like, <laughs> oh, this is your own yeah. personal project. Okay. No, it's not a project. My own personal little. Uh, to it's like his cheat sheet. <laughs> yeah, my cheat sheet. Yeah. And like, I got the hang of it by like walking through it and adding more steps as I went, and like everything that I really needed is on here. Like, so, like, you can literally just walk through it by pressing the commands and not doing anything else. You don't have the understanding of it, but if you go through one, two, three, and just type out all those commands, you'll understand it. I'm going to do that right now, actually. Like, it's nothing to think about. The only, like, the, the first only day thing I would recommend here. doing right now, if I were you, is mm -hmm. if this is your first time using Git, I would... Completely. You go to and do this Altasian guide that I actually have linked at the top of my cheat sheet. Um, cheat, that's what I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it a cheat sheet. Like the first day I got on the call with W3 Develops, uh, I think another guy named Guy Bryant, he just walked me through this and I just shared my screen and I did it with everybody in the group. And from that day on, I felt so comfortable just to like, go through live coding with people on my screen and just sharing my screen just really it just it just let me know that hey like i'm i'm in a room full of other newbies and i'm just trying to figure this out and yeah. it's, it's okay to mess up you know yeah and don't like, get scared like perfection. you're not gonna fry your computer yeah like i'm just gonna give it a stab like don't just don't copy I, anything from off the internet that like you don't understand like totally like not yeah but like, you know, don't be giving people passwords and stuff is what I'm saying. No, <laughs> I just want to add while, while you guys were uh, talking, I just opened up on a separate tab, the link that you asked me to at the top of the Git commands page. Yeah, and that really helps me see the bigger picture of this. I just wanted to just add that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That Thank you. Yeah. Got it. Now I see how cool this is. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's it's really cool, especially when you can you can clone something from your GitHub, and then through your command line, it's just there on your computer. 
it's like Martians from GitHub just came to your computer and dropped the file in there. And you did all that through your command line or your terminal. And that's what, that's what like end goal this is. And then the coolest part is it's like Martians come to your computer and then they take it to the GitHub server and now it's up there and you have a link to share with everybody in the world, your project that you're doing. And that's all I've been doing, like learn free code camp, apply it into a project, uh, get clone, do the project, put it, put it in the folder and then zip it up. Like it just zips up to your, to your repo, like our W3 develops repo. And then I have a link that I can then tweet out to the world that I'm, I'm documenting my process of learning. All right. So Marco, if you want yeah. to clone right quick, first of all, have you configured your get yeah uh, let's 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 start with the basics uh, I don't think I have share your screen let's sh let's share your screen right quick sure let me uh, well i'm on i'm on my iphone that's a thing do you have zoom on your computer do you have room like uh, yeah i i probably have to sign out of this and then sign back in on my computer right no you, you can, can be on you can be on both at the same time okay let me uh hold on a second sorry give me a just minute. get the meeting uh open up zoom and get the meeting id Give me a second, guys. And then you can you can be on both at the same time. I just have to get the um. How do I get the code from point A to point B though? The uh, and the uh, not the code the uh, link for the for this Zoom meeting. How do I get it? Um, that's a thing. Because uh, I know that you sent it in my Twitter. Should I just copy it? Yeah, just go to your DMs in your Twitter, yeah. and then click on that from right. from your computer. Hold on a second. Yeah, so I'll just, I'll just go down these commands very quick. Yeah. I'm, I'm, give me a minute. Sorry. Huh, that's weird. I am, um, oh, okay, now I see it. Wait, wait, no, I don't. <laughs> so, yeah. And so actual I'll start link. from my first yeah, command. Yeah, yeah, please. I don't want to hold you uh, guys up. Let me just uh, figure this out. Oh, yeah. What are, you, what, what are you doing? No, I'm just trying to get the uh, link that Elliot sent me. Okay. I'm trying to find a unique uh, link for this meeting, and I'm trying to put it into, the desk, into my desktop Zoom app. But I don't know how to do that, unfortunately. I don't see – all it does is just send me – you can just go to your Zoom app and then click join. And then all you need is the number for the meeting. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to find. But you're saying go to my Zoom app? And... Yeah, go to your app on, and it's 747. I'll just type it in the chat. I don't even know how to see the chat. <laughs> on, uh, this, is, this is the first time I've ever uh, joined on on iPhone and I think I'm regretting it because I don't know how to do anything. It's, it's, um, it's, it's, you know. On the chat, I think you had to click participants. Yeah, and that's they, what I tried doing. I'm doing 20 things at once. And seven, four, seven, uh, okay. two, zero, seven, four, five, six. Whoa. Okay, let me try, see if that works. Seven, four, seven, two, zero, seven, four, five, six. I think it's working. Yeah. All right. Yeah, if you want to turn the phone one off, you can leave that meeting now. Uh, yeah. Hold on. Now that you're connected with the other one. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I didn't know if you guys know, but if you press CMD and you're on a, uh, I know if you're on a Windows, if you press CMD uh, and then you press help, like it's different if you press help when you're, like, for example, just press CMD and then 
it'll take you to like a you'll be in like a different kind of environment um and then if you press help you'll notice that the help options there are different and then i press exit right away because i don't enter any other commands in this um then i can just look through those commands right there and pretty much everything that is on my list and more is on here like the definitions of all those commands right there for example, I think CD is on here. Plays the name of or changes the current directory. But uh, yeah, dude, have you uh, have you done like? Uh, are you on your computer yet? Yeah, yeah, I'm on my computer. You want me to share my All screen? Right. Yeah, I'm gonna stop sharing now, and you can share your screen. Is that uh is that baby John? I, I've been wondering that all night. That's me, dude. That's little me. That's baby John. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Share your screen with how you really look. <laughs> My little alien head. Since we got since we got new people on here. <laughs> I feel like I, I got the little predator head. <laughs> <laughs> Am I uh, sharing now? Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, we can see you, Marka. All right, great. So, um, let me. So this is where we were at, right? Going through the commands. Um, I think we were gonna do a get clone. Yeah, refresh then, that page. Okay. And then he was gonna get a folder from. Re refresh GitHub, that. Yeah. Put it on his desktop. Yeah. Oh wow! Damn. Okay. Um, create a page on there. How can you create a page? What? You can. I have no idea how to do that. I, I I just took your advice. I refreshed the page, and this is what popped up. That is wild. All right, go to wiki. Okay. Uh, I got to change that. Everybody's just got... Wait, it's weird, though. What did I do wrong? What happened? I, I don't know. Click on wiki again. Uh, I don't even see that. Cause I, I feel like you have administrator. Yeah, wiki, the thing that's bolded or highlighted. It's oh. wiki. W-I-K-I. W-I-K-I. What am I missing? Here? The, the, the orange thing. Oh, fuck. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's okay, man. No blind, dude. Sees this thing until like they see it. All right. So go to command line cheat sheet. It's the blue yeah. under yeah. The home. Yeah. There we are. Scroll down. Actually, scroll. Uh, scroll up. Open this in a new in a new browser. Open this git thing in a new browser. Okay. Open this git tab and then like so pull, it out. pull 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 your tab out of the browser. Yeah. Uh, pull your tab. Just move. Pull. Yeah. Just click it. Hold on. No. 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 Click on click on your tab and just move it. Yeah. No. I I I am. But the Zoom app keeps blocking that tab. That's what I was doing. Ah. Oh, yeah. I can't see that. I, yeah, yeah that's, sorry. Yeah, that's, no, that's cool. That's the one I understand because that it's always in the way somewhere, right? When you need it, it'd be moving. Totally. So now it's in a new it's tab. It, it that. Funny. Huh? It's in a brand new separate tab. Like you, like you asked me to drag the tab out, right? Yeah. So, it's, yeah. It's I don't know why there. I still see all your other tabs. I don't know. All right. Anyways. So what I want you to do is I want you to right click on Mozilla Developer Network and I want you to err uh, No, that. I think this what? is a different so I, I don't know if I'm seeing the same thing as you. Are are are, are the is the page that you're on does it say get commands? No. It says command line cheat sheet. Am I on my I don't know what screen I'm gonna what? I feel like I just messed up the whole uh, flow of things. No, I, the screen I see it says W three develops get commands. No, maybe maybe you're still viewing. Hold on, I'm I'm just telling you what I'm doing. So I'm going back to the old browser that that I was in before you asked me to drag out the current tab. So you see git commands? Is that what you see? So is yeah, I see git commands. This isn't your. 
No, you're you're seeing the the old browser before I I. Oh, that's weird. Oh, yeah, it's really I weird. I, I think you need to share more than just. Uh, I think you're just sharing your browser. Yeah, yeah, like no, you're absolutely right. I think you need to switch to uh, the desktop so that whatever you're looking at, everybody's looking at. Yeah, you're right. Sorry about that. All right, you guys uh, fix that right quick, and I will be right back. Good call. But if you click in the, the little green share, then I think you can switch your option. Give me a minute here while I organize myself. Yo guys, I think I'm gonna go to bed. I'm getting tired, so. <laughs> but uh, Yeah, this is just like our hour where we just like chat and hang out. But earlier in the day, we were going through free code camp and um, um i'm just trying to think what else we were doing yesterday we a few of us attempted a project but mm. we had some people kind of fall off the wagon <laughs> oh but, okay yeah no i feel you no I, I i i like this though we got i like this kind of like meeting up you know um but yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm about to hop off though but i'm glad that i got to like meet you guys online for a little bit you know yeah we'll be here tomorrow um each day, um, I think it's 6 p.m. Eastern. What what time zone are you in? Well, um, well I live in Pennsylvania, so I'm on the um, like New York uh, time okay. zone. Yeah, so 6 o'clock until I think 11 p.m. is when oh, we, okay. we meet up. And so like the last hour, 10 to 11, we just like just talk and chat and oh, okay. Um, whatever we want to talk about. But the first like couple of hours, we usually try to get into cool. free code camp and then we try to add a, a project on top of whatever we've done in free code camp to uh, kind of reinforce what we've been, we've been going over in code camp. Yeah, um, that's really cool though. I'll definitely try and come in another night then. Yeah, like if you go to the Discord channel, there's a, there's a section called Dragon Learning Group. No, nah, you know and, what I just realized? People that aren't dragons, they can't see inside of it. Oh, they can't? Nah. Do you think I should let people be able to see inside of it? Uh, that aren't dragons. Yeah, I man, I don't, I don't care. I don't care if non-dragons okay. can see. Because yeah, what I, I was going to do is when we were done, I was going to take the, the, like the resources for Git and stuff like that and let, let them be available in their own channels. But if you guys don't mind it being open, I'll let it be open. I don't mind. I mean, because I'm, I'm, I don't know how to let people see that, and I'm telling people to come to the Discord channel. Oh, really? I mean, they're probably like, I don't know, what's going like on. Like one of our main, one of our main mentors. His name is uh, Timor. He's uh, he actually said something in the community chat on on Discord, but uh, I really respect him a lot. He's uh, like of all the people for a career camera and he, Ruben and his brother, they're yeah. like the people organizing everything and they're like, like really awesome. Super, yeah, super, super, super they're, people. They're very nice guys. Like they really care about the kind of work they do. You know, I do like them as well. They're good guys. Yeah, uh, like Adam and Marco, I wouldn't know them if it weren't for uh, Timor and, and Ruben and all that they're doing so um, yeah I think it's just like getting people who like want to learn this stuff like just putting the same kind of people or that they want to do the same thing in the same spot it's um, it's powerful stuff you know going through this alone I mean you really have this such a, it's such a hard learning curve and you feel like you're the only one going through it and it's like you just kind of some people just just quit right some people just fall off. Like Elliot said, people come and then they see how hard it is and then they just kind of leave. Like, and I could, I kind of get where they're coming from, but you know, I want to change my life in 2019. So. Yeah, me too, Marco. Yeah, me too, man. <laughs> I can't quit, man. Are you guys ready to get back to it? Yeah, yeah. Um, let me let me know if uh, you're uh, seeing every, everything. If you need uh, to head out, Adam. Yeah, that's cool. yeah, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get going. But good night, guys. It was good talking. Good night. Good night. I appreciate night. all your comments. Yeah, definitely. All right, guys. Have a good night, dude. All right, I see you, Adam. Make sure I have my. Are you ready?
Yeah, I should be ready. Can, can you see I think I can there? see your whole screen now, dude. So, yeah, yeah sorry about that. Um, no, sorry for what? No. Nah. <laughs> yeah, don't, this is the rule, like, don't apologize. Okay, got it. All right? Got it. There's no shame zone here, man. Like, if you don't know it, that's, that's cool. So, right. yeah, like, so that's, what, that's what we're here for. We're here to, like, walk through it and, you know, help you. By the end of this, I hope that you're better at this than me, dude. Dude, it's only upwards from here because I know nothing. Okay. So what we're going to do now is I want you to, for some reason, I can still see all your open tabs and stuff. Like, can you, I like, drag that tab, like, out of the browser, please? Drag the command line. Yeah, just, the yeah, just drag it on out of there. Yeah, just get a new window. Yeah, there we go. And move it into a new Get, get a down. fresh window. Drag it downwards or something. There we yeah, go. There you, there you go. That's what I'm talking window. about. Make that full. Make that into a full page. Got it. Full screen. Oh, there. Oh, it looks so good. All right. Uh, right click on that confluence, altasian.com, bitbucket server, basic, git command 776, the where it says check this out. Okay, got it. So right click it and open it up in a new tab. Now, what I want to do is also, I want you to open up your. You have VS Code, oh, you have VS Code, right? Yeah, yeah I've had it all Open up time. your VS Code terminal right quick. I, I can't do that with a uh, full screen. I'm trying to press escape to get out of full screen so I can get VS Code. It's not working. Okay, so can you see the VS type code? In exit. What I want you to do is I want you to type in exit in the terminal. And make the make your VS code full screen because I can't really see. For some reason, all I see is talking to Jonathan. Like if we could like move that out of the way. Where it says talking to Jonathan. Or is that just on my screen? Oh, you, I that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> like I said, more than likely you'll be smarter than me at the end of this. So press, uh, sweet, yeah, perfect. And it just got um, all the commands. What'd you do to do that? Uh, you, I, I thought I did what you asked me to do, which is press exit. I mean, oh, I yeah. <laughs> see, that's the thing. You have seven bash terminals open. So yeah, go yeah. ahead and press exit multiple times in like about oh. six times. Press exit. Yeah, press exit about six times. Uh, I don't see, do you mean, wait, what do you mean by press exit? All, all right, I so I want you to click right there, that little white box where in the terminal next to MacBook, My Max Pro, and your, and your prompt. That's called a prompt. So I want, okay. you to, and I want you to type in the word exit. Okay, yeah, that's what I did before, but I'll, I'll do it again do now. Do it again. And then press enter, right? And press enter. Mm -hmm. Now you should see it just on the six bash terminals that you have open. Now what I want you to, this is, this is the equivalent of you having multiple of those other instances of bash terminals. Like remember the bash terminal I had showed you? Yeah. We downloaded git bash and it was a little black box and had the terminal, prom the prompt and the, you know, the terminal. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all right. So this is about six instances of those that you have open. So we want to press that about five more times. So you only have one open. Should I be seeing anything or all I see? No, you should be pressing exit and it should be, you should be pressing enter. I am pressing enter and it's just. No, no, you should thing. be pressing exit though. Oh, you should be well. typing in exit. I'm okay. Pressing enter. <laughs> okay. So each time I have to press exit, press enter. And so yeah. Cause it's basically like you pressing the X button right there. That, okay. Well, not right there. Cause it would actually just close all five instances of the terminal. But what you're doing right there is when you're pressing exit, this okay, so not for everybody else that's watching. This is just for you. I don't know what it's probably because you press control shift tilde seven times. And every time you just press the X button right there instead of pressing exit to close that terminal. Well, no, yeah. the pre previously to okay, now that I understand. So what press you're exit one, type in exit one more time though. Okay, hold on. Now that I finally understand what you're asking. Okay. There we go. Now press control shift tilde to open up a fresh Git bash instance or uh, 
get back. There we go. Brand new terminal. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to go to that cheat sheet. Um, in, my, in my browser, obviously. Uh, yes, sir. Got it. And uh, can you have that you open? You now let's start reading. Okay. You know, check this out. So you have that right clicked open. And then I was doing some homework for the class before. And what did I say? Everyone, common questions. That's not important. Homework begins at that's not important. Side note what is show? What is bash? Oh, yeah. So if you want to know what shell is and what bash is, um, what did you say before bash by the way i didn't hear you did you say shell yeah and you know you can click on those links to learn that okay. and uh but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go down here to how do i see what commands are available or if, when i need help uh how do i see what commands are available uh, when i need help so for bash you type help this is what you were so, explaining before. Yeah. Go to your uh, what's it called? Your uh, your terminal. I guess it's in your text editor. So open up your vision, your text oh, yeah. editor, navigate mm -hmm. to the terminal. Yeah, mm -hmm. and kind of like scroll that, scroll like make your make the left side of your uh, VS Code smaller. Uh, left side of the entire window. Not just inside the browser, but like the entire. All right, scroll to the left a little bit more. Well, that's that? too. perfect. Okay. All right, now scroll. Go to the left a little bit more to like the very edge. Yeah, and scroll that over a little bit too. Uh, uh go the other way. Go to the right. Go. No, no, no. Go, go. No, no. No, no. Go. Yeah. Bring the other side to the right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, make it make it so I can see my code. The, I mean the, the 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 words. Yeah, you can make it smaller, smaller. All right, that, yeah, that's cool. All right, um, so it says for you can so type in help. It says you you can type in help. Just wanna just just so you you kind of know what my what I'm seeing. Yeah, that's good. I have the Zoom window blocking the uh, terminal. I'm just letting you know. So I okay. You have the Zoom window. So move the Zoom window. Maybe yeah, no, I am. Uh, just, uh, it just it's very intrusive. But okay. Oh, now I see what you're better. saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's a little. I don't think you're just doing some ghost stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so you said type help into the terminal. Is that what you? Uh... You know what you should do? You should or to the left the left side of your of that of the VS Code window. Bring it over to the, I mean the right side. Excuse me, sir. The right side. Yeah, bring it, bring it to the uh, right a little bit more. Yeah, all the way. There you go. Give yourself a little room there. All right. So now go to the terminal mm -hmm. and type help. And every, every time you say type something, you, you imply press enter, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right, got it. And go full screen for a sec. Let's see all those commands. Let me know if you can't yeah, see scroll it. Scroll up and you can just look through them. I guess you can't. Go, go, scroll to the bottom, type help again. Okay. All right, press CFD. Press, press command, right? Yeah, no, C, CMD. Press CMD. Wait, are you on the Mac? Oh, wait, you're on a... I am on a Mac, I am on a Mac. Oh, never mind. I don't know. Are you on a Windows computer? Yeah, no. Nah, yeah, I'm, I'm on a Windows. So oh, okay. uh, type git. You said type git? Yeah, G G I T. Mm -hmm. Okay, and pressing enter. Git help. You can already yeah, see so all this. Right? So these are git commands. All these commands right here, you type git in front of them. And if you ever forget like a command or something or what it does, and, like you can scroll up. Um, Oh, okay, sorry, scroll up. Yeah. These are common git commands used in various situations, right? Yeah, and that's kind of like a little 
you know, it's a little help that the developers put in there for us. Yes. I, uh, I can't wait till I understand what all this means. But Yeah, dude. Um. All right. So, all right. So, yeah, this is for when you actually start using the commands and you understand what they're Mm. Of course, if I forget any of these, I can just go back to the page to to access them, to, to, to get the commands to access this. Um, cool. All right, so let's um let's go back to the sheet sheet. Yeah. You can see it, right? Use it. You're not waiting for me, right? Am I waiting for you? Yeah, um, all right, so go down to the second number one and start reading through that. You should read through that out loud so we can hear you. I uh, just want to make sure, are you talking about for, for Git A? You said second, second number one. I didn't know what, I didn't, I didn't know what you meant by that. So you see where the, you see where it says number one? Yeah. Okay. That, all right, now go to the second one. Okay, so for it's, get a. All right, go 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 down to number. These are not get line commands. Go right there, and it's okay. number one. Yeah, print your current work directory tells you what directory, i.e., folder you are on. Parenthesis colon uh, pwd. So just type out pwd. Okay. It's so annoying how the zoom window keeps blocking stuff. Okay. Got it. <laughs> I'm typing PWD into and I don't know what it did. So that's um, okay, so it's it's looking like it's creating a folder. Is that what it's doing? PWD prints the working directory, so that just tells you what you're working in. Got it. And what you can do is you can type in git or you can type in help, P type in, type the word help and type the word PWD. Help, PWD. Do I have to space it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that tells you what it does. Got it. So if you ever don't know, type that. <laughs> All right, so the next one, D-I-R, number two. Is that there? Number two, print what is in the directory you are currently working in, DIR. So let me do that. So you know what PWD is right now, right? Yeah, it uh, shows you the directory that you are uh, working in. Yeah, how about this? How about you make your screens so that they're, like, they're, they're even, they're like half and half. Like the your browser screen and your um, VS Code screen. Are you talking about like this? Yeah, but make the browser screen like half of the screen in the VS Code screen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I, I thought you meant at first. Okay. Hold on. So I have a, another one. I, I don't know if you can see. I don't know how much. Yeah, like that. Like that? Yeah. And then make the other side equivalent to the VS Code. But make it like half the screen. Like VS Code is only like a third of the screen. Okay. There you go. You can make it a little bit bigger. Oh, too much. Yeah, that's fine. I like that. And uh, now make that equivalent to the open space. Yeah, now move the right side of it to the left. Move the right side of it to the left. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. I see. I see what you're saying. Okay. All the way. Go right. That should that should be good. Or go back to like go move to the right a little bit. Yeah, keep right. Go a little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit right about. Keep going. Right there. That's good. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um. Now make it to the top of the screen. Uh. Make the top go to the top. Make it like not full screen, but like 
Yeah, there we go. All the way. All right. All the way. All right. Um after you, Kimo Sabi son. Sounds like fun over there. Uh What are you doing here? What was that? Number two. What does number two say? Um, yeah, so print what is in the directory you are currently working in, DIR. So which I did, I, which I did. That was the last thing that I, I did. And I thought I pressed enter, but I, yeah. So it said bash DIR command not found. Uh, what directory are you in? Um, it says documents. All right, PWD again. I want to make it clear. I was installing something. I I think before we got no no no. Don't worry, you're not installing anything. No 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 no. I didn't think no. I didn't think I was doing that. Now I'm I'm saying I thought you were trying to access something that maybe I didn't have on my. Computer. We're not accessing anything. We're not we're not we're not like I'm not we're not going in anything. I'm. Oh no no no. That's I didn't think you were doing that. No, I didn't mean that. No. no. No, no, no. Um, oh, you're in full control here. I'm trying to make you understand what you're doing. No, no, no. I was just. Okay. Then so far as help <laughs> and PWD, and then help PWD, so you know what that means. Yeah, help PWD. Yeah. So it's to the top of that and read what it says. Do you know if there's any way to like minimize the uh, zoom window? It's such a pain in the ass. Okay. Yeah, you can open up uh, your own, you can open up Git by itself, but it's cool, dude. Just go ahead. It's all right. Okay. No, no. The uh, Zoom window just keeps blocking me. Oh, the Zoom. I don't know about yeah, that. Yeah. No, no, it's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. Okay, so, so where did we leave off? The last thing you told me to do was type PWD. Yeah, Git uh, or help PWD so that you can, basically we're defining what PWD means. Yeah, so that's what I my I max did. mac pwd basics max help pwd. It says pwd pwd lp. Um, I, uh, print the current working directory with uh dash p option pw and it's just telling you all the functions and what the what pwd does. Got it. So, should we go to the next one, right? Yeah, go to the next one and and uh, that was DIR, and uh, type in help DIR. So you already help typed in. Yeah, I just type in moved. DIR. Let's find out what that means. So DIR. And it says it displays the list of current remember directories. Directories find the way, in. and the reason it looks like this is because you're not full screen. That's why it's looking all weird and. Yeah, kind of like Star Wars, actually. Yeah, that's why it looks like Star Wars. <laughs> but um, whatever. So, and it just gives you an explanation of what it is and blah blah blah. And DIR just basically prints all the directories. So now type in DIR, and we're gonna print all the directories. What print all the directories means is print all the files. What what prints all the files means is we're going to print all the files. For example, if you were in your desktop directory, because you um you don't remember because we haven't done it yet. But so so PWD one more time. Let's see what happens. Let's print our current working directory. Okay, I'm going to. That's the directory we're in. PWD and pressing enter. Okay. And what does that say? That says that so that directory you're on. Yeah. Okay. That's the file you're on. So if you were to open up your, if you were to have like, I don't know, I don't, I, Mac is a little hard for me to read sometimes with JS basics, my Mac, I, I guess that's like a file or something that you have. That's, that's like, yeah, yeah. If, you, if, you, if you went into your MacBook finder and then you started just drilling down into your folder. Yeah, no, I, I know what you're talking about. That's yeah. a folder that I created. Your I think file path. Tutorial, yeah. Yeah. All right, so now what you can do is you can press DIR and that'll list all the files that are in there. You could see all the files that are in there. 
It said command not found. I don't have any files in there. That's why it says no command not. Actually, it says dir bash command. So press ls. Press? You, you mean type ls? Type, yes, type ls. Yeah, well, I, I press and now that lists all the, the uh, directories or files that are in yeah. that directory. You have an HTML index and a JS index. All right. Now, now you know how to do that. You know how to list all the files that are in your directory. So this is yeah. yeah. All right. So that's you know that's just doing stuff from the command line. So what's next? Uh, are we on? We're on either four or five. Oh, no, we're on. Uh, uh, click on the click on it. Click on the. There you go. So we're on four, right? Yeah. So we're on number three, and we're on number four now. So now yeah, yeah. change directory. Change directory to your desktop. CD is change directory. And. Uh, so, so I have to type, okay, so type CD so, desktop. So is this case is this case sensitive by the way? Yeah, like but if I type C. Yeah, what? Yeah, it's case sensitive. So what I'm going to do though is uh, since you're you're gonna have to CD and you're gonna have to press the uh, the the double space. I mean the double period. You're gonna have to CD period period because you're not on your press. Um, actually, what I want you to do is I want you to press CD and then the tilde. So that you can navigate to your home. Okay. Space and then, uh, Sorry. Everything is a space. After so, command, you have a space. So, uh, yeah. And then space again. Enter. Enter. Okay. All right. So now you're home. Now I want you to LS. I want you to list the that are there. Um, or so, wait. What? What was the last thing that you told me? Uh, I want you to LS. I want you to list the directories that are there. Okay. So those are all the files that are on your home directory. Yeah. So I want you to CD to desktop. Huh. CD desktop, right? Space desktop, yes. Yeah, change directory to the desktop. Okay. Now you're on your desktop. You're on desktop, my Max. Yeah. All right, so go back to the page. Go mm -hmm. to the cheat sheet. So now mm -hmm. you do that. You know how to get your, to your desktop. You're on your desktop file. So all the things that are on your desktop, you can go there and, and get to them from your desktop. Or you can CD. All right, so now CD, I want you, what, so we're on CD desktop. You're on your desktop. So number five, uh, go back to your terminal and CD dot dot. I want you to change back to where you were at. I want you to go back home. CD dot. And this goes to the file that's above the file that you're in. So now you had to have put a space. Yeah, there's always a space after CD. Mm -hmm. <sighs> well, now I know what it, it looks yeah. like if I don't do something right. It'll just say command not found, right? Yeah. Yeah, and the error messages are the best way to troubleshoot. All right, so go and do the next one. Change your current. All right, so I just did that. So we're on number six now. Change your. Oh. Yeah, read that out loud so I know where you're at and I know. Yeah. Sorry, sorry about that. All right. Uh, change your current working directory to desktop again, CD desktop, then print your current working directory, PWD, then print what is in your direct, then print what is in the directory you are currently working in, DIR. Uh, that's, a, that's a lot of steps. Okay. Go back to it. Yeah, so CD desktop. Right, so hold on. Where are you at? I'm uh, I just read number seven. No, where are you? number seven? Go go up a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right, so we just did number five. I thought we did number six. Six. Okay. All right, and then you I hope you printed your working directory to see where you were at to make sure you were on your desktop, mm -hmm. and then I hope you printed yeah. Uh, the directory is within your desktop. Yeah. Um, did I read the wrong thing? Okay. All right. So yeah, you just printed your directories within your desktop, right? No. The last thing you did is cd dot dot. So what's about what's below that? So yeah. So number six. Now you have to press cd desktop. You have to do number six. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So change your current working directory to desktop again. Cd desktop. So let me do that. Hey, what are we doing? Uh, we're just doing some git commands, dude. I mean, no. Command line commands, you can follow along. 
I'm doing CD desktop right now. And it, it, it said, uh, it showed me yeah, where my desktop Open. Then print your current working directory. And, uh, doing you, yo, somebody, uh, some, somebody should send them a link in the chat to the cheat sheet. Then print what is in the directory you are currently oh, working. Oh, I'll send them that. Thank you. All right, so I'm printing the directory I'm currently in now, DIR. The Atlassian documentation? All right, so it's not DIR. I have to edit that so that all the DIRs, they're also LSs. So what you're going to do is you're going to press LS. Okay. Oh. I, I think he's in a W3 repo wiki. Wow. No, it's... um. Uh, it's the git com to get oh yeah yeah, yeah. it's develops. the w3 develops wiki yeah the repo wiki and then go to the yeah go to the wiki and then the cheat sheet um so uh yeah dude so yeah follow the next up okay so a second so number seven make a directory within your desktop directory and name it workspace yeah I so, have to name it workspace colon mkdir yeah so it's actually going to be mkd no 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 Go, go back, go back, go back. Go back to the screen. Back. No, 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 I mean like, like exit, like backspace. Go to that terminal and take that WO out of there and then go to the browser and yeah, go back to the cheat sheet. Go to your terminal and backspace. There you go. Now what I want you to do is I want you to read that again. I want you to read the command. Yeah, make make it. You want me to read number seven again? You're on no, making a directory. Yeah. So which one, which one is it? MKDIR. Where's that? Uh, yeah. There we go. Number seven. You're right. So put it yeah, number so, seven and you have to type it in exactly how you see it. I have to type in. I'm I'm only typing in MKDIR or workspace. Colon yeah. MKDIR. No, no, no. You're not typing in the bash and all the rest of it, but you're typing in MKDIR workspace. Yeah, I didn't make this really readable for everybody else because, like I said, this was really just for me, dude. Okay, so I'm typing in MKDIR. I'll, I'll edit it for everybody else later, but you know. So I, I'm, 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 yeah. But still, just type in MKDIR workspace, space yeah. workspace. Space, space. I'm gonna make those workspace. spaces after them. Now what you're doing is you're making a directory on your desktop. Yes. So okay, so I just did that. No, <clears throat> no, what does that mean though? Oh, okay. It means that I'm creating a folder onto my um, desktop, right? Yeah, you're, 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 yeah, you basically just went to your desktop and right clicked and it's create folder and you just did that. That's so cool. Um, okay. So I'm I'm on number wait and I'm still on number seven. Then print your current working direct. Yeah, and then print your current working directory PWD. Okay. So I'm I'm typing PWD, pressing enter, and then print what is in the directory you are currently working in DIR. Or LS. Oh, I'm sorry. LS. Yeah. Every time I say DIR, I have to say it to myself LS. Okay. But why is that? Is that because I'm on a Mac? Because I'm working on a different computer than you. Yeah. So with, with Windows, it's DIR or LS. But with, with Mac or with, with Linux and every, you know, it's, it's LS. So sorry about that. Okay. I have to change that. Okay. All I have right. to add so that to make it more friendly. We did number seven, right? So uh, just LS. Change the directories and make your workspace your current working directory. CD workspace. So I'm going to type in CD space workspace. So what do you okay. what you just do now? I just I just did number. I just did. No, I'm saying what did you do? Though? What did you do? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You basically. Um, I'm creating. Am I creating? No, you basically just double clicked into your workspace folder. Yeah, I was just about to say. I just entered that folder. Yeah. Yeah, you change directories. You just, you know. You just then print. So, so now I'm printing my current directory. So this is telling me where I'm currently working. Yep. That tells okay. you what's open. So, yeah. So I type PWD. 
Then now you see that you're in your workspace, right? You see yeah. it says you're in your workspace. You I'm, I'm in the right folder space. open. You're in your workspace. That's your current working directory. Remember, we were in desktop. That was the only thing that was open. Yeah. Just had a blank desktop open. Remember? Then now we have a folder open. Well, imagine like a G, like a GUI. LS. I'm going to type LS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude. yeah, I know. I just corrected myself. Yeah. Um, okay. So, number nine, change directories and make your workspace your current working directory. And the reason, time out, the reason LS that there's no, nothing popping up when you did that is because you just created that fresh folder when we did MKDIR, remember? The workspace, yeah. we created that workspace folder with MKDIR, with make directory. We just made the directory. So, we just did that. And now it's a, it's basically like a blank, a blank folder. It's a blank directory. It's an empty directory. That's why it pops up when we type LS. Okay. okay. So go back to it and finish what you were doing. Yeah. I'm doing number nine now. So change directories and make your workspace your current working directory. CD. Then print your current working directory. PWD. No, hold on. Go back. What did I do wrong? Uh, I, I noticed you just typed in CD. That was the last, well, the last thing that I did was I typed PWD. I'm doing number nine. I've, I've been reading number, number nine. Number nine. So you typed LS. Uh-huh. Well, no, no, no. Uh, the last. I, I, the thing, the, this, when you press CD, you pressed enter. And when you, yeah. Uh, you for some reason it changed it changed you back to your home directory. I don't know why. So press PW again and you'll notice, or actually you just pressed it and you notice you're in your user's Mac. Yeah. The directory yes. here. And so now what you have to do is you have to press LS and you have to navigate back to your workspace folder. Okay. So I have to press LS and I have to press. So go to desktop, CD to desktop. CD desktop. Yeah, change directories to your desktop. So you just opened up your desktop folder. Now open up, go back to, what's it called? Go back to the uh, the workspace folder that you just made. Change directories back to the workspace. Uh, I have to press CD again, right? Yeah. No, all right, so you have to press CD workspace. The workspace is a folder that we just made. If you, all right, close your windows, close your windows. I mean, don't don't close them, but minimize them. Or yeah, just minimize. Minimize, minimize. which one? Minimize, min, minimize both of them. Minimize okay. all of those. No, minimize the. Yeah, there you go. See, I can't see. I got the ghost thing in the way. I can't see everything. But yeah, minimize it still. Still minimize it. Minimize everything. I want to see your desktop. Okay. I, I, I guess it was a mess. Okay. Now, dang, you got a lot of stuff on your desktop, homie. I know, man. Yo, I feel like I could scroll over on your desktop, homes. All right, so basically, oh my gosh. Anyways, I should see a thing on your on your desktop that said, I don't know if I'm gonna see it on your desktop. You got a lot of stuff on here, bro. Workspace, we're here, right? Workspace. All right, there it there is. You, <laughs> yeah, you, you found. I don't know how you found it, but all right, now you. It was like wall empty, there or something. Empty right? folder. Now when yeah. we pressed M K D I R, we created that. Make directory. We made a directory. A directory is a yes. folder. We made the folder on the desktop. The desktop is the desktop. You know, see users, desktop, or however your computer is structured. The home is yes. see users, whatever. And then the desktop is usually the next thing that you can change directories into. So go back. You, you can close that now. Go, now you understand what we're talking about. Yes. So okay. go back to what we, or go back to all the windows we had open, right? Yeah. Matter of fact, open that up again. You Just leave it open. Oops. You don't have to click open on it. Another. Open a workspace. Okay. Yeah, open the workspace. Now, oh, now the rest of this should should really breeze by. Okay. That thing should take about five minutes, dude. So, uh, oh, yeah, and fix the VS Code so it's kind of like looking nice to this to the right a little bit, you know. Put it okay. to the right a little bit. Yeah, All right, sure. Boom. Okay. Now, next thing, please. All right, so we're I'm we're still doing number nine. Which everyone right? is is the one that you're on. I'm not sure, bro. You got to figure. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna leave we, the rest we, to you. All right, I'm gonna. Okay, so 
I'm just gonna go to just know, movie. just just PWD to see what directory you're on. I'm gonna give you that hint. Change directories into which directory you're supposed to be in. I'm, I'm still so if you're supposed to be in your direct, if you're supposed to be in your desktop, you know, yeah, so I have directories with LS and find out what directories you're in, and you need to get to your workspace. You know, your workspace is on your desktop, so do what you got to do, Holmes. I feel like this is something I have to go through. Like, all right, now you have to change directories. So you have the yeah. list. You just listed your directories. Now change and change. Unless that's what right? you want to change into. You got to read. So I want to go to desktop. Uh, well, I mean, I don't have the voice activation. What's the command? How do you change? No, the I know. I don't. I don't have them memorized yet. How do you uh, change directories? Is it CD? You, you got asking? it, bing, bing, bing. Nah, it's not CD tilde. CD, CD tilde is to go home. He's already home. No, I didn't, I didn't say tilde. Yeah, so you got a CD where? Nah, you're good. CD where? CD to... And then the directory's name. Right? What's the, what's the directory's name? Uh, it's, uh, it's CD to workspace. Uh, now, what you can do is you can type CD uh, desktop, type in desktop, and then put a forward slash. Okay. And then put workspace. Now press enter. Okay. Okay. So, so now, now you're I'm in your workspace. Okay. Press PWD. Okay. And print your working directory. See what directory you're in. That's your directory. I'm going to okay. leave you there. You, what? Yeah, go to the list. You can follow the rest. I, I didn't hear you. Oh, go to the list. Follow the rest, Holmes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so where we at? Where we at? Number ten. Remember All right, so go to work. Go scroll up a little bit. I want to take you to right where we're at in, in workspace. Yeah. So where do we where do we go? Scroll up a little bit more. Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. So we made workspace at number seven, and then we changed into the workspace directory at number eight, and at number mm -hmm. nine. All right, so you're on number nine. Yeah. So. Change directories and make your workspace your current working directory. CD. I thought that I did. All right, now number nine. That's not exactly what it should say. What number nine should say is change directories into your parent directory. Okay. So what that means is that's the directory that's above the directory that you're in. Okay. So what would that be? That would be your desktop because you're working space is inside of your desktop it's a folder on your desktop folder right mm -hmm. right so what cd dot dot or space dot dot does is it changes you into your parents working directory so scroll past nine and do nine do cd dot uh cd do dot dot. cd dot cd space dot dot change directory dot dot yeah and that's changed to the home, to the parent directory. So, you know, now as it says, print the working directory so you see where you're at. And then after that, what I want you to do is, you know, PWD. Okay, I'm, I'm doing that. The last thing I did was CD space dot dot. Now I'm doing PWD. Um, yep. So we're really only working with a few commands here, as you see, and that's yeah. repetitive. It's, it's and you don't have to continuously do that. The reason I, that I do that is just for me, when I was doing it, I was like, all right, so then I would want to see it. So I'm gonna press that. All right, so then now go back to the cheat sheet. And then it says, then print uh, what is on the directory. And you don't have to print what's on the directory because you already know what's on the directory. So we go on to number, uh, we're gonna go on to number 10, which is re uh, remove the subdirectory called workspace. So that's the directory that we were just on and that we just made, which is called the workspace. You could have called it anything. You could have called it ABC. You could have called it BBF, whatever. You could have called it whatever, dude. Portfolio. I don't know. You could have so called. I'm gonna create the actual name of it now. No, workspace was the actual name. Okay. okay. Like when we did MKDIR workspace. Yeah. That directory. Mm -hmm. um, and we named it when when we type the command. All right, so type nk mkdir. Mk space dir. M no, just mkdir. Okay. No, so this, I didn't want you. To, my bad, dude. I didn't. 
I didn't want you to press it. I don't know what you did to me. All right, type what I want you to press and don't press enter is I want you to press MKDIR and then I want you to press space. MKDIR space. And I want any, now think of it like this. Anything that you type after that, any set of characters, any word, any phrase that's like one letter, that's like one long continuous word or whatever that you want to name a file mm -hmm. that is the name of your file so if you type in mkdir xyz the file would be named xyz because you named it that whatever you want to name you, know, you, you catch my flow okay so mkdir space uh file uh, tim's file yeah all right so uh, yeah and you don't have to you know you can do that but you know, <laughs> My file. <laughs> so I, just, I just said mkdir space my file and then should I press enter or should I? Yeah, and then once you press enter, that's basically making that file. Okay. So it's telling me where I'm at now, which is desktop. Okay. And bro, uh. I'll just show you one more trick before we clock out, like, because I'm about to go finish doing that thing again, and I really got it. I want to get through that. Um, but what? So go to like you can do all this on your own time after that. Like, yeah, do this. Simple, like you understand what's going on now. Much more than I did earlier. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like now you can just follow through the rest of that, and I'm sure you can do it on your own. And yeah. uh, if you really want to do it, like you'll do it. Like, and it's. No, I and it's only like making a directory move. And all you have to know is that, you know, pretty much for everybody, they should just switch out the word, the, 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 the yeah, there you go. Switch out the DIR and the LS, but not for MKDIR because that's a separate command. So um, yeah, dude, yeah, you, uh, go to, uh, go to the alt Asian right quick. Before we clock up, so in, um, in the browser um, at the top, it says basic git commands. Yeah. I want you to click on um, that and I want you to go to where it says git config. Uh, it says git config global username, Sam Smith, git commit config global user email. It says tell git who you are in blue. It says <laughs> author name and email address to be used with your commits. Note that git stri uh, strips some characters, for example, trailing periods from user.name. So if we'll read that again, it says, tell git who you are. And then it says git commands. Now, the task is, tell git who you are. The git commands are, git config global username, Sam Smith. I want you to type that in. You want me to type that in? in I want you to type that in. I don't want you to press enter. I just want you to okay. type it. I'm going to copy and paste it. If, if that's okay. Yeah, when you go there, you can't paste it with Control V. What you have to do is you either have to right click and paste, or you have to press con uh, Shift and insert. Okay, I'll just paste it. If you're on a, so I just, I, I so yeah, do it. not click Enter. Do yeah, not yeah. click Enter. Got it. Now I want you to exit out that Sam Smith part, and I want you to put your name in between okay. the quotation marks. I gotta shift. Okay, so. All right, so I put my name. Now that's your username. Should I press enter? Enter. Okay. Uh, Did is you just configured get to your username. Now go back to the page. Mm -hmm. And now what does that say? Get config global user email. Global user email. So now you can do that and that'll be your email. What I want you to do is where it says user.email, uh, or where it says uh, the email part, I want you to put your own email in there. And this is just setting up your own Git environment. This is configuring Git. This is telling Git who you are. It's like your Git profile. 
So after user dot email, put my email, right? No, I want you to. Yeah, I want you where it says Sam at example dot com. I want you yeah. or email like if it was Bruce Lee. No, I want you to take out Sam dot at example dot com. I want you to take out Sam at example dot com, and I want you to put well, that. I was, I was in there. To. And your email would be like Tim at Bruce Leroy's. Or no, excuse me. It'd be like Bruce Leroy at gmail dot com. Okay. So press enter. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Now your Git environment is set up. Boom, baby. It's yours. <laughs> awesome. Was I on a date with you? What was that? Yeah, bro, that's 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 some like first date stuff you gotta tell tell a girl. Be like, yo, I got my own get initialized, baby. I'm just saying. Thanks to you, then I have to tell them who who, who helped me. <laughs> just saying, man. But uh, anyways, so next up is what's next, dude? Go to your yeah, bro. Go. All right, so. What I want you to do now is what we're going to do is I'm going to do this as simply as possible. Go to your um, VS code. And would you fix it for me, please? Like, so that I can see both of them kind of at the same time. I don't really want the code part to be small because the code part is the most important part. Uh, like, so you're saying bro, you know what you can do? I think you have like that big block. You have like the big block of people or something. Like with the, what you can do is you should like uh, with the Zoom, with the Zoom chat. I can't see the Zoom chat, and I'm sure that's what I've been recording this. They can't see it either. But what you can do is that it has uh like, it it it's like uh like where you can minimize it. You can minimize it. I gotta go to the. I have to open up Zoom. That's your main window, I think, to to do that. I mean, you can't. I'm not saying minimize Zoom. I'm saying you can minimize. The actual what space is that? You're saying I can minimize the window where I can see all the people, with all the people's cameras, right? Yeah, you can minimize that, and it should be like a little button at the top, and it should like there should there be isn't. different buttons or something that you can press. Like you can get the all everybody. I think you can control that on your on your view, John. Oh really? You can't control it on his. I've been trying to. That's what I. That's what I was saying earlier on. How how blocking stuff. Because what do you see? Like five. You see like all five people right there. That's why. Ooh, nice. Four people. I yeah, see Elliot. I see Jonathan. I see Crystal. I see Stoic Ronan. Do you see my face? No, I no. I have no idea what you're okay. talking about. Okay. All right. No. Cool. Just show your face, John. <laughs> no. I don't Just put that baby picture of me. If show. you go into your view options, so you can change that. Okay. Well, hold on. Let me. Uh, All right. Uh, so within yeah. uh, within uh, Zoom. Yeah, dude. Uh, hey, let's just get back to this right quick, so I can move on. We can move on. All right. So, so is uh, is the view all right? Yeah, I can see everything all right. Um. So what I want you to do is print your working directory. See what directory you're in. Okay. Print the working. Right, so pw. Oh, shit. Pwd. Yeah, dude. Pwd. Yeah. We just messed up the view. All right, so PWD, so desktop. So you're in your desktop. So now I want you to make a directory with MKDIR, okay. which is like you're making a folder. So I want you to make a folder. And matter of fact, no, you already have a folder. So I want you to erase that and I want you to CD. I want you to change directories into your workspace. So delete MKDIR. Yeah, and uh, delete okay. MKDIR and CD into workspace. D -D -D. CDD space workspace. Wait, no, no, no. Yeah. C D, no, no. Change directory into workspace. Just CD. So, no, not okay. CDD. Just CD. Okay, just CD. Uh, and then uh, so you're changing. Uh, no, now you just CDed into um your home directory. So what we have to do is we have to press CD. Okay, I'm entering and press and. All right, I'm typing CD and pressing enter. No, just press CD and then press space. Uh -huh. When I say press CD, I don't mean press CD and press enter. I never mean that. It's 
so CD space something that's going to come after it, more than likely. Workspace. No. You have to press, you have to type in desktop and then workspace now because you, you're at your home folder. So CD space desktop, then space workspace. No, and then forward slash workspace. That's what I was saying. And I'm pressing enter now. Okay, so now it's showing me my where I'm currently at, which is the folder that. So now what I want you to do is I want you to make another folder. I want you to make a another directory. So with MKDIR, make a directory mm -hmm. and call it test. Test. Space test. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Enter. Okay. So, I don't know if I did it right. But. So now I want you to change directories and I want you to change directories into the test directory that you just made. Okay, so CD. Test. CD space test. Okay, so I believe I, All right, so now what I want you to do is I want you to type echo, E-C-H-O, yep. space. space, okay. Now I want you to type in two quotation, the double quotes, two okay. opening and closing double quotes. And I, inside of that, what I want you to type is uh, HTML. And now navigate out of that to the end. Okay. And now I want you to type in the closing uh, bracket. I mean, the closing uh, brackets. Not a bracket. It's a. Francis? What's the What's the opening and closing tag? The, the All right. So. Uh, for the HTML, are you talking about the angle at? No, 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 no. The um, that's, I don't know what I was looking for. Greater than. Are you talking about. Give me a greater than sign. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, the um, HTML tags. Yeah, tag, that's open tag. Than. That's less than, isn't it? No, no, sorry. Okay, so yeah, so you said greater than, okay. Yeah. And give me another one. Okay. And then, uh, I want you to give me a space. Is that PHP? index.html and with that with that look at this line right here and it's a simple line mm -hmm. what, what inside of that spit inside of those quotation marks html think of it like this index.html is a folder that is a file that we're creating right now it's an index.html file yes. and, and, uh we're using the echo command to do that and then html uh, all that is, is that's like the text that's going to be in the file. So you can write like a whole paragraph or a whole line or you can like paste all your code right there. Like if you want, right after the, right but after like, that's the, what you could do. Like, that's basically like, if you like, like, so if you press enter, I want you to press enter and I want you to go to the folder. I actually, what I want you to do is no, 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 hold on. What I want you to do is I want you, you have VS code. So I want you to type yeah. code. I want you to type C O D E. And I want you mm -hmm. to uh, type a space. And I want you to uh, type in uh, sheesh. I want you to I, I want you to type in the link for that folder. So the extension would be C or actually uh, type erase the code and just type in PWD. Okay. Then, uh, and press enter. I want you to print your working directory. I want to see where you're at. Yeah. All right, so it. copy all that. Copy all of it. Just copy, copy what it printed. Okay, so copy this. Okay, copied. Uh, give me a second. Yeah, of course. This is 
this is a lot of information, but uh, you've, you've outlined it pretty well. Yeah, it's kind of late. I'm pretty tired, man. I'm going through this. Uh, yeah, man. We but it's cool. Make- um, it's pretty. It's really simple. Like I just forgot what we were doing. Uh, no. so, all right, so I remember what we're doing now. So now what we're doing is we're. I'm just opening that up. So what I want you to do is I want you to type in code. Mm-hmm. I want you to uh, give me a space. Mm-hmm. And then paste. Uh yeah. Okay. And then press enter. Uh no. I want you to give me a forward slash and then type in index.html. Oops. Okay. Is there anything else? Yeah. So basically what you're doing is you're opening that file in your VS code. So press. Uh, you said press enter because the uh, audio just cut out. Yeah. Press enter. Okay. Command not found. And then it said MacBook. Oh, I guess it's not a code. So, uh, I don't know. So what I want you to do is go to the file. Uh, the folder. Is, is it relevant go. if I rel- no, no, stop to interrupt. What? No, just go to the folder. Go um, to the actual folder that I created. Yeah. Yeah, right here. All you right, and click on that. Folder. Okay. And then is index and then double HTML. click on that and or actually open that in your VS Code. Or however, oh, yeah. I just wait. Okay, hold on. I just All right. So boom. Them. Now, do you understand what we just did? Yeah, we created a web page with VS Code. I mean, with um, with Git in VS Code. In VS Code. Now, we, now with Git with the command line. Okay. Yeah. Are, are, with are Bash, these, we did it with Bash. Bash. Okay, so Bash these aren't Git. Like, these are Bash. Yeah. Okay. What what the difference I mean, between Git and Bash? There's Git commands and there's Bash commands. Bash commands are like for your computer, and Git okay. is for like so for like the version control system. That's why I say there's a difference. You're starting to understand the difference now, because okay. you've been using Bash so f- thus far, and Bash controls your computer, and Git you, controls the version control. But what we're gonna yeah. do now is we're gonna I'm gonna show you real quick how to yeah. use it and how it how it, how it's different than Bash. So what we're going to do is now you've created a file with bash and bash commands for your computer. You know, you've navigated around the computer a little bit. Now what I want you to do is I want you to go back to the thing that, uh, the cheat sheet. Okay. <clears throat> I want you to open up GitHub. Uh, open up Git. So I have to go uh, Open up a new even- tab and uh, go to GitHub. Yeah. It's just github.com, right? Um, Should yeah. be. Yeah. Yep. And log in. I'm trying to. <laughs> All right, so I'm already logged in, thankfully. All right. All right, sweet. Yeah, all I heard was click, click. I heard Zoidberg. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, dude. Let's see. So, create a new directory. Create a new repository I'm in. Um, okay, so new. Go to the top of the screen and click the plus button. Yeah. Okay. Now, what's the name? So it's called test. So type in test. That'll be the repository name. They'll match each other. No description, no nothing. Just press uh, create repository. Okay, got it. So I'm linking what's on my computer to GitHub now, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So basically what you can do now also is you know what? Do me a favor. Yeah. What I want you to do is I want you to go to the file folder that we just made. Yes. 
-hmm. And I want you to go ahead and, I don't know, delete that. I'm going to delete it? All right. Sweet. All right. Um, and now you always know how to make another one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use get now. So we're going to create a new repository on the command line. So open up your VS code mm -hmm. and PWD to see where we're at. PWD. Yeah. Whoops. Okay. I'm the press enter. Yep. So, right, so it's we in are in. in the test folder, yes, which is where so we want to be. That's the right? folder we're in. So we're gonna make this new. Uh, well, actually, what we can do is we can just delete the test folder because we're gonna make a new folder anyway. Okay. So, so everything we've done thus far. So press M R M for uh, no no no. I'm sorry. Press R M. RM is in the first initial. And type in DIR. DIR. So RM yeah. space. RM DIR, all one word. Okay. I got it. Or all one command. Okay. And press, and enter. press enter. Okay. I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, dude. Press RM DIR. Or we're, we're moving a directory. So make the directory the test. Make uh, RM DIR the test. We're just directory right quick. This is the same thing as deleting the directory by clicking it and typing delete. So it's so, RMDIR and then test, the name of the test folder. But but it, I, I need a space between RMDIR and test. Yeah, right? definitely. I just want to be clear. I don't want to mess it up. All right. Um, all right. So no such file. All right. So, or all right, so what we need to do is we need to go to the, because there's no directory inside of the test, test directory that is named test, so it's not going to work, right? Because it's only deleting the, the direct. So what we need to do is we need to go up above, we need to go above, we need to go to the parent directory. We need to get out of test. And we need yes. to go press CD space dot dot. Okay. So Works where, so, yeah, so now PWD to see where we're at because we're in the workspace. So that means we're in the workspace file. That means we're in the workspace directory. Yes, so I, workspace I folder. Just, we're in the workspace directory. I mean, uh, yeah. what I want you to do now is our uh, move directory. Do you remember the command for remove directory? Um, it's it's not DIR. What is it? It's uh, RMDIR. So R M D I R removes directory. Yeah, so R M D I R and then space and then the name of the directory. Sorry. So remove the name so of the directory is test. Test. So we're gonna delete the test folder. They read three not empty. So we just did it, right? So go, matter of fact, yeah, because we created an index.html file in there. So yeah, CD into the CD into the test folder. <laughs> this is what was that? CD CD into the test folder. Yeah, so CD work CD workspace. CD test. No, no, no. Test, test. Sorry. Because yeah. you're in the workspace, so it's only one subdirectory below you. Okay. So yeah. All right. Wow. So yeah, what I want you to do is I want you to type ls, and then it's going to say mm -hmm. .html. So once it says that, I want you to type in rmdir space index.html, and I want you to press enter. I just typed ls, so I'm going to press enter. Yeah, so type ls, and it's going to say nothing. All right, so cd out of that, cd, uh, cd space dot dot. And then I want you to RMDIR test. Let's see if that works. How do we even know it when it works? I don't know why it's saying the directory is not empty. It's when it works, it's not going to say anything. It's just okay. going to go through. But you know what I want you to do? I want you to go to it. Go. Oh, uh, I don't know. 
go yeah go to the file and it says it's not empty but i'm pretty sure it's empty so um scroll out or uh just erase the test folder delete it delete just delete the test folder. i have no time for it okay <laughs> not exit out of it but delete it yeah yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna delete it manually yeah okay. uh, why are you trying to remove the directory john because at the moment there's two i'm gonna delete it i just deleted it Language just in just a little bit. Okay. My computer's dying. So what did I what did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. As long as you deleted that folder, you're good. Yeah, yeah, that's what I just did. But okay, I messed up. Uh... I don't think you deleted the folder though. I just did. I thought you logged out of it. I don't think you deleted it. No. I, I, I went to workspace and then I deleted tests. You literally deleted tests? I didn't see you do that. You did that? Uh, yeah, I just did it. If you did it, you did it. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I uh, did it right as I was uh, cursing. That's what I did. <laughs> <coughs> <All right. coughs> yeah. So follow these commands right here, dude. Make sure you're in the workspace directory and you're good. So yeah, you're in workspace. So go and follow these commands right here where it says, or create a new repository. Uh, the audio is kind of low. My bad, Doug. I'll go to, or create a new repository on the browser. So you're saying go to my browser? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Where it says, or create a new repository. Create a new repository. Or create a new repository on the command line. Yes. And it says echo, follow those instructions. Okay, so. So I want you to go back to your terminal and I want you to type that in. Type in everything under, under on the command line. Yes, sir. I want you to type it in exactly how it's typed. Okay, so far. Okay, so am I pressing enter after each one? Obviously, right? So, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's not so okay. obvious, but yes. Every line of code that's on that you see there is a different line. So you can think of it like line one, line two, line three, line four, line five, line six. I'm, pr I'm pressing enter after I did the first and line. you press enter after every line, yes. Yes. Right, or so you can think of it like print this command here, print this command next, print this command next, print this command next. It's a list of commands. So now I'm on line number two, get in it. Yeah, and if you want to find out what that means, you can go to the Alt Asian guide that you have opened at the top of your browser, and it'll tell you what that means. Okay. I, I would recommend you check it out. So it says initialize empty git repository, so that sounds good. Um, oh, wait, hold on. What did we do? Um... I don't think we're supposed to do that. Oh, really? It's not good. No, because yeah. we just initialized our whole workspace directory. But so what I want you to do now is I want you to change your workspace directory name to test. Okay. Should I actually manually do it or do it through VS Code? Yeah, manually do it. Code, right? Make sure, make sure, no, test. Yes, okay. And make sure, make, check to see if there's anything in there and if there is, delete it. 
there was nothing in oh well now now there is this was not here before because we just did this right oh it's okay don't delete it leave it there all right so i'm leaving it there and i'm going yeah back. leave it there and just exit out of there all right now just follow the rest of the instructions and go to Alt Asian and find out what Git init is as well, since you you know you want you want. Should go to what? Go to uh, Alt Asian. I I, I the can't hear that. Six, the tab where it says, that's the name of the website. It's called Alt Asian. Go to the yeah, the basic Git command. Then At last year. Alt Asian dot com. It says Atlassian dot com, but okay. Is that the freaking name of it, bro? Yeah. Dude, have I really been... Yo, I must be blind. I'm blind too, man. <laughs> Trust me. See, I've been calling it Confluence. I might be saying Confluence wrong. No, no, no. You know, you just mix up the letters. It's it's a weird name. You want to say Altation. Bro, I've been calling it Altation for probably like over a year, dude. It sounds better. They should change it. They should change it. They really... <laughs> So, <laughs> Bro, I've been really doing that for the longest time. I think you're the first person to ever check me on that, dude. Hey, man, I'm I'm learning from you, and you learned this one thing from me. So it's not exactly yeah, like yeah, that's a big. Can you say it again? Atlassian. At, Atlassian, like kind of like. Bro, Lassian. I might still call this thing Altasian, bro. I'm that. I think I'm. I think honestly, I think it's ingrained in me, bro. That's bad. I uh, do some proofreading on the on the side. I'm like a writer, so maybe that's why I kind of noticed it. I was like, I didn't know what word you were saying. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good correction, dude. That's a fantastic correction, because that was just a lazy mistake. At least I know that part of my brain is working. Because this whole time, man, just learning this, like I feel like a moron, even though I'm just learning it for the first time. See, but you're picking everything up, so you're fun. So I'm on so Atlassian. Did uh, somebody say say something? I didn't hear yeah, that. Yeah, you have to scroll up. Scroll up. Okay. Scroll up. There we go. And right there, so you're at number two. So we did get config already. Now we're at get init. So we're going to initialize the repository. Okay. Now go so, open your browser or actually go to the... Go to the... Uh, uh, um, yeah. Yeah. Repository and GitHub and follow these instructions. And, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, gonna keep I'm gonna keep working through this list. Yeah, yeah keep these in. Okay. Um. So I so it it looks like the last thing we did was the get add readme dot md right because that's in the workspace right. Yeah, that's the last thing you did, dude. Okay, yeah, that's the last thing we did. So. Um, Okay, git commit. I can't even see this. Okay, so yeah. So I'm gonna press enter now. Yeah, you see what I see? What you, you see? What I'm saying about you got to have the code like open, and you want to have it like that. That's kind of like perfect. Yeah, you have to organize. You know, it's just like cooking. You have to have everything all in one. Place, so you're not running around the you kitchen, know? right? And I'm assuming this whole blank space I'm not seeing is like our our face. I don't even know. This uh, I don't even know. No, 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 no. Never mind. Don't don't even mind that. Don't even mind that. Okay. Yeah, you guys are getting to the good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Did I do this right? I mean, it, yeah, it's, you it's, did it perfectly. So what's the what? Look at what you typed in. What's the last thing you typed in? Look at your last command that you typed in and then look up the, just read the message what it's telling you yeah. it's saying on your branch master so the last thing you typed in was git commit m first commit yeah. so git commit m the m the dash m mm -hmm. dash that, that's a message so you're, you're you're making a commit um i don't know if you did get, get add add yet oh yeah you, yeah, you got to do get add first yeah, you did get add and you added your readme to uh, your staging branch and you did a commit to um, commit it. Uh, I don't know if you added it to the staging branch or the working directory, but commit. add and then uh, you did get commit. 
that commits it and then you're doing uh and you leave a commit message and that's what the dash m first message is first commit is and now what you're going to do is you're going to copy that get remote add origin and that's going to link your that that test folder that test directory to your uh github repository Right, I can't do control V. Okay, so paste. No, you, you you can do shift insert though. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't even know where and then click enter. Go. Yeah, okay. All right. So it's saying so this is where the this is the folder right now, workspace my Mac. So what that did is that just added the origin HTTP. That just added your it just synchronized them basically. So that like You know, that's, that's what it did. Add, add, you know, remote add origin. It's synchronizing you, uh, your directory to your remote origin for your repository. So now what you want to do is the, the last instruction in the repository, right? Uh, get push. Get push. Uh, you, yeah. yeah, follow that. So dash M, you're you're printing a um, no, you're you're committing. What does dash M do? Because I, I keep that's a dash message. M. Dash M is is dash message. Okay, and then dash U is what? Oh, does dash U send it to? It said fail to push some refs to. Uh, Is that bad or good? Sound All good. right, so delete the readme. Or actually, delete the no, don't delete anything. Okay. Type PWD. Okay. Oh, wait. Status, get space status. What? Get space status S T A T U S. Yeah. Okay. So get space status. Okay. And press enter. Yeah. No. Get G uh, G G T. Oh, okay. G I T. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. So what I want you to do is I want you to type get add, and I want you to put a period after that. Mm -hmm. Uh, space period. Okay. <clears throat> uh, or actually, what you can do is get add uh, and type type readme.md. Delete that period. Okay. So read.md. Read yeah, but type it exactly how the readme.md file. Um, that's in your yeah. is spelled all capital read me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, just MD. Okay, I'm gonna press enter. Yeah. Okay. Now what I want you to do is uh get commit. So what get added is it just added it to it just added it to itself. So it's now being tracked. Okay. So the changes you make to it, it's being tracked. Okay. Now git commit is going to commit these changes to the staging okay. folder. So git to, to the working directory and git commit change uh, saves it to the staging. It commits it to the staging directory. So it's, it's ready to be shipped out. And so what we're going to do now is git commit and then uh, space dash m uh, Space dash M. And, and, and space dash M. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna add a message. Uh space inside of two semi uh, two quotation double quotation marks. You can put a message such as I just added a readme. I just added a readme. And this is so further down the line when you're able to read and use Git, 
uh, and, and you're looking through the tree of changes that this is tracking, uh, and uh, it, th this is a message that you'll see. You'll see, hey, at this point in time, I just added a readme to my project. So um, now you're gonna press enter. I just kind of cut you off. So I'm, I'm, I'm adding this to my repository or? You were just saying something and I kind of talked over you. But... Okay, so. Did the connection cut out? Oh, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Just checking. So that was a lot. All right, so we, what do we just do? So the last thing we did was get push. Uh, I, yeah, we uh, pushed a message, right? No, what was the last thing we just did? Uh, we, I created something, I created a folder. Or I, what did I do? I don't even know what this. What is the last command, command you entered? The, the last command was. Uh, You're in control here. I can't tell you. You have to find it. Doesn't it doesn't feel like it. Um, it says the last command you entered is git commit. Uh, that's what you did. You okay. did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I see it. It's, it's just. Uh, you understand me? I mean, as much as I possibly can at this the moment. The last command yeah. you entered. Is what? Is git commit. Yes, sir. I just added a yes, sir. You just made a commit. Give yourself a pat on the back. What was that? So give yourself a pat on the back. Yeah, go to your GitHub and look look at what you did. No, you're not done yet. He hasn't pushed it yet. Oh, he hasn't pushed it yet. No. So like I said, this is a three step process what you're doing right now. So, or, you know, it's a multi-step process, but basically you initialize the repository, which means that you set up Git inside of it. Okay. And then you add, like see where it says Git add in the browser, like Git add readme.md, that's adding yeah. folder yeah, to your staging repository. It, that's yeah, it's, that's staging them. That's staging your folders. Staging my code. so it's placing it somewhere. Yeah, it's like it's like selecting it and then uh, committing it is adding and like that M adds a message, and then once you push it, that's like the submit button. Okay. So it's like selecting, adding a message, and then you submit button it. Pretty much. Elliot, you want to walk him through the rest of this? Put the git push? I mean, yeah, it's just man. one more command, right? Yeah, with like I isn't it? All right, matter of fact, I'll finish it off. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just one more step, right? Where am I at? Where am I at? Where am I at? Git push. Where am I at? Where am I at? Where am I at? Git commit. So we just committed. So yeah, dude, git push. Um, so yeah, git push. And then type in... Type in... Or paste that in there. You ready? What was that? You are ready. Get push. So I'm gonna type get get push. Okay. Yeah, uh, actually copy and paste that command that's over there into the. Copy and paste which command? Uh, oh, yeah. oh, here. I thought I had that. I thought I had the paste. Okay. Oops. Whoa. Big mistake. Uh, I think I messed it up. I'm yeah, just yeah. delete. What you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to hold. Just hold down delete. Yeah. Hold it. Hold it. There you go. And boom, baby. 
What's up? Oh, that, looks, that looks good to me. I had to do it a hundred more times. Oh, yeah, so I, I don't think you synchronized. Your... Uh, I didn't do it. You synchronized. What, what went wrong? Oh, all right. So, yeah, put in your username and password. I don't even know my password. Actually, maybe I do. Hold on. What's your GitHub uh, I have to username? Do. Flip over there. Okay. I, I might know my password. Let me see. Yeah, it's the... I mean, if you're gonna go look at your password, I think for a second. Yeah, I know, I know. my brain is falling asleep. Sorry, guys. So, so I'm typing my my username and space and password. No, I think you just enter here. And, and then first, should... and pressing enter, and I think it's your email. I think it's your get. Yeah, now it's gonna ask for your password, and that should be like blocked out. So, yeah, whatever this is, we don't know. This is only you would know. So you want, but but if I type my password right now, everyone knows my password. Well, no, it's not going to show because it doesn't actually type it. Like type any. Type, letter right now. Just, just type any letter and see if it's like. And press enter, and you'll notice that like. I'm, I'm typing anything and pressing enter. Yeah, just type any. Well, don't don't click enter. Just type anything. See see what it does on the screen. Do you guys see that? It's weird. Yeah, click enter. Yeah, okay. look. Authentication. Okay, authentication. Oh, wait, I think we messed up, bro. Oh, man, we messed up. Oh, gosh, we got to start over. I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think he has to start all over. I think he can do git push uh, you origin master. <laughs> what happened? You can do yeah, your git push again. You get push, bro. I'm sorry. I think it's just the authentication failed. But as you noticed, you couldn't see the letters you typed in. So. Yeah, yes. I thought, all right, so. Yeah, so copy your git push line again and put that in again. I think it should work. Actually, you can just do the up arrow. Uh, from your line, you can just do up arrow, yeah. I'm just pressing the arrow. up arrow all the way up to my line. All the way up to the, to the push. And go down, 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 down. Just to the push line. Yeah. This isn't right. Am I doing this right? Uh, go up. I think you went down all the way. No, I, I, I pressed the um, up button, man, like you uh, said. Up key. To delete that line. Delete that line. Okay, just click up once. The up arrow. Press the down. Yeah. Press the down key. Okay. There you go. Do it again. That's how you do it. On like, like you know, the, just like the LS and the DIR, okay. or they call it DIR, like the LS and the DIR. There's freaking uh, there, there's a different like some systems you go up, some systems you go down. Okay. Um, Elliot, you you probably have a Windows, don't you? I don't. I have a Mac. Are you using a Mac? Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know. He just needs to. He just needs to get his get push line again, and mm -hmm. I think so, just that type point. it, in, bro. Just erase all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just so, type it in. So, uh, how do I? Do oh, I type that, it in right here? Yeah, dude. If it shows you, you can always change it. I think this is your password for your computer. No, this should be his password for his. With pseudo nano, et cetera, S stop. Why are we looking at this right now? What is this even doing? I don't know. Press escape. Press enter. Press escape. Exit out of that. I don't know what that's doing. I don't know. Dude, what is going on? I don't know. But, uh... Yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh, he needed to go up to get. Why don't I just. Dude, I'm about to go get something to eat. I don't want you guys figure this out. I don't know. Yeah, I, gotta, I gotta go to sleep, honestly. But I mean, if this is a, uh, if the, ins this is something I could probably do on my own. And if I have any questions, I could ask you, right? Dude, press 
I, I want to say press escape. I just don't know what's going on with your terminal. You have to figure out a way to get out of that. Why is it even showing that? I think this is his... Uh... Like, we never press that command. I don't even know how to deal with that command. Like, I want to say press escape. Just, just press... I've been trying. That's what I've been doing. All right, press control, shift. Like, type in... You can't type in escape. I mean, exit. I'm saying escape. Type in exit. I can't type in anything because it, it keeps asking for the password. It's like, All right, close that terminal and then press control. Just type in control, shift. I can't type in anything. But how do I close out the terminal? Am I just exiting? Yeah, do that right there. Close panel? All right. Yeah, and now type control, shift, eight, uh, tilde. Well, I have, okay, so control, shift. Okay. There you go. Now you have another bash open. So you can always navigate back to that folder and finish what you're doing. Or you can just type in, yeah, navigate back to your workspace. I mean, to your test. Which uh, what is up. So you PWD to see what directory you're in. in that, or I mean, and then you can, if you don't want to be there, you can um, CD to home. Or you can just CD on your computer, which is pretty cool. So CD enter. And now you're home. Um, Make an LS. Enter. Now you just drill down into where your folder is. So that's you, have to, right. you have to use your, you have to use your, when he says scroll down, he doesn't mean. But CD, you, CD. You have to see into it. I feel you, though, dog. And workspace, what, C, CD workspace? You can always LS to find out what's in there. Okay, so, wait. So, this is, this is listing all the files on my workspace. So, now what do I do? This is your desktop, isn't it? Yeah, I, I meant to so you're not You're not going to workspace, you're going to test. So, yeah, okay, so CD test. All right, so you're in the test folder. Test project on your desktop folder. Or yeah, now LS that. You should have that readme in there, right? So LS to test. Now just click LS. Okay, readme. Yeah, so your readme is there. So, all right, now just write get. Space add, space, type R, and then tab. R is tab? Yeah. Pressing, press tab. Press the tab button. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. No. Your capital R. So what are you guys doing? Yeah, tab. Now click enter. Yeah, so press. That completes it for you so you don't have to type it out. So sure, press enter now? Yeah, press enter. And then do get commit get space commit space dash uh, or hyphen hyphen not not a forward m. Okay. m. You can just space. copy and paste those commands. Just finish it out. Space quote and then just say read me. Booyah. All right. Enter. All right, this is nothing to commit. Working tree clean. Okay, so everything matches what's on there. So it it won't commit it because it's just matching whatever's on there. Okay. Um, do you have an you have an index.html that you can put in that folder? I mean, didn't we create one earlier on? No, hey, do me a favor. Refresh your refresh your browser. Refresh the okay. What did that uh, do? Refresh. Yeah, I just did. That's refresh. Yeah, I just did Command R and, and then it refreshes. Oh man! All right, so we gotta push it still. So you know what you can do. Let me show you a quick way so we don't have to do all the command stuff. 
This commercial is making me tired. It's taking too long. Yeah. The way everybody else does it, it's sweet and simple. Go right there to your browser. Okay. Copy that. What? Copy that. Copy this? Yeah. Okay. Go to your terminal. Has he not cloned it on there yet? No, I don't think so. I don't know. Get clone. Type type get clone. Get space clone. Space. And then paste that. Uh, okay. That thing that you just. Yeah. Uh, now click enter. I okay. So you guys see that message, right? Yep. Yeah, it just means there's. Now, now go to that folder on your Finder. Okay. On your MacBook. Yeah, hold on a second. Or you can just change directories into it. Yeah, so you can see that you put that in there just now. Yes, the yeah, readme, right? Well, the. Yeah, you just put that in there. Yeah. From that just came from. No, you know, you know what? Back. Actually, the README. All right, so look, you you downloaded your test into your test folder. Go back to your folder. Go back to my test folder. All right. Yeah, minimize all that. Yeah. So the test folder was what you just put in there from GitHub. Yeah. If you drill uh -huh. down into that folder, you just put that in there. So change the name of that folder that it's in to workspace. Not that folder. The folder that the, the folder group. above that, yeah. You yeah. Don't, and we call it the desktop. Yeah, hold on. Your desktop uh, folder. Rename that. So rename it to whatever. Yeah, just rename it something different so it's not the same. Name it to like workspace. Yeah, workspace. yeah. But did you see how projects? Uh, workspace projects. Name it projects. I don't know. All right. Okay. So. Did you see how that that came from GitHub? That yeah. The Git clone. Yes. All right. Now, do you have any work that you can just throw in there, like an an, an index.html? I mean, there's no one with there. with some divs or something like something that you've worked on recently. No, no, I haven't been working on that. All right. Hey, you know what? It's cool. So you know what? So basically, what you have right now is you actually have that that readme. So throw that readme in there. Uh, hold on a second. Okay, so yeah, move it in there. Yeah, just put the readme in there. Yeah. Okay. Now go to the command line. Yeah, and then you can do your git add. Inside git add with a git add period, all spaces after all that. You do something like like that. Just one period. No. Just one, yeah. Uh huh. Click enter, and then what I want you to do after that's done, I want you to type in git commit. Git okay. commit. You misspelled. You misspelled. Yeah, yeah. I, I just found out. That's why I didn't confirm it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then do your uh, hyphen hyphen m space hyphen m. M M letter M as in mom space and then you type your message in. which is read me right yeah whatever just uh, first command or whatever what am I doing just put just put something in it doesn't matter Anything. your quote your quote doesn't really matter a message it's, it's like a message to yourself basically I'm your yeah it'll be a yourself right now is like a this is version control this is keeping track of the files that in the changes that happen to the files that goes on yeah like on on you know in the in your directory in your folder you know yeah like each change you make to your file this will be your way of telling you this is what i did like five so if you weeks from something, now yeah so i, I changed messed something up. now at this time Okay, you can click enter. Yeah. 
Okay, so this is saying what was happening to the cat. Right? You renamed it, yeah. Yeah. All right, now now do get push, get space push, mm -hmm. and click enter. All right. Now you can go to your GitHub and you'll see that in that in that repo. If you refresh that, uh, refresh that page. Yeah, that's what I just did. Sure. Go to your settings. Yeah, I, uh, here? No, in the in the repo, in the repo itself. What do you mean? Oh, oh, wait a minute. There's those tabs oh. under watch. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. Got it. Okay. Now scroll down. Scroll all the way down. Uh huh. Go up one. Okay. Go to GitHub Pages, Source. Okay. Click the source. No, it's not going to change anything. Go. Oh, oh he, the, he has to have his GitHub pages set up, right? No, nah, he doesn't have his GitHub pages set up. Go yeah, up to the code. Get that set up. Go, go, go up to your code right quick. Yeah, go to the code. Yeah, click on the code. All right, go to your, go to your VS code. Okay. Do me a favor. Go make a new repository. Uh, back, back to my browser, right? Go make a new repository in the browser. Yeah, that's in the browser, dude. Yeah. Go make a new one with the plus button. Okay. Uh, look, I just saw. It. Oh, okay. Here. I'm gonna show you this right quick, and then I'm about to go back to doing my Mozilla docs, and you can stay and watch me do that. It's that's what comes after this. Okay. So, repository. Type in any name of the repository you want it to be. Oh, give it the description. I'm just gonna create it, right? No, 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 no. Add a add a license. Add a description. Hold on. Put the down, uh, down. Nah, uh, do uh, that. Go make a readme, like homie. Dude, make a readme. Click that initialize this re repository with a readme. Not right there. Press control. Nah, dude. See right there the big bold letters that says initialize this repository with a readme? Uh, at the bottom, homes. Right yeah, 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 yeah. Get ignore. And now Maybe make there's a, add a license. Yeah, make an MIT license. This is drop down for add a license. It says none. That way people can collect with the little eye, the little okay. blue eye. I see what you're saying. All right. Not that one. The Type one in. right. Add a, add a license. Okay. Yeah. Type yeah MIT. All right. Create create repository. All right. Clone the repository. Clone or download. Click on the green button. Now copy the link right there. Now I want you to go to your VS code. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to press exit. Press exit. Okay, like I did the last time, right? Okay. I'm sorry. Press control shift, press control shift uh, the tilde and open up the screen okay. again. All right, now we get to your test uh, or whatever the name of the folder is where you keep your stuff. It's Workspace, right? Yeah, it should. Oh, you named it Workspace Projects. I'm going to check it right now. Yeah, I would totally change the name of it from Workspace Projects to maybe just Workspace or maybe just Projects. Yeah, just, yeah, just make it simple. All right. I'm gonna, all right, so it's, it's called Project now. Okay. 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 
All right, so what am I doing? All right, so I want you to navigate to your folder. You said navigate to my folder? Yeah. I'm having trouble hearing you, sorry. Yeah, navigate to your folder. I don't know if your folder's name is Workspace or if it's named Projects. Now, now, name, now it's named Project. Keep changing. I'm sorry, what? No, no, I, I said now it's named Project. Remember the last thing that you said was change it to uh, something shorter. So I, I changed it to Project. Yeah, so you remember how to change directories and all that, right? See so your PWD, see so your current directory. Honestly, I'm not picking this up as, as, as fast as I should. But no, it's okay, bro. I understand. No, it's PC right there. All right, so, all right, so what am I doing? So I, 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 I want to navigate to that to the folder, right? Yeah. Okay. So I don't, I don't have the, all the commands memorized. But I, it's okay. PWD is for printing your working directory. Okay, so PWD to the folder, which is called, which is now called project. No, I just want you to PWD. Okay, so PWD. And press enter. Okay. And that prints your working directory. Now, what that means is that prints the, like I said, you can exchange the word directory for a folder. It means the same thing. So if you know what print means, and you know what working means, and you know what a directory is, mm -hmm. but like I just told you, it's a folder. So that's basically what it did. It printed your working, and working means current, or the folder that you're on, you know, the one you're working on, uh, directory. Does that make sense? Yeah, yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, dude. Next, what I want you to do is I want you to navigate to your, do you remember how to navigate there? So I want you, so you're in your users, my Mac, documents. So Mac is set up a little different. So let's navigate to our home folder. That's CD space tilde. CD space folder, okay. Okay. And press enter. And that's gonna take you home. Now you're home. Now LS. LS, list all of the directories that's on your home. Right, I'm gonna press enter. Directory. So LS and enter. Mm -hmm. And now I want you to change directories into your desktop. And that's CD, desktop. Yes, desktop. And now what I want you to do is I want you to LS and list the, dude, you have so many folders there, but I want you to LS there and see, well, I guess, I guess the name of the folder we're looking for is what? Projects? It's called LS. Project. Yeah, LS. Project. And enter. So, so, um, wait, Press LS and hit enter. And that's going to list all the directories in our desktop. Yeah. And I guess the name of our project folder is project, correct? So change directories into the project folder. CD project. Enter. Oh. All right, so we're in the projects folder. Now what I want you to do is I want you to go type in git clone. Now I want you to go to the directory. I mean, not to the directory. I want you to go to uh, your browser. Wait, hold on. So the last thing that you said was type git space clone and then go to my browser, right? Yeah, don't don't press enter. Just go to your browser. Okay. 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 See where it says clone or download the green button? I want you to click yeah. that. Okay. Let me get that link. Okay. Got it. So I'm gonna go back to VS Code now, right? I want you to go back right there. I want you what do I want you to do? I want you to, link. I want you to clone it. I want you to insert that. Press Shift Insert, and that. Uh, so you can either paste it with the uh, paste where you write yeah. paste, or you can press. Yeah. I don't know where the insert button is on my computer. Okay, bro. Yeah. 
Uh, I don't know Mash like that either. Yeah. So, uh, so now that I have the link in VS Code, do you want me to press enter? Yes, sir. Now, notice that link is basically the same link as go to your browser. Yeah, as the uh, URL. Yeah, as right there, except that it has the, the, the it has dot .git at the end of it. So, it has all of that plus dot .git at the end. All right, that's irrelevant, though. So, okay, no. okay. now go back to your terminal. And notice that the file is done cloning. So that means you basically just downloaded it. Yeah, that was super from, cool. Yeah. So I just downloaded it from the browser to my computer. That little bit we did right there. Yeah. Yes. Well, we made the new repository and just cloned it. Like where we made it the second time, the new, the new repository. Yeah. yeah. That was like five minutes, yeah. wasn't it? It was easier because we went through all the other commands, so you kind of got to understand what stuff is. Yeah, it's all right. So now go to your folder and open up that folder, bro. Let's look at that folder you just put. shoot. I want to take a look at what's inside. This is how you. This is how you clone projects on GitHub that you like. Now you got to hang up Git and GitHub. Not completely. This is a little feel for it. Yeah. yeah, you see that? It's got the license. It's got the the MIT license. It's got the README. From the drag down folder. That yeah, yeah, and from the drag down menu. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Click on the license. Open it up. You know we got the license from off the GitHub. You know from Mr. Pizza Two Pizza Two. Yeah, it's me, man. MP pre yeah. see look I'm bad I'm bad with all that like I gotta work on that yeah, your pizza too it's an MP R so. <laughs> <laughs> totally wrong dude oh god I said something about pizza <laughs> get a job at Did you say something about pizza <laughs> what <laughs> oh man um so yeah um, so cool. So then, like, this is like if I create my own software, this is my copyright, basically, right? This is the license, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. All right. So we're uh, now you can add an index.html file with that echo command. Oops. So let's do that. This? Nah, it's um. Put uh, greater than. Okay. So echo, after the echo. Be, uh, yeah, put two greater than uh, or closing tags. No index. And then, am I missing something? No, nah, press enter. Okay. All right, cool. Now what I want you to do is get add. Uh, with a period at the end. Uh, is it? It's get space. Then? Yeah, get add with space and period. What was the last thing that you said? Sorry, your the audio cut out. Um, get add space period, or get space. Dude, space period space add. Yeah, I erased all that. Okay. Get. Add. So there's some space. space add, get space add. Yep. Yeah. Get is the command, and then you're telling get what to do. So I shouldn't have to tell you there's a space after it. Okay. I just I just want to yeah. Okay. No 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 I know but now I'm telling you okay. now you know get is its own command. Okay. Got it. You're telling get what to do. Okay. So <laughs> we're do, typing those other commands and it had those were all just regular bash commands. So anyways. So get add yeah. and uh, space period. And press enter, right? And press enter. So this is adding the the index on HTML to the to the project folder, right? Yeah, it's staging it. Staging. Or you, but it's not. It's it, yeah, it's staging it. It's getting it ready to go there. It's not there yet. 
that's clear. Makes it so if you ever want to make a change, you can just always change this. Oh. I can go through that now, but just know that it's not. It's not there yet. It's not. It's not official yet. We're making it official. Okay. So I'm just. I'm looking at all this yellow. All right. All right so now, uh, what do I do? Oh snap! What? Oh gosh! What we did is. We're in the project folder, but we're supposed to be in the test folder. So we should have CD'd. We should have CD'd before we did this? Uh, you know what? Go to your folder. Okay. And uh, go to the parent folder. Yeah, go yeah. one. And the index.html file. Mm -hmm. Put it in... Whichever one, put it in the new one. There you go. go. And now what I want you to do is get add, get commit, get push. Get add with the period. Yeah. Get commit with the message and then get push. With origin master. So okay. enter. Okay, enter, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now I want you to do get. Commit. Uh, get commit. Okay. With a space and a uh, the M. M. Dash M. M dash. You said. I'm sorry. Erase the M and put dash M. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it stands for message. And then we have the message, which would be in a space. Okay. And the message would be in. Double quotation marks. And anything, right? It doesn't have to be. We added a HTML uh, index.html file. Okay. So I'm going to press enter now. All right. And now get push origin master. All, all separated words. Origin and then master, right? Uh, yep. Okay, I'm gonna press enter. Press enter. Username, all right. So now it's asking me for my username, right? Yeah, I don't know why. I hope you know it. Yeah. So I'm gonna press. I'm gonna press enter now, right? If that's your username. Yeah. Now it's asking for my password, which I might want to look up. I don't even know if I know it, but I don't use this is my first time using GitHub. I mean, I've never used it before today. If I knew, I would have come prepared, but I don't know if I know it. Let me let me just try to type something. Hold on. Hey John, how far in pre code camp do we get today? We finished applied. We finished design. Yeah, we, we, we finished that. Or we finished. Okay. I just finished that. I'm caught up with you guys then. And you guys did some projects with that? Yeah, we were actually doing some animation projects. It was pretty cool. I'm gonna reset my uh, password because I don't I don't know it. So. Right. Maybe we should stop sharing for a little bit. Yeah. So turn the share off. This was reminding me about that. Uh, uh, uh. Curious, Jonathan, what made you so passionate about teaching people like all of this? If you didn't already I'm have fuck it, I'm a boss. What? <laughs> boss. <laughs> yeah. I'm a boss. That's what made me passionate about it. I'm a boss. And I got bosses around me. I don't know. Uh, you can't get ahead if you don't, you know what I mean? It's like 
you can you can do what you're doing, or you can help the community. And uh, you know that'll help you as well. So it's like a karma thing for you. That's what you want to call it. I just enjoy getting the getting this out there to people who might not have had the, you know, that might be doing other things with their time than doing this, you know, worse things or something like that. Gotcha. Like it's a better avenue for certain people. That's really, um, that's, that's awesome, man. Yeah. You know, and for the people, even for the people that are like, you know, and I don't just mean that for bad people. I mean that for, you know, an arraignment of different people, people that just don't have the, spirit to go out there and do it themselves who need a little push because i'm doing this for myself as well like you know like i want people to be able to that i can go out there and talk to them and build projects with and do this and do that and just have fun and learn and build and make money and you know honestly like i want everybody here to get a job bro like that's like that's what i feel in my gut like like that's you know, nothing just gotta do it Set my password again. So, yeah. hey, man, what's up? Now, now I can see you. That's cool. What's up, man? What's up, bro? Nice to see you, man. <laughs> what's up, dude? Chilly. All right. So, all right. Password, right? So, do it. So what do we uh what do I have to do now? Do I do we have to navigate back or I mean uh Do you have to navigate back? You're in your project folder. So you should... You can say get status and it'll tell you. Get space status. Yeah, and I think we still haven't CD'd into our freaking Click enter. Yo, we still have not CD. Okay. We still haven't CD'd into our into our uh, test folder, have we? I yeah, you're still in projects. All right, so C so what CD test? No CD. Uh... You go to LS and see where you are, or PWD. PWD. I think P, you think you're in the um, projects. You're in projects folder. Pro, yeah, press enter. Yeah. yeah, you're in the projects folder. Now I want you to LS. List your directories. All right, now I want you to CD into your new directory. Did you put an HTML in the new? Yeah. What did you, you guys put in? You can check in a second. I want you to see there, though. All right, so what am I doing? CD? Yeah, CD new. CD new. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the name of the folder. Okay, so... Now I want you to LS. There should be a README in there. And press Enter. Okay. Yeah, it is. A README, license README, and that's the HTML. All right, so now I want you to get add. Dot. Yep. Press Enter. And then I want you to do get commit. Space dash M. Space, space, da- uh, sorry, so space dash M, right? Space, quote, your message, add your message. And enter, right? So, so this is like what happened to the folder. Yeah, you created the, you created it, yeah. Okay. One file, you added that index.html. Yeah. Get push origin master. Enter. Enter. And it's gonna unpack. Oh, it's asking for your username now. Okay, so everything you just did to create that. Almost there, Bubba Bing Biscuit. All right. Hey, you're like, okay, just did it. It's unpacking it. There you go. You did All it. All right. So go to your repository. Check out your new your index.html file that you I finally got there. <laughs> the holy grail. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, I don't know what. Check it out. Check it out. Woo! Yeah, go to your GitHub. 
Get it. Check that out, man. Check out your repository. You don't want to see your text out HTML file online, homes. Yeah, open up a new tab. Oh, there it is. There it is. Return to sign in. You got to sign in again. So just get signed into your thing. You did it. Two pets. Oh, you're not even signed in yet. Yeah. <laughs> get like way ahead of All right, so I'm going to go back to, uh, I mean, now that I'm signed in, right? Where do we, how do I get back to? Your repository? Yeah. You try clicking on your profile. Okay. There we go. And, all right, so tests. So okay, that's me. So this is, so this, this is it, the new HTML, right? I believe so. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And once you get through the uh, headache that's learning the commands, it's so freaking Click cool. on it. It's, it's just so cool that something that was on my computer ended up here. Like, yeah, yeah drill into that. It's awesome. I can like appreciate it now that I'm past the... Uh, Have you clicked on it yet? No. Yeah, click on your do and you'll see it there. Yeah, that's what's in there. That's cool. And you, your message, messaged. You see? I don't see it yet. Oh, okay. I'm blind. Okay. And the, it says um, message Windows in box. the middle. Okay. Yeah. And it says that you did that. Right there, it says ago. index.html and then next to it, it says message and it says about three minutes ago. Yeah. yeah. And you committed that three minutes ago. That's what it said. Do you see that line? Yeah. yeah. So now if you go to your heat map, right there. it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little green green block on your heat map now for your yeah guy. but uh also what's it called on go to your, go to your in, profile yeah but not let's not go there now that's not important what's important is that you got to get that uh you gotta you gotta you gotta notice what's it called click on the index.html file okay okay oh yeah yeah, yeah so it. now you can click edit or i'm sorry click on the pencil bar next to the trash can yeah, yeah, yeah it's just about here. Uh, and now this is basically like writing stuff in your VS code for the index.html file, but it'll be saved online. Oh, okay. Huh. And then you can pull, like if you make a change there, like you can pull. So, and that'll, that'll give you the changes that's on there. So like if you're working with other people and stuff, that would be useful. So let's go to, what's it called, bro? Let's, I'm gonna show you guys. Let's get go back to the docs, bro. Do you feel comfortable now? You got this? Wait, what'd you say? You got this now, right? I feel a lot better than I did before, but I kind of still feel like a moron, to be honest. Really? <laughs> oh, man. I mean, you'll be surprised tomorrow how much of what you just did, how much you, that stuck. Yeah. I'm just, uh, I mean, I'm, I, I have to do pre coursework for my, for, for the Lambda. Uh, I'm learning JavaScript right now. I've been so worried about that, that like, this is, I mean, like I, I don't have the time to practice this cause I have to practice. I have to pass a coding challenge. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I but, mean, uh, something that'll be helpful for this is that now you can start committing all that work you're doing for Lambda. I would start committing that to your GitHub. Whenever you work on it, work on it in VS Code and commit it to GitHub. Okay. So then I see that's saying. like a living, breathing resume for you. Whenever, whenever you're <laughs> applying for jobs, you can show people, I've been working every day on my code. And you, you, they'll see your heat map of your, your GitHub profile. Well, and they'll see your repositories and they'll see all your work. Well, I, I want to pair pair code with uh, you or, um, or work in a pair with you because that's uh, I feel like that'll help me out a lot because I'm so effing frustrated right now. Yeah. And then like whatever you're doing, um, like whatever work you're doing, yeah. you don't need to have your computer with you wherever you go. You can always access your work 
um, through GitHub and Git and whatever you're doing, it's always saved. Like if your computer was to be lost in the fire, you've got your work here on your GitHub. So you never lose your work. As long as you know your login for your GitHub. I clearly didn't know I had to get that, but yeah, okay. But go to your go to your profile and view your uh, view your profile, and you should be able to see from there. If you scroll down, you see that little green dot. That's you today. What you just did. Is this the heat map that you were talking about? Yeah. If you hover over that yeah, little green dot, it'll show you how many contributions you made today. So you made four contributions today. Nice. That's all you need to get a dark green dot. I'm starting. I'm gonna do all my freaking contributions on there. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like that's the coolest part. And people have the entire year filled up. Yeah. But that's how that's how employers know that you are serious about code is because if you have like like say you for Jan like it moved to January in February and there was a whole lot of green in the whole month of January. It shows mm -hmm. your activity for the month. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically what employers want to see is they want to see your, your portfolio and they want to see your GitHub. They want to see that you're serious about coding and committing. And that's why learning Git and, and connecting your Git with your GitHub. That's why it's important because you can be pushing out whatever you're working on, on your desktop. You can be pushing that to your GitHub. All your Lambda school prep, you can be pushing that to your GitHub. And the next step is to create a GitHub page, which then gives you a link that you can tweet. So I don't have, I mean, the, the having a profile is obviously not the same as having a GitHub page. Because your GitHub page w would be where all my Lambda code is and like all the things that I'm working on, right? Yeah, GitHub page is another, it's another wrinkle. Uh, you you gotta set up. You gotta go into your. Um, yeah, go to your repository. It's super simple. I'll show you. How. Yeah, go back into your uh, test repository. It's right there on your page. It says popular repositories. Yeah. The new, new. I think you put it in that new one, didn't you? It says new repository. Yeah, go back. Go back. Yeah, go into your new. And go to settings. No, no, go to master. See where it says master right there? And click uh, there and type in gh dash pages. gh dash pages, right? Correct. Yeah, hyphen pages, yeah, dash pages. All right. And what you just did right there is you just created a new branch. Now, a branch is basically like, think of like a straight line or like, yeah like a tree yeah exactly it's like an information tree you know mm -hmm. like you go to directories libraries kind of like how you know yeah i think i know what you're saying i don't know but <laughs> okay um so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to settings uh just saw it. Sorry, just, just the settings, settings under the watch within the, within within this repository the repository settings and it's right there you see where it says yeah yeah now go to scroll down and go to github you're gonna see uh actually scroll up i'm sorry up 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 right there see where that, that, that link is and it says github pages copy that or you can yeah okay. and copy it and then go to the other page and actually you can click it now go ahead and click on it okay click on it okay. yeah you can click on it and basically that's what like if you were to type something on your index.html it would have showed up right here okay any web page you want to host basically you can host it right here any web page all right so any, any project that i'm, I'm working on would, uh, okay. yeah so even if you would have just typed in a paragraph tag or no tag if you would have just typed in a b c d e f g a b c d e f g would have popped up right you have there. To save it to that folder though right yeah you have to save it yeah yeah. yeah, just save it to that. Index. Do you know what an index.html file is? I mean, I know that's where a developer would put all the HTML code, right? Yeah. Just like he a, work, he's working through JavaScript right now. So he's gone through HTML and CSS. Yeah, I, I did some code academy classes in, in, the, in the past. But yeah, so I'm kind of familiar with index.html, uh, you know, 
CSS, uh, or rather .css, you know, how you, how you have the different codes in, in different files so you can edit each thing um, independent of, of each other, right? Okay, cool. Yeah, so um, how about we go on to the Mozilla Docs, bro. So you got, you got the hang of this now. You got this. You know, we're going to post this video so you can always go back and watch it. And also, there's other videos on the channel that will show you how to, you know, I mean, basically, you have everything under it. Like, you're, you have that cheat sheet and you have the alt agent guide. So now all you have to do is really just go back. And like, like, like really what you do from now on, if you ever want to make a repository, all you have to know is you know how to navigate to your directory, right? So what you do is you just make a directory. You can even just use the command line, like the, what's it called? Like you can just make a directory by clicking and making directory. And then all you have to do is navigate in the Git to the directory and then you just clone it right there. That shouldn't be, a problem. you should be able to do that by now. Yeah, yes. Yeah, all you have to do is navigate to the, Navigate to your directory from the command line and then clone it there. That's it. Literally, that's it. And then after that, when you make a change to your index.html file, the only three things you have to do is what? Add, commit, push. And those are on the cheat sheet. They're in the alt Asian one, though. For yeah. the cheat sheet on, on my own time, just kind of go, go through this. Okay, that's where I'm at. Yeah, but see, that's that's what I'm saying. That all that all that we went through right there, th those are the basic commands you need right there. You just need to navigate to it. You know how to navigate with change directory and PWD and LS. You know, PWD print working directory. See where you're at. Print your current. You know, LS list directories. That's in that directory. <laughs> and what was the other one? Um, push C in CD. Change directory, move around. That's it. That's all you got to do. So, oh, and you know how to go home. Well, CD, just by pressing CD enter. Okay. Yeah. So, and then, so after, after those basic commands, you know, like we said, just get clone. And the link. And then I'm going to say it again. Just whenever you edit the file. Get add, get push, get commit. Simple as two Ps. And then, you know, that's basic. That's starting off, man. Thanks for your help, huh? man. I huh? What was that? I said, I said, you, I, I, uh, I was starting to say something, then I forgot what I said because you started saying something, and then you said, what did I say? Thanks, <laughs> uh, sir, uh, Elliot and uh, Jonathan. Thanks for walking me through this. Yeah, dude. So do you want to get started now that, that we've gone through the basic files and folders that we need? I mean, the basic files and stuff that we needed? I mean, honestly, I have a lot more work to do. I don't have time right now, but like when is uh, you guys meet up every night? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we're here. I'll be, I'll be back here tomorrow night. Yeah, Marco's going through some pretty stringent uh, Landis, Landis yeah. school prep. Show, show him a little bit of that, man. Show them some of those challenges, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it like sixty JavaScript challenges you have to complete? Dude, it's um, it's not even sixty. It's it's see, okay, like right well, now we're recording, so if it's if it's copyright, I don't want to see it. No, it's I don't even. I mean, I could just verbally. I mean, is it your project, like a project that you're building? No, no, I'm not even there yet. I'm just going through the basic uh, Lamba school homework. And, and once you do, there's, there's eight like assignments and I'm at five. And once I, pat, once I get to eight, there's a Lambda challenge, which is a four question, 45 minute test. And you can take it as many times as you want. And, but you have to pass it and to get accepted to the actual full coursework. And that's where I'm at. And I'm, and I'm extremely worried that I'm not going to be able to pass it. Like, like it's, it's, it's been worrying me this whole time. So that's why I'm kind of like, you know, if I, if, if I didn't have to do that and like I have four weeks, you know, which just, it sounds like a lot of time, but I mean, I don't have a background in computer science. Like I don't, and this is all like, it's like learning Greek or um, Egyptian for me, you know, it's like you, brother. well, if you don't get accepted, which I'm pretty sure you will, because <laughs> you right. like freaking G so go ahead and get it, my G, and stop playing with yourself and go get it. I could, uh, if you really want, that's what you're going to get. 
and I know you could do it because you just went through this and you know get in command line now. Boom. You have the you have the cheat sheet. Boom. You're there. You don't have to worry about that anymore. You know to use get. Boom. You have a great you have one. You've done it. Yeah, and I mean the the mo the, the coolest part is I, I have peers that are that are awesome. I mean, Elliot has been probably one of the most act, if not the most active person in terms of like doing all the things that career karma wants. So I'm you're kind of like my model that I kind of want to model, you know? So I'm I'm definitely going to be back here tomorrow. But right now I got to do I, I can't even That's sleep now. It's 2:30 a.m. here in New York and I can't even sleep yet cuz I have a lot of work to uh, do. Otherwise, I would gladly chat more. Like I wish I didn't have to go, but like bro, go do go handle your business. So thank you again so much, Elliot, for inviting me. Jonathan, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. And I'm going to see you guys less than 24 hours from now. <laughs> thank you. Have a good night, man. Hi, bro. I'll see you, Marco. Peace, Peace out. out. Peace out, Jonathan. Hey, man. All right, man. All right, dude. So I think I'm about to go through a little bit more of this. That was fun. Yeah, I like Margo. He's cool. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was that was fun. That's always fun. Show people command line how it works right quick. I think it was only an hour. Only an hour or two. Picked it up really quick. Yeah, I mean, that was like the first night. I mean, that that's what we went through. So where do we leave off? We left off on installing basic software. And then what was I doing? Oh, so I clicked on how do you set up a local testing server? And that link took me here. And it said for this, I should know how the internet works. And what is a server? And I opened up those both here for how internet works. It says, encourage me to read this. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna read that. And then for web server, it said, well, I already clicked on how the internet works. Then it said, understanding the difference between a web server and a I mean, a web page, a website, a web server, and a search engine. So I clicked on that, and it said, go to how the internet works. And that's it. Then we can begin. So how does the internet work? They said I should read this one first. How do I start to design my, first, my website? This article covers all the, this article, Elliot, what are you doing, bro? Uh, I was trying to decide whether I should do a stab at some of those projects that I haven't finished yet. Oh. Or this page. What's that? Do you want to read this page? It's really short. Yeah, let me pull it up on mine. Okay, sweet. Thanks, man. Send me the link to where you're at. Okay. How do I start to design my website? Okay. So what I want you to type in is I want you to go type in developer.mozilla.org. Actually, I'll, how about you screen share your... Okay, I think I'm at the page. How do I start to design my website? The summary? Yeah, how do I start to design my website? Yes. All right, I'll share my screen. Okay, stop sharing. All right. All right. When starting with a web project, many people focus on the technical side. Of course, you must be familiar with the technique of your craft, but what really matters is what you want to accomplish. Yes, 
it seems obvious, but too many projects fail. It's not from lack of technical know-how, but from lack of goals and vision. So when you get an idea and want to turn it into a website, there are a few questions you should ask before anything else. What exactly do you want to accomplish? How will a website help me reach my goals? What needs to be done and in what order to reach my goals? All of this is called project ideation and is a necessary first step to reach your goal, whether you are a beginner or an experienced developer. All right, no content yet, deeper dive. A project never starts with the technical side. Musicians will never make any music unless they have first, first have an idea of what they want to play. And the same is true for painters, writers, and web developers. Technique comes second. Technique is obviously critical. Musicians must master their instrument, but good musicians can never produce good music without an idea. Therefore, before jumping into the technical side, for example, code and tools, you must first step back and decide in detail what you want to do. An hour's discussion with friends is a good start, but inadequate. You must sit down and structure your ideas to get a clear view of what path you must take to make your ideas a reality. To do this, you need only pen and paper and some time to answer at least the following questions. Note there are countless ways to carry out project ideation. We cannot lay them all out here. A whole book wouldn't be enough. What we will present here is a simple method to handle what professionals call project ideation, project planning, and project management. <laughs> what exactly do I want to accomplish? This is the most important question to answer since it drives everything else. List all the goals you want to reach. It can be anything, selling goods to make money, expressing political opinions, meeting new friends, gigging with musicians, collecting cat pictures, or whatever you want. Suppose you are a musician. You could wish to let people hear your music, sell goodies, meet other musicians, talk about your music, teach music through videos, publish photos of your cats, find a new girl or boyfriend. Once you have such a list, you need to prioritize. Order the goals from most important to least important. Find a new girl or boyfriend. Second, let people hear your music. Third, talk about your music. Four, meet other musicians. Five, sell goodies. Six, teach music through videos. Seven, publish photos of your cat. Doing this simple exercise, writing goals and sorting them will help you, you out when you have decisions to make. Should I implement these features, use these services, create these designs? So now that you have a prioritized list of goals, let's move on to the next question. How could a website bring me to my goals? So you have a list of goals and you feel you need a website to reach those goals. Are you sure? Let's look back at an example. You have five goals connected to music, one goal related to personal life, finding your significant other, and the completely unrelated cat photos. Is it reasonable to build a single website to cover all those goals? Is it even necessary? After all, scores of existing web services might bring you to your goals without building a new website. Finding a girl or boyfriend is a prime case where it makes more sense to use existing resources rather than build a whole new site. Why? Because we'll spend more time building and maintaining the website rather than actually searching for a girl or boyfriend. Since our goal is what matters most, we should spend our energy on leveraging existing tools rather than starting from scratch. Again, there are so many web services already available for showcasing photos that it isn't even worth the effort to build a new site just to spread the word about how cute our cats are. The other five goals are all connected to music. There are, of course, many web services that could handle these goals. But it makes sense in this case to build a dedicated website of our own. Such a website is the best way to aggregate all the stuff we want to publish in a single place. 
good for goals three, five, and six, and promote interaction between us and the public, good for goals two and four. In short, since these goals all remove or revolve around the same topic, have everything, having everything in one place will help us meet our goals and help our followers connect with us. How can a website help me reach my goals? By answering that, you'll find the, way, the best way to reach your goals and save yourself from wasted effort. What needs to be done and in what order to reach my goals? Now that you know what you want to accomplish, it's time to turn those goals into actionable steps. As a side note, your goals are not necessary, necessarily set in stone. They evolve over time, even in the course of the project especially if you run across unexpected obstacles or just change your mind. Rather than go through a long explanation, let's go back to our example with this table. Goals. Let people hear your music. Things to do. One, record music. Two, prepare some audio files usable online. Could you do this with existing web services? Three, Give people access to your music on some part of your website. Go talk about your music. One, write a few articles to start the discussion. Two, define how articles should look. Three, publish those articles on the website. How to do this. Go meet other musicians. One, provide ways for people to co contact you. Email, Facebook, phone, mail. Two, define how people will find those contact channels from your website. Sell goodies. One, create the goodies. Two, store the goodies. Three, find a way to handle shipping. Four, find a way to handle payment. Five, make a merchandise a mechanism on your website for people to place orders. Goal to teach music through videos. One, record video lessons. Two, prepare video files viewable online. Again, could you do this with existing web services? Three, give people access to your videos on some part of your website. Two things to notice. First, some of these items are not web related. For example, record music, write articles. Often, those offline activities matter even more than the website, website of the project. In sales, for instance, it's far more important and time consuming to handle supply, payment, and shipment than to build a website where people can place orders. Second, setting out actionable steps leads to new questions you'll need to answer. Usually, their turnout to be more questions than we originally thought. For example, should I learn how to do all of this myself? Ask someone to do it for me or use third party services. Conclusion. As you can see, the simple idea I want to make website generates a long to do list, which only grows longer as you think about it. Soon it may look overwhelming, but don't panic. You don't need to answer all the questions and you don't need to do everything on your list. What matters is to have a vision of what you want and how to get there. Once you have that clear vision, you need to decide how and when to do it. Breaking down big tasks into small, actionable steps, and those small steps will add up to great achievements. From this article, you should now be able to make a rough plan for creating a website. The next step might be to read how the internet works. Sweet, dude. So, hey, do me a favor. Oh, do you have a notepad? I do. All right, open up notepad right quick. On my computer or a real sheet of paper? Um, do you have a tech editor open? Yeah, I do. All right, sweet. Let's create a new, like, index.html file in a new like notes folder. Okay. Within W3 devs. <clears throat> um, wherever dude, on your desktop, wherever you want to create it. 
Yeah, it can be on projects. Yeah, W3 Dev projects. That's cool. <clears throat> Okay. What do, what do we want to call this? Just notes? Notes, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, echo uh, or CD, yeah, to notes. And um, let's create a folder called notes.html. <laughs> So, create a folder in there. <coughs> so yeah, echo. Echo. And then, um, or I could just create touch, right? I just want to create an index HTML, right? If it works, does it work? Yeah, you say touch index dot HTML. Notes dot HTML. Oh, notes. Yeah, let's call it notes. Can be its own page. Okay. All right. So, so it's created now. So go ahead and open it up. Uh, open that up in Visual Code. Okay. Notes HTML. So there it is. All right, and I go to the page. I mean the browser. Yeah. Yeah. Go to the, yeah, and scroll up. Oh, scroll up. Mm -hmm. Within. Yeah, within the last tab. Okay. Oh. Right. The Mozilla Docs. Yeah. Scroll up. Uh huh. Scroll down a little bit. Let's see how to make goals. How did they say to make them? <clears throat> All right, go scroll up a little bit. Right there. So when you say you get an idea, turn it. In. All right, so copy that. Copy so when you get an idea, uh, all and, and copy the bullets. Mm -hmm. So when project ideation. Yeah, start it so. What exactly do we want to accomplish? <coughs> <coughs> so scroll over. It. What needs to be done to reach my goals? Yeah, see where it says so when you get an idea. Yeah, scroll. Mm -hmm. There you go. And copy that. Mm -hmm. And uh, paste that in a paragraph in the body. Okay. It's not going to come out correctly. It's okay. With the, uh, the bullets, but. Yeah, that's fine. Unless I do this. All right, list. Yeah, you uh, ally. Ally. There you go. And then put that in there. Let's do another ally. All right, so you see where it says UL, or the closing tag for the UL? I want you to yeah, yeah. one of those. Yeah, I got to fix that. There it goes, yep, perfect. All right. <clears throat> okay, now I want you to do another P tag below. Um, 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 let me fix this real quick. I don't know why it's doing the double thing. I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. Okay. Okay. Um, not a closing P tag though. <clears throat> erase that. Erase that closing P tag. I just wanted to be more room for more stuff like this 
We need to close it eventually, right? Um, go back to the browser. I change my view. So. Uh, so I'm yeah, there we go. Go back to the browser. Okay. Uh, scroll down. Uh, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Scroll down. <clears throat> All right, copy, make a, co yeah, copy that, uh, Copy, copy, or uh, go scroll up. Scroll up. All right, copy, yeah, copy that and scroll down. Uh, and, and copy it all the way down to the uh, the numbered list. Scroll down, yep. Yeah, right there. All right, scroll down a little bit more. Press, hold the shift, hold the shift and go down to the design. And just hold shift and click down to where it says design. Uh, that's perfect. All right, press control C or uh, copy, copy it, and, uh, and put it right there. And you can erase that. See, go scroll down. Uh -huh. Scroll down. And erase that where it says, yeah, that last sentence. No, no. All right, there we go. All right, so you can fix that all the Like, I mean, you know what? Yeah, go ahead and just add like a. I guess you can add like two, like add a paragraph tag to that first paragraph and add a paragraph tag to that second paragraph wow. and then just add a unordered list to the unordered list in a space. You can fix all that up right quick. See, what, close, why, I don't know why you're closing that P, of uh, erase that p that closing p tag. Do you want to leave it open? Uh, wh what what is I don't I don't scroll up. What are you closing? That should be closed already. That that p tag okay. sentence. Yeah, that that sentence should be closed. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> You know that if you scroll over it and you press Control X, Control X cuts it, and Control Control V pastes it. Control X. Yeah, and you can press Shift yeah. down. Press Shift and down. Hold Shift and press down. <clears throat> press oh, right now. Yeah. Yeah. Then go ahead. Pre hold Shift. Hold Shift and press down. What? What do I, what like why am I doing that? I'm just showing you I'm just showing you around. Yeah. Just hold yeah. it. I'm just showing I'm just showing you. So yeah. Hold yeah. It. yeah. And then I'm you know not, press no, press I'm the not. forward or right, so press the forward and backwards. Left and right, I mean. Yeah, I need to clean that up. No, no, it's cool. It's cool. I'm just showing you this right quick. I'm trying to show you something. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So all right. To get them in the same right. indentation. Yeah, so yeah. a little bit too fast, but uh so go backward and forward, like press out of that and just I think that's the same now. one line at a time. So go down, down. Yeah, I think they're the same indentation now. All right. What I want you to do is I want you to, I want you, I want to show you something right quick. See where it says find a new girlfriend, friend? Go right there. Uh -huh. Getting, go to the beginning of that line. Okay. Okay. Now what I want you to do is I want you to hold shift and I want you to go all the way down to where it says publish no that's too far i want you to i want you to hold shift and do this uh-huh i want you to get used to the feel of the command line right quick yeah dude so and i want you to press back the, not back but like the uh i think you have to do shift tab no 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 you, you're not understanding i want i didn't know you could do that but um yeah shift tab changes the indentation and then tab. that's cool i didn't know that but yeah, it yeah, press, yeah, press the left and right. Tab. Press, pre do me a favor. Press the hold shift and press left and right. Press the left, press the right. Yeah. Press it right. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. It's press it up. 
Press up. Yeah. Left, right. Left, right. Get the feel. Left, right. Up, down. Up, down. And even you can do um... – Press, press. Hold, hold shift. Press, press control. Hold shift and press control. Scroll back. Yeah, you can do skip words with, con with control. Oh, that's cool. So, like, that gets whole words with control. And I think if you – yeah, that's cool. Um, so, all right, press so control, do, like, control X. Thousand. Press control X. Yeah, to cut it. Yeah, and then, you know, control V, paste it. Control V, paste it, yeah. All and right, then, sweet. All right, never mind. You can finish all that. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, let's do this. Our list. So let's do. Uh, Yeah, man, you working them keys, man. You going better. Like I said, man, I want y'all to do better than me. You doing it, I don't even know how to do that control thing. What you doing with that control thing, man? What's that control doing? It just skips the words. How are you tabbing through it like that, bro? Uh, you just, on my, on my computer, just hold on option. Uh -huh. And then shift, command, over, and then the arrow. Yeah, that looks nice. That looks quicker than freaking holding it. Yeah. Home too. Shifting through there. All right. Make that a paragraph. Yo, know, you know what you can do? You can just copy LI and paste it in front of all of them and then copy, uh, what's it called? You can copy the, the end tag, the closing LI and paste it at the end of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's gotta be a better way. I could just do this. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Yeah, dude, you could you could have just cut all that and just did the li and pasted it on in there. That would have been that would have been nice too. What was that? I said, yeah, you could have just cut that and pasted it in there. Uh, Control Z. Control Z twice. I don't know. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Sweet. Save it. All right, saved. Control S. All right, sweet. Go back to the browser. All right. Um, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. All right, scroll up. All right, uh, make a new paragraph underneath that last paragraph that says goals and things to do. Just like this. Um, I don't know. Just make a paragraph with it. With it, make a paragraph. And uh, in my editor. Yeah, in the last paragraph, make it a uh, goals. And put a uh, put the up. What's that? What's that thing called? The the bar. Put a bar in there. A bar. Yeah, the horizontal bar. There you go, and things to do. It's a pipe. Yeah, a pipe, uh, and things to do. All right. And then make a new, um, then make an, make an example paragraph. Make one another paragraph. And type in goals and type in example. Uh, and then make a new paragraph underneath that. And type in goals. Um, and, and copy and paste that let people hear your music. And uh, put a colon in there. No, no, not don't 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 copy over that. Yeah, just that. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. Colon. Nice. All right, and then make a new paragraph. Uh, unordered, uh, ordered list. And make about, uh, I don't know, make like three list items. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, I think that's fine. And just add these. Yeah.
All right. All right, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. That's fine. All right. And actually, do you think we should copy that conclusion in there too? Um, Maybe? Sure, hold on. Now. Yeah, that's it. Yep, yep. and, and the word conclusion. Or we can just, yeah, we can just make that into H1 in of itself. I'll say H3. Yeah. So we save that and I'll start the next one. So I'll start sharing. Thank you, Elliot. That's right. I might have to go to bed pretty soon. Um, All right, dude. I might have to get up in the morning. I'm a, so I might, I might check out now, but. All right, bro. Hey, uh, before you check out, you want to push that to GitHub? Sure. Thank you, man. And I'm pulling. I'm probably gonna push this as well. What I do next? Yeah, you should which, change. Uh, which place you should, should I push this? You should matter. change the name of the index uh, from notes dot index. Or you should keep the fo the folder called mm -hmm. notes, but you should call the what's it called? You should call yeah, the repo. Yeah. No, you should call the. A uh, file, the HTML file. You should change it from notes.html to how do I start? How do I start to design my website.html? You know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then you, but you push the notes folder. So the 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 the, the how do I start my how do I start to design my website.html should be inside the notes folder. And then just push that, or you can just drag and drop it in there. I upload a file, whatever you want to do. Hey, what was that last part? So yeah, just make the how do I start to design my website? Call mm -hmm. that call make it that dot html. So make the web page name that, and then make sure the folder is called notes. And just push that to the OSD, uh, to the Dragons organization. All right. I did. I would really appreciate that, man. And I'm going to finish the rest of these. All right. So now we have finished. How do I start to design my website? And nothing comes before this. This is step zero. So now I'm moving on to step one. How does the internet work? This article discusses what the internet is and how it works. Uh, one second. Prerequisites, uh, none, but we encourage you to read the article on setting project goals first, and we have done that. Objective, we will learn the basics of the technical infrastructure of the web and the difference between internet and the web. Summary, the internet is the backbone of the web. The technical infrastructure that makes the web possible. At its most basic, the internet is a large network of computers which communicates all together. The history of the internet is somewhat obscure. It began in the 1960s. 
as a U.S. Army funded research project, then evolved into a public infrastructure in the 1980s with the support of many public universities and private companies. The various technologies that support the internet have evolved over time, but the way it works hasn't changed that much. And it is a way to connect computers all together and ensure that whatever happens, they find a way to stay connected. Deeper uh, dive, a simple network. When two computers need to com communicate, link them either physically, usually with uh, e ethernet cable or wirelessly, for example, with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or, or Bluetooth systems. All modern computers can sus sustain any of those connections. Note, for the rest of this article, we will only talk about physical ca cables, but wireless networks work the same. The diagram you have, uh, so it says, uh, it says such a network is not limited to two computers. You can connect as many computers as you wish. It gets complicated quickly. If you're trying to connect, say, 10 computers, you need 45 cables with nine plugs per computer. To solve this problem, each computer on a network is connected to a special tiny computer called a router. The router has only one job. Like a signaler uh, at a railway station, make sure that a message sent from a computer from <coughs> a given computer arrives at the right destination computer. To send a message to computer B, computer A must send message to the router, which in turn forwards the message to computer B and makes sure the message is not delivered to computer C. Once we add a router to the system, our network of 10 computers only requires 10 cables, a single plug for each computer and a router with 10 plugs. A network, uh, a network of networks. So far, so good. But what about connecting hundreds, thousands, billions of computers? A single network, uh, a single router can't scale that far. But if you read carefully, we said that a router is a computer like any other. So what keeps us from connecting two routers together? Nothing. So let's do it. <coughs> <coughs> Connecting computers to routers, then routers to computers, we are able to scale infinitely. Such a network comes very close to what is called, or, or such a network comes very close to what we call the internet. But we're missing something. We built that network for our own purposes. There are other networks out there, your friends, your neighbors, Anyone can have their own network of computers, but it's not really possible to set cables up between your house and the rest of the world. So how can you handle this? Well, there are already cables linked to your house, for example, electric power and telephone, the perfect wire we need to connect our network to the telephone infrastructure we need, uh, excuse me, to connect our network to the telephone infrastructure, we need a special piece of equipment called a modem. This modem turns the information from our network into information manageable by the telephone uh, infrastructure and vice versa. So we are connected to the telephone infrastructure. The next step is to send the messages from our network to the network we want to reach. To do that, we will connect our network to an internet service provider, ISP, an ISP is a company that manages some special routers that are li all linked together and can also access other ISPs routers. So the message from our network is carried through the network of ISP networks to the destination network. The internet consists of 
this whole infrastructure of networks. Hey, John, I'm going to check out. Have a good one, man. All right. Later. Later, dude. Finding computers. If you want to send a message to a computer, you have to specify which one. Thus, any computer linked to a network has a unique address that identifies it, called an IP address, where IP stands for Internet Protocol. It's an address made of a series of four numbers separated by dots, for example, 192.168.2.10. <clears throat> That's perfectly fine for computers, but we human beings have a hard time remembering that sort of address. To make things, uh, to make things easier, we can alias an IP address with a human readable uh, name called a domain name. For example, google.com is the domain name used on top of the IP address of 173.194.121.32. <clears throat> so the domain name is the easiest way for us to reach a computer over the internet. Internet and the web. As you might notice, when we browse the web uh, with a web browser, we usually use the domain name to reach a website. Does that mean the internet and the web are the same thing? It's not that simple. As we saw, the internet is a technical infrastructure which allows billions of computers to be connected all together. Among those computers, some computers called web servers can send messages intelligible uh, to web browsers. The internet is an infrastructure, whereas the web as a service built on top of the infrastructure. It is worth noting there are several other services built on top of the internet, such as email and IRC.
three pages closer to finishing this up. What is the difference between web page, website, web server, and search engine? In this article, we describe various web related concepts, web pages, websites, web servers, and search engines. These terms are often confused by newcomers to the web or are incorrectly used. Let's learn what they each mean. It's how the web, how the internet works. Objective, be able to describe the differences between a web page, a website, a web server, and a search engine. Summary. As with any area of knowledge, the web comes with a lot of jargon. Don't worry, we won't overwhelm you with all of it. We have a glossary if you're curious. However, there are a few basic terms you need to understand at the outset. <clears throat> Since you'll hear these expressions all the time as you read on it's easy to confuse these terms sometimes since they refer to related but different functionalities in fact you'll sometimes see these terms misused in news reports and elsewhere so getting them mixed up is understandable we'll cover these terms and technologies in more detail as we explore further, but these quick definitions will be a great start for you. Web page, a document which can be displayed in a web browser, such as Firefox, Google Chrome, Oprah, uh, Microsoft Internet Explorer, or Edge, uh, Apple's Safari. There are also often, uh, these are also often called uh, just pages. A website. Website. A collection of web pages which are grouped together and usually connected together in various ways, often called a website or simply a site. A web server, a computer that hosts a website on the internet. A search engine, a web service that helps you find other other web pages such as Google, Bing, Yahoo, or DuckDuckGo. Search engines are normally accessed through a web browser. Uh, for example, you can perform search engine searches directly in the address bar of Firefox, Chrome, etc., or through a web page. Uh, for example, Bing.com or DuckDuckGo. Let's look at a simple analogy. A public library. This is what you would gener generally do when you were visiting a library. Uh, one, find a search index and look for the title of the book you want. Two, make a note of the catalog number. Three, go to the particular section containing the book. Find the right catalog number and get the book. Let's compare the library with a web server. The library is like a web server. It has in uh, several sections, which is similar to a web server, hosting multiple websites. The different sections, science, math, history, etc., in the library are like websites. Each section is like a unique website. Two sections do not contain 
uh, the same books. The books in each section are like web pages. One website may have several web pages, for example, uh, the science section. The website will have books on heat, sound, therm therm thermodynamics, statistics, etc. Web pages. Um, web pages can be found at a uni unique location uh, URL. Um, the search index is like uh, the search engine. Each book has its own unique location in the library. Two books cannot be kept at the same place, which is specified by the catalog number. Deeper learning. So let's dig deeper into how those four terms are related and why they are sometimes confused with each other. Web page. A web page is a simple document displayable by a browser. Such documents are written in HTML language, in the HTML language, which we look into in more detail in other articles. A web page can be embedded, and excuse me, a web page can embed a variety of different types of resources, such as style information, uh, controlling a web page's look and feel, um, scripts, which add interactivity to the page, um, media, uh, images, sounds, and videos. Um, no, browsers can also display other documents such as PDF files or images, but the term web page specifically refers to HTML documents. Otherwise, we use the term document. All web pages are available on the web excuse me, all web pages available on the web are reachable through a unique address. To access a page, just type its address in your browser address bar. A website is a collection of linked web pages plus their associated resources that share a unique domain name. Each web page of, of a given website provides explicit links most of the time in the form of clickable portion, most of the time in the form of clickable portion of text that allow the user to move from one page to uh, of the website to another. To uh, access a website, type its domain name in your browser address bar and the browser will display the website's main web page or home page, casually referred to as the home. Ideas of web page and a website are especially easy to confuse for a website that contains only one web page, such as a website, such a website is sometimes called a single page website web server. A web server is a computer hosted or a web server is a computer hosting one or more websites. Hosting means that all the web pages and their supporting files are available on that computer. The web server will send any web page from the website it is hosting to any user's browser per user request. Don't confuse websites and web servers. For example, if you hear someone say, my website is not responding, it actually means the web server is not responding and therefore the website is not available. <coughs> More importantly, since a web server can host multiple websites, the term web server is never used to designate a website as it could cause great confusion. In our previous example, if we said my web server is not responding, it means that no websites on that 
web server are available. Search engine. Search engines are a common source of confusion on the web. A search engine is a special kind of website that helps users find web pages from other websites. There are plenty out there. Google, Bing, Yandex, <coughs> Go, and many more. Some are generic, some are specialized about certain topics. Use whichever you prefer. Many browsers on the web confuse search engines and browsers. Let's make it clear. A browser is a piece of software that retrieves and displays web pages. A search engine is a website that helps people find web pages from other websites. The confusion arises because the first time someone launches a browser, the browser displays a search engine's homepage. This makes sense because obviously the first thing you want to do with a browser is to find a web page to display. Don't confuse this with the infrastructure, for example, the browser, with the service, for example, the search engine. The distinction will help you quite a bit, but even some professionals speak loosely. So don't feel anxious about it. Here's an instance of Firefox showing a Google search box as its default. Uh, next is, what is a web server?
What is a web server? I think I'm gonna take a 15 minute break, baby. And I'm gonna come on back. <laughs> Put on some toes. <laughs> oh, man.
What is a web server? In this article, we go over what web servers are, how they work, and why they're important. Prerequisites. You should already know how the internet works and understand the difference between a web page, a website, a web server, and a search engine. Objective you will learn what a web server is and gain a general understanding of how it works. <clears throat> Summary, web server. A uh, web server can refer, refer to hardware or software, or both of them working together. Number one, on the hardware side. A web server is a computer that stores web server software. And a website's component files, for example, HTML documents, images, CSS style sheets, and JavaScript files. It is connected to the internet and supports physical data uh, interchange with other devices connected to the web. Number two, on the server side, a web server includes several parts that control how web servers access hosted data. At minimum, uh, an HTTP server, uh, an HTTP server is a piece of software that understands URLs. 
web addresses and HTTP, the protocol uh, your browser uses to view web pages. It can be accessed through the domain names like mozilla.org uh, of websites it stores and delivers their content to the end user's device. At the most basic level, whenever a browser needs a file, which is hosted on a web server, the browser requests the file HTTP. When the request reaches the correct web server hardware, the HTTP server software accepts request, uh, finds the requested document. Um, if it doesn't, then a 404 response is returned. It sends it back to the browser also through HTTP. To publish a website, you need either a static or dynamic web server. A static web server or stack consists of a computer hardware with, a, with an HTTP server software. We call it static because the server sends its hosted files as is to your browser. A dynamic web server consists of a static web server plus extra software, most commonly an application server and a database. We call it dynamic because the application server updates the hosted files before sending them to your browser via the HTTP server. For example, to produce the final web pages you see in the browser, the application server might fill an HTML template with contents from a database. Sites like MDN or Wikipedia have many thousands of web pages, but they aren't real HTML documents, only a few HTML templates and a giant database. This setup makes it easier and quicker to maintain and deliver the content. <clears throat> Running, no active learning available. Yeah, deeper dive. To fetch a web page, as we already said, your browser sends a request to the web server which proceeds to search for the requested file in its own storage space. On finding the file, the server reads it, processes it as needed, and sends it to the browser. Let's look at those steps in more detail. Hosting files. A web server first has to store the website's files, uh, namely, all HTML documents and their related assets, including H, uh, images, CSS, style sheets, um, JavaScript files, fonts, and videos. Technically, you could host all those files on your own computer, but it's far more convenient to store them uh, all on dedicated web, uh, all on a, de on a dedicated web server that. Um, it's always up and running, is always connected to the internet, has the same IP address all the time. Not all ISPs provide a fixed IP address for some home lines. Um, is maintained by a third party provider. For all these reasons, finding a good hosting provider is a key part of building your website. Dig through the various services companies offer and choose one that fits your needs and your budget. Services range from free to thousands of dollars per month. You can find the uh, more details in the article that is linked here. Once you set up a web hosting solution, you have to upload your files to your web server.
So this is the hosting link. It says hosting providers charge you according to how much bandwidth your website consumes. This depends on how many people and web crawling robots access your content during a given time and how much service space your content takes up. This is why people usually store their videos on dedicated service such as YouTube, Dailymotion, and Vimeo. For example, your provider may have a plan that includes up to several thousand visitors per day for reasonable bandwidth usage. Be careful, however, as that is defined differently from one hosting provider to another. As a rule of thumb, recognize that reliable paid personal hosting can cost around 10 to $15 per month. <clears throat> Note that there is no such thing as unlimited bandwidth. If you consume a huge amount of bandwidth, expect to pay a huge amount of money. And it says, once you set up a web hosting solution, you just have to upload your files to your web server. But for now, we're finding out what a web server is. So communicating through HTTP. Second, a web server provides support for HTTP, which is hypertext transfer protocol. As its name implies, HTTP specifies how to transfer hypertext, i.e. linked documents, between two computers. A protocol is a set of rules for communicating or communication between two computers. As is a textual, uh, HTTP is a textual stateless protocol. Um, textual, that means all commands are plain text and human readable. Stateless, uh, that means neither the server nor the client remember previous communications. For example, relying on HTTP alone, a server cannot remember a password you typed or what step you're on in a transaction. You need an application server for a task like this. We'll cover that sort of technology in further articles. HTTP provides clear rules for how a client and server communicate. We'll cover HTTP itself in a technical article later on. For now, just be aware of these things. Only clients can make HTTP requests and then only servers, servers, uh, and then only two servers. Servers can only respond to a client's HTTP request. Requesting a file via uh, HTTP, clients must provide the file's URL. <clears throat> the web servers must answer every HTTP request, at least with an error message. Um, on a web server, uh, the HTTP server is responsible for processing and answering incoming requests. Number one. Uh, on receiving a request, a HTTP server first checks whether requested URL matches an existing file. If so, the web server sends the file content back to the, to the browser. If not, an application server builds the necessary file. If neither process is possible, the web server returns an error message to the browser, most com commonly 404 not found. That error is so common that many web designers spend quite some time designing 404 pages. Static versus dynamic content. 
Roughly speaking, a server can serve either static or dynamic content. Static means served as is. Static websites are easiest to set up, so we suggest you make your first site uh, a static site. Dynamic means that the server processes the content or even generates it on the fly from a database. This solution provides more uh, more flexibility, but the technical stack uh, stack becomes more difficult to handle, making it dramatically more complex to build the site. Take for example, um, take for example the page you're reading right now. On the web server uh, hosting it, there is an application server that takes the article content from a database, formats it, puts it inside some HTML templates, and sends you the results. In this case, the application server is called Kuma and is built uh, with Python using the Django framework. The Mozilla team uh, built Kuma for specific needs of MDN but there are many similar applications built on many other technologies. There are so many application servers that it's pretty hard to suggest a particular one. Some application servers cater to specific website categories like blogs, wikis, or eShops. Others called CMSs, content management systems, are more generic. If you're building a dynamic website, take the time to choose a tool that fits your needs. Unless you want to learn some web server programming, which is exciting, which is an exciting area in itself, you don't need to create your own application server. That's just reinventing the wheel. So the next steps will be All right, so we just got done with uh, what is a web server? Take some notes right quick.
<clears throat> How do you set up a local testing server? This article explains how to test, uh, how to set up a simple local testing server on your machine and the basics of how to use it. Prerequisites, you need to first, you need to first know how the internet works and what a web server is. Objective, you will learn how to uh, set up a local testing server. <clears throat> local files versus remote files. Throughout most of the learning area, we tell you to just open your example directly in a browser. This can be done by clicking, uh, double clicking the HTML file, dragging and dropping <clears throat> it into the browser window or choosing file open and navigating to the file. There are many ways to achieve this. If the web address path starts, uh, with file colon slash uh, forward slash forward slash followed by the path to the file on your local hard drive, a local file is being used. In contrast, if you view one of our examples hosted on GitHub or an example on some other remote server, the web address will start with HTTP uh, colon for forward slash forward slash or https uh, colon forward slash forward slash to show that the file has been received via http problem with testing local files <clears throat> some examples won't run if you open them as local files. This can be due to a variety of reasons, the most likely being the feature and asynchronous, excuse me, asynchronous requests. Some browsers, including Chrome, will not run async requests. See fetching data from the server. Uh, if you just run the example from a local file, uh, this is because of security restrictions for more on security read website security. They feature a server side language. Uh, server side languages such as PHP or Python uh, require a special server to interpret the code and deliver the results. Running a simple local HTTP uh, server to get around the problem of async requests, we need to test such examples by running them through a local web server. One of the easiest ways to do this is uh, to do this for our purpose purposes is to use Python's simple HTTP server module. For this, install Python. If you are using Linux or Mac OS, you should be, uh, it should be available on your system already. If you are a Windows user, you can get a, an installer from the Python homepage and follow the instructions to install it. So go to Python. python.org check my system right quick and I'm gonna see if I already have Python installed. And, uh, I believe I do so but just for you guys uh, go to python.org and under the download section, click the link for Python, the most current version uh, for LTS. <laughs> okay, 
back that big and it looks like this in these windows. Yeah, um, so go to python.org um, under the download section. So we'll go to downloads, um, click the link for Python. Uh, I guess the most current one is 3.7.2. Um, at the bottom of the page, choose the Windows uh, 86 installer. Yeah, so, uh, okay, 86 installer, let's see where we at. Okay. Uh, execut executable installer and download it. That would be this one right here. Windows 86, I'm guessing 64, I mean 64 gigabytes, executable installer. So you'd have to have like a 64 bit computer most likely. I'm not sure, but it's coming so many. <clears throat> so I already have this installed. Um, So what I'm going to do is minimize that. And then at the bottom of the page, choose that when it is downloaded, run it. On the first installer page, make sure you check the add Python path checkbox. Click install, then click close when the installation has finished. I have it installed. I want to go ahead and uninstall it. So I can
All right, right freaking on, ladies and gentlemen. Woo, 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 woo. Let's get this done, baby. Oh, oh. Play some music right quick.
getting down, my jigga. Here we going now, get it up, my winner. Yeah, don't stop, no winner. Go get it up, don't stop, go get up, hey. What time is it, winner? Go get it up, don't stop, my yeah. What time, my jigga? About to get it up right now, my boy. Here we go, about that time. Yeah, that flow, oh, already know. If you don't now, now you, you know. Ha <laughs> uh, ha yeah. About that time of the, yeah. Gotta go hard, yeah. Can you stop? No, yeah. Go, go hard, my winner. Always out here, get it up, my win. Yeah, get it up, little coder. Gotta get it up, get it up, little cut, cut. Whoa, get it up, little coder. Gotta learn to go and get it up, my coder. Whoa, get it up, my coder. Go and get it up, get it up, my yo. Get it up, my coder. It's about that time, get it up, my whoa. Get it up, my cover. About that time, get it. Yeah, yeah. About that time of the year. Yeah, that time is here. It's here. Yeah. It's time, my winner. About to get it up, get it up, the winner. Yeah. It's time, my winner. I'm about to get it up, get it up, my, yeah, my time is real, W3 develops is here, yeah, back in being here, and we ain't stopping, we just going on, yeah, it's that time when I, I ain't never, ever, never, ever been a quitter, no, gotta get it, my winner, back that time, and we get yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yes, that time. Yeah, yeah, yes, that time. Yes, it's that time. Yes, it's that time. What time is it? It's time to go ahead and cut cold it. Uh, what time is it? It's time to go, go, go and cold it. Yeah. What time is it? And it's time to time, time, time to code it. Yeah. What time is it? And you already know. You already know. Man, what time is it? Man, it's the time, time to code it. Yeah. What time is it? Man, you know that it's time to code it. Yeah. What time is it? Man, it's time to Code it, yeah. What time is it? Man, you know it's time to code it, yeah. What time is it? You already know it's time to call some, yeah. What time is it? You already know it's time to code some, yeah.
I don't think they know. I really don't. Oh no, I don't man. I really don't. Oh no, I don't think. No, I don't think. No, I said I really don't think. Like, oh no, man, I don't think. Oh, no, I don't think that they know. I don't think that they. No. <laughs> no, I don't think that they know. They don't know. I really don't think that they know. This Python here changing life for really, really, really. What well, is Python here? It really, really. Oh, whoa. Man down, man down, my winner. About to go ahead and call it up, my winner. Yeah, get up, my winner. Everybody trying to get it up, get it. Woo! Get up, my jigger. Man, it's about to trying to get it up, my. Yeah. Huh. Huh. What? Yeah, get it up, my. Yeah, yeah. Get it up, get it. Whoa. Uh, put the put the put the boom. Put the boom, the boom. Where is my mouse? Here it is. And I'm gonna start a new one. I'm gonna save this. And uh, let's see, let's start a new one. Three, I guess this one would be 0 0.04.
All I ever had was a dollar in a dream. Wait, hold on, I ain't even had a dollar, no cream. And I had to go and get it, man. Had to get it, man. Can't stop, no, man. Had the dreams to the same, man. Go to the top with it, man. Bring everybody that's with me, too, man. I ain't stopping, no, man. We gotta go, man. Gotta help the world, man. Help me, too. So let's go, man. Gotta do what we do. Gotta go straight to the top. Whoop, 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 whoop. Man, no, whoop, 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 whoop. Let's get it, my dude. Let's get to the top. Let's learn it, though. Let's get it done. Let's go ahead and do it first for the world. Here we go, man. That man straight, man. I got first round. Here we go, man. Yeah, man, now. Man, let's get it done, man. Get the database done. Get it all done. Bro. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, yeah here we go. You already know. This is what we do first, bro. Gotta get it done. Thank you. 
How do you set up a local testing server? This article explains how to set up a simple local testing server on your machine and the basics of how to use it. Prerequisites, you need to first know how the internet works and what a web server is. Objective, you will learn how to get you will learn how to set up a local testing server. Local files versus remote files. Throughout most of the learning area, we will tell you to just open your examples directly in a browser. This can be done by double clicking the HTML file, dragging and dropping it into the browser window uh, and dragging it and dropping it into the browser window. Or choose file, open, and navigate to the HTML file. There are many ways to achieve this. If the web uh, address path starts with file uh, colon uh, forward slash forward slash followed by the path to the file on your local hard drive, a local file is being used. In contrast, if you view one of our examples hosted on GitHub 
or an example on some other remote server, the web address uh, will start with HTTP uh, colon forward slash forward slash or HTTPS uh, colon forward slash forward slash uh, to show that the file has been received via HTTP. <clears throat> Problem with testing local files. Some examples won't run if you open them as local files. This can be due to a variety of reasons, the most likely being uh, they feature asynchronous, uh, a asynchronous uh, request. Uh, some browsers, including Chrome, will not run async requests. See fetch, uh, fetching data from the server if you just run the example from a local file. Uh, this is because of security restrictions for more on web security, read website security. Uh, they feature a server-side scripting language. Server-side scripting languages uh, such as PHP or Python require a special server to interpret the code and deliver the results. Running a simple local HTTP server. To get around the problem of async request, we need to test such examples by running them through a local web server. One of the easiest ways to do this is, uh, do this for our purposes, is to use Python's simple HTTP server module. To do this, install Python. No, number one, install Python. If you are using Linux or Mac OS, it should be available on your system already. If you are a Windows user, you can get a installer from the Python homepage and follow the instructions to install it. So I'm gonna go to python.org. What does it say? It says under the download section, click the link for Python 3. I'm guessing that's the latest version. Windows. Save that. That's saving. Uh, at the bottom of the page, choose the Windows uh, X86 executable installer and download it. When it has downloaded, run it. So it has downloaded. So I'm going to run that. I'm going to double click on that and see what happens.
I just wanted to restart that download right quick. Uh, to do this, number one, install Python. If you are using Linux or Mac OS, it should be available on your system already. If you're using Windows, or if you are a Windows user, you can get an installer uh, from the Python homepage and follow the instructions to install it. <clears throat> Go to python.org under the download section, click the link for Python, in the, which is the latest version. Uh, at the bottom of the page, choose the Windows uh, executable installer and download it. Uh, when it is downloaded, run it uh, on the first installer page. Make sure you check the add Python 3 path checkbox. So we can check that and click install. Uh, then click close when the installation is finished. Let's run install. And allow it. I'm going to get my command prompt open. If you're on Mac, it's going to be your terminal.
Number two, open your command prompt, uh, Windows terminal, uh, if you're on Windows, in your terminal, if you're on Mac or Linux. So I have my command prompt already open. And I'm going to type in Python space dash V. Uh, and this I'll go to my git terminal. 